Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here on the Poker Tables channel. This is a different one as you can see by the video length. This is the $530 tournament that we go on all the way. You guys have seen the video to win. Some people like to see every hand of the tournament and this is a this is every hand. You get all the context, the conversations we were having at the time. You can see absolutely every hand that was played in the tournament. I'm going to do something with Raise Your Edge around this tournament as well. So expect some expert analysis from Raise Your Edge uh, and Ben CB on some of the stuff that's involved in this run. But for now, if you'd like to watch the whole thing, this is what you've got. Enjoy the 530K. We have a flush. I hope you uh, you have a great holiday, man. Uh, I kind of forgot this was a knockout, to be honest, so I should have been playing this hand differently. I definitely made some mistakes there because I should be pushing my equity to get yens out of the pot. But we got a bounty. That's good. 125 bounty and some chips. Just a little bit of chips, but we'll take it. Hold 7 4. We fold the format from Jiri. Um, fold Ace-10 down to the gun as well. Let's go to the Ace-Queen, though, in the Masters. 39 pay, 61 left. We're in 10th place, so pretty good position in the tournaments. We're very deep against Nakusha. Against the small blind, we're happy to play really aggressively and uh, fire in as much money as possible. Against the button, though... I don't think we want to do that as much. I'll probably still three bets. But they fold, which sort of negates that whole thing. Let's see what happens here. Do you ever grind Poker Stars anymore? I still have an account and stuff. I've played some tournaments there this year. Uh, I don't have a balance there right now, so I'm kind of waiting for uh, payment processors that I use to get added so that I can get some money on there. Just because it's a little complicated because of um, incorporated and all sorts of stuff. So uh, I will play on there in the future. But, you know, I'm a party poker team, team pro, right? So my focus is doing everything I can to sort of help party poker grow and thrive and, and succeed. I'm not on the Poker Stars team. So most of the time when it's just normal grind, like I'm here, right? I still want to play big events from around the, the world of poker. Um, of course, you know, I like to play in World Series of Poker events, uh, playing WPTs, plays in, in scoops and W coops and, and well, millions is on party poker, right? But, um, you know, it's definitely a minority um, thing. It's, it's not often. <laughs> All right, so bet call raised 105, a re raise from Yen. Uh, I don't think I could fold here. Like, yeah, 9 6 and 6 4 are there, but like, we have decent equity. So, the question is, I need to I need to keep the opportunity for me to have nut flushes here. Uh, what am I going to do with a nut flush draw in this spot? I don't know, dude. Like, 9-6 suited from Yen and 6-4 suited are definitely possible. But with top set, I think the likelihood of them having some 7-5s, some nut flushes, some 7s and 5s is also there. And we also have equity. It's, it's like when they have 9-6, we have outs in a big three-way pod here. And we probably just won. I think the answer is probably to bet like 150k here when it checks to us. Uh, yeah, I mean unlucky. I don't think I could fold, but unlucky for Yens. 
how it ends up working at, at higher stakes is like, you all have opponents that are really good at these certain concepts and really nail them, right? And then they might not have a complete picture of this other small thing, you know, like maybe they're not so good in three-way pots, but they're really good at ICM and like reshoving. So there's all these pieces that make up like a poker decision uh, brain, I guess. And sometimes people are better at some than the others. So it's tough to say, you know, it's tough to say. Process. Uh, it'll depend, dude. For party poker, ask support in the bottom right-hand corner of the client what the process is. Like, hey, I'm thinking about moving. Uh, you know, what do I need to do? Tens, it goes check, check on the turn. And we've got all the diamonds out there on the river. Block, man. Daniel, are you sick enough to bluff like this, brick? Down to the East Nine. Suited we three bet against Frederick H, who goes for the open here. Call Queen Ten Five C bet. It's a swing and a miss for me, but uh, I think a C bet is in order. <laughs> I want a four bet just because it's fun, man. That's why. I'm going to four bet with the ace five of clubs here. It is a bold decision by me, for sure. Is anyone going to believe I'm bluffing here, though? That's the thing. But of course, they can just have aces, and then it doesn't matter if they believe it or not because they have aces. <laughs> oh, dude. Someone clip it and send it to the world so that people think I bluff all the time, please. Please just put that in the inbox of every high stakes pro and let them know that they've got to watch out, okay? Thank you for the Merry Christmas, Bing Bailey. Back at you, my friend. I should bet bigger here sometimes. I didn't really consider it, so I think I've got an error there. But it's okay. It's going to work out fine with this hand. Mm. Better rivers sometimes. Take it down. Let's go. We three bet a seven in the five thirty. Get a call nine six three with two hearts. We bet. Get check raise. We call. Play in position. Call again in the turn. Three to one. Up flush draw. Probably gonna lose this pot though. Uh, I don't think we should bluff either. If we bet we're trying to fold out ace-king, ace-queen, they're not always going to play this way. Uh, I think we just check-check and hope we catch a bluff here from, like, I don't know, king-10 suited or something. <laughs> I mean, bro, listen. I'm calling out hands, chat. I mean, listen, okay? Our game has hit a level that it's never seen before. I'm calling out king-10 suited. What do you want from me, chat? <laughs> Oh, oh, we're on one on Christmas Day. Merry Christmas, chat. Let's go. Come on. Tens. We raise. Uh, get a call on a call. I think we start with a check call here with tens. What poker software is this? Party Poker. Link below the stream if you want to check it out. Joe McNulty. 
uh, with like a deposit bonus, depending on what country you're from. Check it's kind of a semi bluff, right? Like I think the big blind often has like some pretty weak hands. It's tough for Yens to continue, even with like a mediocre jack to that check raise, especially when we're gonna have so few bluffs in that spot. So that's why I like it. Uh call with AC suited. Let's go. We're calling hands, chat. We're calling hands. We're doing it. We're calling hands. Also in the 55 master with you, not your table though. Oh, okay, nice. Well, there, 710 suiting the big blind is something. It's not nothing. Defends Evanton suited. Wow. Nine, eight, queen, one spade. I think I'm going to peel. Seven on the turn. Good for our range. We expect quite a lot of checkbacks here. If we see another bet, I'm a little concerned. Although, Jens is a good player, so they are going to find some bluffs. Just what bluffs, you know? I guess it's going to be like ace five suited. It's going to be like king five suited and stuff. It's really not that many. Uh, they overbet the turn. I'm pretty happy folding now. When you think about their opening range in the hijack and what hands have an overbet bluff here, they need to be bluffing ace x a lot, uh, which they're probably not. Maybe they are. I don't know. But probably not. But we pick up aces, which is just dreams.gov, dude. Dreams.gov. To the ready at the 530, good luck. Mono JKE. Is this you, Frederick? What's up, man? Check raise. Jack nine suited, we raise, get called in both spots. As our limp raise did not work out. <clears throat> uh, but we bet really small here. Just rely on some fold equity, which we have often in this spot. Hate that I can't play in party poker in my country. Yeah, me too, dude. I don't even know where you live, but it sucks. It is sad. Could be Romania, Poland, USA, Italy. Bunch of spots, man. Uh, you know, he did a little bit of complaining at the game, but my conversations with him were nothing but gracious, and uh, he seemed like an interesting... We will defend with the King to Suited and check raise. What a flop, man. Beautiful. A gorgeous flop. One we definitely are happy to check raise here. How come online sports betting has come back to the U.S., but poker hasn't? Uh, I can't answer that for you. There is poker in some states in the U.S., but nationwide poker, I really don't understand how it has remained out of nationwide U.S. for so long. I don't, I don't really get it. All right. We are going to lose here. GG. 205-11 is our score in the Masters. Good run, but the end of the journey.
I think we just closed down that table for a second because we've got so much going on, right? Let's go. 102K coming our way. Down to 15. One over a million. Good stuff, man. We keep it rolling on our four beautiful tables. We have other tournaments and stuff we can play on the side, but obviously we've got... I feel like we've got enough, you know? Good call. Jack A4, all spades. Check back. Not a great turn. Still might have the best hand, though. It's worth noting. It's not like we definitely lose here. Uh, not value betting, but checking down and win with Jack. It's fine. Thoughts on GG Poker? I'm a Party Poker Pro. So, Party Poker is where I want you guys to try out and play. Um, the equivalent would be like going to someone that plays for, I don't know, um, Arsenal and asking what they think about Tottenham. Not that we hate each other. It'd be like asking someone that plays for Arsenal what they think about Liverpool. It'd be like, Liverpool exists, and there's probably some cool people over there and some cool things, but, like, why don't you ask about Arsenal? <laughs> you know? Like, I'm play like, that's kind of the idea, right? So I can't really give you a reasonable answer there because I, I play for a different team than GG Poker, right? I'm a party poker pro, so can't give you a good answer. Uh, maybe I'm just going to complete here with the sixes. Italy has its party poker open only to Italian IPs. Okay, so there's a there's a segregated Italian IP uh, site. Party poker left Costa Rica. Yeah, Andrew. Now they won't let me withdraw my only method of scribble because I haven't deposited recently with it. They won't let me deposit either. Just keeping my 13k. There's got to be a resolution to that, dude. That seems uh, impossible. So keep pushing, dude, because I'm just, like uh, it seems impossible that you have 13k and they won't allow you to withdraw your 13k. I don't understand how that could be. So I feel like th that's probably just one of those things where you need to keep keep pushing and going through the hoops and keep ensuring that it gets elevated to where you are able to resolve your problem. But hey, I'm not on the chat logs and I also don't have any access to support beyond the way that you guys do, so GG, uh, good luck, King James. 6889, good luck, man, in the tourney. We're going to fold. Don't spoil, by the way, next time, King James. If I bust in real time and I'm playing with you, the people haven't seen it yet. Just FYI, it's not a big deal. It wasn't like a super intense spot or anything, but just, just FYI for you for next time. Check, check, king in the river. On to day two in the 5K, Michael Mack. What's up, man? Yeah, we're on to day two. Day two's on Monday. We are in the money, and we'll see how deep we go. I don't know, to be determined. Hopefully, we can get day two in this tournament as well, right? Like, this is also on Monday. So, fingers crossed. King six suited, we're gonna fold.
Every state that has sports betting will have poker too. Is that true, Swamper? Every single one will will get it. That's good news. What we need to figure out is how to get international player pools again. And uh, I don't know how to make that happen, if I'm honest. Open the Ace King, fold around to Felix Kilma. Three bet, we just four bet shove here. Covering for the bounty, Ace King offsuit, clear spot, IMO. Good luck, us, let's go. Take it down, sweat it. Talk about heat. Yen's calls, folds around to Daniel. Uh, start with a check on this board almost always. I guess. Oh, man. I don't really know what I want to do here. I guess check raise. But 270 or so, it'll give us a decent river spot. It is, of course, possible that we're behind here, but I think likely we're ahead and still worth value betting. Uh, kind of tough spot in the river here, you know. We have a bluff catcher. We do not block hearts. We don't block 7x or 10x. So there's a lot of reasons to call here. Um, obviously, 9-8 suited, possible. 9-6 suited, maybe, but probably not. 8's full of 9's, yes. Quad 9's, yes. 6 is full, yes. 10-7 suited, maybe. 7-5 suited, maybe. Um, but there is a reasonable amount of bluffs, and we have a pretty good bluff catcher not blocking any of those straight draws or heart draws. 
So I don't think we can get away from our hand here. The bounty adds a little bit of bonus, and the fact that we're against a good, aggressive, high-stakes player adds a bonus. It's a bad river card, but I think we have to call getting you know, 2.3 to 1 plus a bounty. So reluctantly call. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, we got another bounty. 313 in bounties and definitely chip leading right now. Let's go. Let's go. Raise it up. Jamie, how do you do in the bigger buy-in tournaments? I don't really know how to answer that question. I play in some bigger buy-in tournaments. Uh, sometimes I well, I do well, sometimes I don't. It kind of just depends, dude, you know? So I haven't won enough at high stakes tournaments where I'm like, this is definitely my level, like 1K plus, but I play them frequently and, you know, feel like I am doing okay. I feel like I'm getting better regularly. King four. Fold to the raise three bets. Ah, yeah, Jack Five would have done really well. We got a brand new table. Uh, Kareen Lundgren. Goes for three bit to one twenty four. I'm gonna four bit. Three hundred K, I think it's fine here. Uh we're relatively deep enough where I think this is an okay approach. Got a shove against friend of the stream Chico as well with Ace King for forty blinds, but there is payout pressure here. Ace King offsuit, so we just shove and take it. We four bet, get a call, flop a six nine king. Not the best flop. We are losing to ace king now. We're losing to aces still. Uh, we're beating jacks. We're beating like, you know, I don't know, ace five suited, maybe if it peels or something like that. Uh, probably calling getting the right price for 160 into 800, but not loving it. And then just check fold on the turn. It goes quick check check. Nine of clubs on the river. We check as well. What a knit slash slow roll from running. I was explaining my play running. I don't know if you noticed, but I am uh, running a stream here, dude, in that there's 850 people watching. Yans is uh, a big boy. I'm assuming that Yans is going to survive. He's going to be okay. He will manage to cope with the extra 15 seconds that he had to wait in anticipation for our day one of the 530 knockout. I think he'll make it. And if, if not, well, that's a reflection on him. Sorry, bro. Over the ace 10, get a flat here. Fold. Before the pandemic, we were planning to have it and sort of get working on it, and then we've kind of put it on an indefinite pause while the pandemic's going on. Not really in a rush. Uh, Really. Our high stars in 54. Enjoy those quarter pounders, man. I hope they're delicious.
That's the thing about poker, says uh, Dandanske Pulse. Uh, the less other players know about your profitability, the harder it is to get a read on you. I think it was Tonka who talked about it once, said if you, uh, that if you know people are either massively losing or winning, uh, you play a certain way against them, where against people you don't know, you just kind of play your game. It's harder to exploit people. Yeah, for sure. I think, like, for me, I often don't know the profitability angle of things, but it's usually, like, the buy-in for the tournaments, right? You have kind of, like, a stock way of playing in a in a higher-stakes tournament because you give your opponents a certain level of credibility, and then in a smaller-stakes tournament, you bout, value bet thinner, and you're just more relentless with your barrels because they're not going to exploit you, and you just... So it certainly helps, I think, for sure. Fold the river. So it's only my sister who gets the short end of the stick and that she's got a sort of conventional job in school and stuff, but I'll make sure to probably fly her out to Montreal at some point this year so she can hang out and catch up with her. And we get four bed here really quickly from Volodymyr. We will call, I think, out of position, go to a flop. I don't really want to jam here. I think it's a lot of blinds to jam for 84, although it'd probably be like break even. I think calling is a better game plan and play flops, which is ace eight deuce. Good flop. I think check call. And probably don't fold. We still lose to aces and ace king, which is going to be in their range. But we beat things like ace five suited, which is also in their range, and other bluffs. You know, like you should be bluffing more hands than just ace x here. So I think we call and see a turn. Although there is some value in actually ending the hand now with 1.6 million in the middle. My first impression was to call, but it is nice to deny equity too. I think I am going to uh, do that. I think I'm just going to raise call here. All right, 4.8 million. Yeah, I'm just going to drop some subs if you beat me. If I beat you, I'll just take the bragging rights. All right, man. Sounds good to me. Appreciate the uh, the free roll, man. I guess the bragging rights are are valid too. They're important. Call with the eight nine suited in position of the five thirty. We flop a great flop. Back to a flush draw. Open ender. Pretty deep. Start with a bet. We can stand up to check raises. You know, if they check raise is fine. We call. We got eight clean outs for the dream. There it was on the turn. There it was on the turn, man. This is a happy stack, if I'm honest. 5x starting stack in the 530. Victor bust to Felix here with the flush against eights. We're moving on. Uh, registration is closed, so 11 players make the money here, chat. 11 players will make day two, make the money. Min cash will probably be about 600 bucks plus whatever you've earned in bounties. For us, that's 313. So it'd be about $915 total cash in the tournament at that point if we make the money, but we got some work to do, obviously. If we're not missing any, and there's a chance that we are, for sure. <laughs> Definitely call this 3-bet with vibes. Smash it. Bam! No smash. Really too bad. Not enough. And fold the fives as well. Pretty damn good. At poker, pretty impressive. Thanks, no strategy. Appreciate you, man. Uh, I think a lot of checking here. Still a little bit of betting though. I'll check.
Take it down. Ace queen, we're gonna three bit this one. Hey, sub hype coming in from Retro Rockets. Drop of the 11 month resub. Welcome back to the team, Retro Rockets. Merry Christmas, Jamie. Thank you very much, my friend. Very kind of you. Get some hearts in the chat for Retro Rockets. We're going to call this four bit in position with the ace queen. We don't like it. It's bottom of our range. We're gonna peel here, but I think it's uh, mandatory getting two and a half to one. Let's see a flop fail. Pulled a huge bet from Andre P there. Three betting again. Great flop. 660 in the middle as well with a bounty in play. So now it's just like we bet call. If they check raise, we're not super happy in that they'll have occasional slow plays. Uh, they'll have king 10 in the range probably, ace 10 in the range probably, but it's not a fold anymore. Bet get a call five in the turn. I think we just jam. Hope to get called from like nines through sixes here. Uh, maybe some hero calls you never know, but uh, we go for it with queen 10. With the bounty in play. Without the bounty, we probably play this a little bit differently, but with the bounty, I think it makes it clear enough that we run it .gov. Come on, let's go. Uh, huge bounty in the tournament chat. That's a salmon felt. That is a Salmon Felt official. Takes us up to 656 in bounties on 5 million chips. Let's go. I think I'm going to, ooh, 3x though. I'll fold to the 3x. Well, the Jack Deuce, you gotta accept my follow request on Instagram. That's your punish for losing. I DM you. Anyways, man, 9 to 25 here in the Titan. Which Instagram? My Jamie Staples or Poker Staples? I'll have to do it later because I'm not logged in on my PC. It has to be on my phone, and my phone reception is bad down here, so I gotta go upstairs. Uh, but I will follow you at some point. You might have to follow up with me, though, on that. You might have to. Because I think I probably have a lot. But I'm in. Thank you, Nigiri Sake. Thanks. Appreciate it. Probably limp fold. Stacks are getting a little bit closer here, so we want to ramp up some aggression, but there's still enough of a gap where we kind of want to avoid taking big risks when we're in a clear second place, you know? The pay jump is, what, $460, and then the first to second is $900. Uh, let's bluff River here. Nice. Oatmeal the goat, given the walk. Damn, that sucks. Bro, <laughs> so sick. So sick, dude. Just flop the trips like it's no big deal. Bet a 70. We just call here. Board is so dry. It's so unlikely for our opponent to have anything here, you know? Thank you, is Iggy's love, Iggy's life. Thanks for the kind words, man. Let's get it. I check call. And we go for a reasonable size bet here in the river.
Pretty unlucky with the trip twos. Blind versus blind, so unlikely to have a hand there, right? They limp, we check. I flop trips, they have a full house. Like, you just you just double them up there. That's okay. Like, the likelihood we're just going to see a wild bluff there is a lot higher than, than a full house. But we are in the shortest stack now. We do win a pot in the 530, which is nice. So up to 5.4 million. And now, as the shortest stack, we battle back. Yep, we're in the money of the 5K. Day two is tomorrow. Or on Monday, sorry. Day two is Monday. But we are in the money of the 5K, yeah. Uh, get check raise, we call. And play a turn, which is a king. Should be check check here most of the time. And then decide on the river. That river is not great. I think some of these like middling hands will bluff, you know, like nine ten and and uh, jack ten and stuff like that. Nice. All right, quick five minute break. We're doing okay. I mean, pretty unlucky to run into the aces full there with the trips, but we've chipped up eleven. Make the money. We are ten off the money here in third place. We're also twelve of twenty two and three handed in the open. Enjoy five minutes of the highlights. I'm gonna grab a drink. It'll be Just back we'll in a few minutes. Stay with me. Nice hand. Let's go back to our squeeze with queen nine suited. Hey, Manskirt, drop the sub with the prime. Get some love to the chat from Manskirt, please. Thank you so much for your support, my friend. I appreciate that. Hearts out. We're slow playing ace-king because of this reason, right? We have squeeze stacks behind us, uh, good opponents. We want to induce a squeeze. This is a massive pot. Good luck. Ace-king, ace-queen. This is huge. No queen, dude. Uh, there's 11 million in the middle. No three, no queen. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes! Ace of the jacks with the kick kicker. Let's go! The side pot is so big there, dude. 9.4 million. We are chip leading. The slow play successful. Dude, that is so sick. We chopped it. We don't get the bounty, but I mean, 9.4 million is a massive stack. This is worth like, you know, if you could buy in for this many chips, it'd be $4,700 of chips. Let's go. It doesn't work that way. It's probably worth like 2,500 or something like that, but holy smokes, chats. It's a beautiful thing. Isn't the softcore Christmas music driving you nuts yet? Nah, it's kind of just chill in the background. For me, I'm okay with it. 100 bits, Lupo Calabro. Thought I had Spotify open. I was actually Jamie listening to some classical music. Yeah, man, I like classical music. I uh, like it. Keep it the good content, bro. Appreciate it, GG. Thanks, man. Emil Olsen, three bets. We four bets. Check back with 7-6 on our final table. Oh, four bet to a million. We jam then. I think we just five bet Rip City. I think we're all in, chat. Uh, good luck. One twenty five bounty and a lot of chips again. To take a massive chip lead. Come on! Dude, this is a huge huge stack we're down to 19 11 make it through we have a huge stack dude 14 million this is probably the lead in the next phase dude thomas screech gifted a, a sub to don donske Pulse, the danish sausage welcome back to the team danish sausage thank you very much uh thomas screech appreciate that man thank you like kings Four bet to one point one. We will call and play in position. I don't think I five bet anything here, so I think we just call only. Mm -hmm. 
Can they have aces? For sure, they can. Like we, aces is definitely in the range. I think queens is in the range. Ace king is in the range. And let's see what it is. 281 bounty. Wow. Wow. <laughs> we are the chip lead in the whole tournament if we take the stack through with 18.5 million. We still need to eliminate six people. But we have 1,063 in bounties and an 18x starting stack before the money. That's really silly. <laughs> That's really silly, my friends. Wow. Okay. All of you that are here, be my good luck charm forever. Ideally. Holy smokes, dude. This is so many chips. It's like way more than double second place. This is second. <laughs> this is just really silly. All right. Let's go, man. Raising up King 10 in the 530. Karen Lundgren is going to call. Mostly check here. If I'm going to bet a hand, though, I like this one. We do mostly check. I think Jack-10, King-10, and King-Jack are going to be some of our best bets in this spot, though. So we'll bet and take it. And what a stack it is. 19x starting stack. If you could buy this, bro... If you could buy this stack, this would be $9,500 worth of chips in this $500 buy-in. That's absolutely insane. Honestly, this stack is like, it's a huge stack for most of day two as well. It's just really crazy. It's just really crazy, man. Like if we open the lobby for the next day, right? Let me just... Pause this. Uh, check this out, right? Queen six suited. Fold. So here's here's how it looks so far, right? 166k collected, 500k guaranteed. Here's the payouts. Chip leader is Mary Great Bluff on 15.5 million. There's 51 through. So like the middling stack of 26th place has six and a half million. Like we're triple the middle of the field. That's absurd, man. And this is really, really the most insane dominant stack I've ever built up in a phase like this, honestly. It's just crazy. But we're not done yet. We're four off day two, 11 make the money here. We could probably go bubble, it's fair to say. And uh, we could still bust, dude. We can still bust this, so don't don't get it in your head like, oh, we're just going to fold to the money. No, 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 dude, you know? We have kings, they have aces, we lose 5 million chips, we're down to 13, it happens again here, we're down to 7 million, we lose, you know, like anything can happen. We got to keep it, keep it disciplined, but aggressive. Lupu uh, Calabro, heads up hype, good luck of luck. Thank you so much for the 500 bits, man, appreciate you. Thanks for your support. Matt Deli dropping 100 bits as well, thank you, man. Appreciate you, everyone, for the support. Matt Deli, Lupo Calabro. You're all very kind. As it stands, first game is on tomorrow. The league and neither club has confirmed the game is off. Okay. It'll probably be canceled, but maybe not.
Only unofficial sources, right? Just like the transfer rumors. <laughs> Just a bunch of a uh, uh, bunch of unsubstantiated uh, stuff. What a fun stream, dude. I mean, this is what nasty results, right? Really, really sick results. Super happy with it. And Monday is going to be such an exciting stream, dude. Because we have a huge stack in the 109 as well. We have like 10 million in the 109. We have 19 million as of now in this tournament. In the 5K, granted, we don't have a huge stack, but we have cashed at least for 11K, right? Like, let's go. Delta Pico, will it not let you link uh, your Instagram profile? Man, this is tough because my Wi-Fi is really terrible down here. Of course, I can't copy paste. <laughs> because it's a, a different machine. Uh, Ace four in the big blind against Frank. Low frequency three bet, mostly call though. I'm gonna call this time because I don't think that uh, aggression is going to work very well for me here. Follow back. I got you, man. I got you. Check check at the flop. We'll check the turn as well. Check the Rivera. Much love from the UK, Jamie. I was Oatmeal the Goat. GG, Merry Christmas. Hey! KCON99. What's up, dude? Let me uh, put that in your name. Cheers. Uh, GG. Nice win, man. Nice win and Merry Christmas. Did we win that uh, with Ace High? I think we did, right? 19 million. Yeah, ace four, queen ten, cool. Listening without volume at the family dinner. All right, dude. I'm gonna try and keep spinning the stack up for you, dude. We are four people off the money here. Top eleven will make it into day two. This is day one. Day two is on Monday, same time as the five K. Would you have rather have this 530 stack or have won the open? This 530 stack. Like I said, if you could buy this stack in like Chippy V, it'd be $9,500. It's probably worth, in actuality, something like 5K, right? So yeah, <laughs> I think it's worth double what first place was in that 125, if I'm honest. Plus our bounties of 1,000 as well. Really wild. Justin Rabo goes for the raise. King 8 suited, pretty good hands. We get a raise from Alberto C. Call from Frank. I will fold. Five time zones in Canada. Yeah, a couple. Couple. It's 6.30 here, Eastern, if someone was asking.
Jack eight of hearts. It's a little bit too wide in theory, but I think it's fine to open here, especially covering for a lot of bounties. We're going to open a little bit wider. Silva Valente goes for the all in and we will fold. Yeah, it's it's Eastern time here, 1505. So I think it's a five hour difference. It should be 2005 on Monday, I think, for the UK. Yakov Nesterov is all in against Justin Raba. Ace four is reasonable. Alberto raises again. Mostly call some three bet. I'm gonna roll the dice. We will call. Check. Gonna log on at like seven in the morning and wait. Lol. Nah, it's three p.m. Eastern, eight p.m. UK. I think is when it starts. Small chance it's nine p.m. UK, but I think it's eight. All right, let's finish this off, dude. Four away from the money. Let's keep trying to pick up some spots and hopefully get a bounty or two before the end of the day. You know. Possible. Realized I just missed the final table hype. It was a good one, though. Second place, man. It was a good one. I got to actually update the Daily Legends page on that. That is our second, second place in that one. East 9 offsuit. Good enough hand to open in the cutoff here, for sure. If Silva Valente goes all in, it's a problem. But Felix just goes for the shove. We fold. Seems pretty complicated determining his tax value in a bouncy. Yes, I agree, Andrew. I agree. Um, and it's it's a tough calculation in general, I think, with so many people left at the tournament in that it's clearly less than chip EV, but it's clearly more than the buy-in. And where it sits in the middle is indeterminate, so... I would say it's probably worth about half of what it is in chip EV at this point. Probably like some ramping mechanism where, probably just like real dollars, the marginal utility decreases as it increases. So each dollar you increase over one, the utility continues to decrease uh, indefinitely towards the top end of the prize pool or, or the first place prize. So you'd probably take you'd take the buy-in, you'd take the first place prize, and then you would uh, chart it between all of the chips, and then you'd do like sort of an exponential thing, probably. Like an exponential curve, I would think, in, ter in terms of chips. So anyways, yeah, I'm thinking this is worth like 4,500 or so. 
And to be fair though, like 1,053 plus the min cash, it'll be 1,600 already. So it might be more worth more like 5K, but I don't know the answer. Raise up Jack-10. Raise, gonna call this shove for sure against Justin. Probably a fold for the min bounty. But Alberto calls the big blind, Jack-10-9 on the flop. We go for a large bet. We do a lot of checking here, but I think with Jack-10 to pair, we bet. Take it down. Cool. Well, the jack three. Let's go, Mono JKE. Let's go, man. Yakov is all in against Karen uh, Lundgren. Karin, Karen, Karin. Probably more likely to be Karin. Queens against Hates. Might as well open up the other table. Pads is on the other table as well. Down to 13. I think Pads won some big pots there because he's in third place now. So we are two off the money. On the bubble. Two off the money. And here's an all-in. Nino Ullman could knock out Nikita here and get us to the pure bubble. Let's see. How many players do you prefer at a at a table, Winnie the Pooh? If I'm on the grind, nine, because it allows me to play a lot of tournaments, uh, as opposed to always being like cut off button small blind situations. So on a Sunday grind, I like nine handed tables. Um, if I'm playing one table, I think seven, probably six or seven handed, is my favorite at one table. So eight is a reasonable balance, I think. It just depends on what I'm trying to do, you know. Like, playing poker hands is fun, but if you're trying to play a session, you want to play a bunch of tournaments as well and try and, like, farm some big stags. So I like nine-handed on a Sunday grind. Justin Raba going for the min-raise on 12 blinds. This should be pretty strong, right? Uh, it, it not, it's not always strong. And they can have some raise folds, but 
it's definitely likely to be a pretty strong hand. That said, there is a bounty in play, and for us, it's going to be getting a great price in the big blind. So I think we'll call 10 to 13 in the 530, getting hot in here. Mono, where you at, Mono? Uh, good luck, man. Are you uh, Frederick? We call. Hit hard, man. Don't hit soft. That's a hit soft. Oh, this is tough, man. It's just the question of like, are they polar? Do they always have the nuts here or can they not have the nuts? If they never not have the nuts, it's a disaster to get rid of our hand. I think I'll rumble, dude, but I'm not happy because it's probably just kings, but sometimes it's not. And then it's a huge mistake if we don't play this. So the no snap is great news. Maybe, what if it's like ace-king? That would be so nice if that's in the range here. Let's go. That's why you got to do it. It doesn't feel good. When you turn over kings, hindsight heroes are just like, it's obviously kings. But it's just not, it's not, the certainty is not high enough. We just got to run it there. Raise this on the bubble. Our hand is trash, but it is the bubble. So we raise. What you ate for Christmas today, Jamie? I had three McDonald's hash browns and a large coffee for breakfast. So you could call that a potato and a coffee. For lunch, I had a chicken breast and some white rice with some butter. And for dinner, I'm going to have a chicken breast with some white rice and some butter. It hasn't been the best culinary day. I do have some steaks in the fridge, though, but I feel like I got to eat the chicken tonight, man. So that's the that's the sad truth unfortunately not a great not a great food day today but it is what it is Merry Christmas you too vex89 uh waiting on this table before we continue on two off the money min cash will be six hundred dollars plus bounties and we've cashed for a thousand in bounties as of right now, 1,063. So it'll be about a 1,600 or so once we're in the money. Do you lose this to the other table? No, we're still in. You can take a look at the live hand viewer down there. You can see we've got the 530 still in there. King Jack's pretty reasonable. It gets a shove here for eight blinds. I'd reshove. If it folds to us, we're probably going to just open shove here. If someone opens, we'll probably three bet them. So I think unless we see two people put in action before us, we're going to be playing this hand. Um, just because bubble. And it's a good hand. King Jack's a good hand. Three bet. Do you have a pro badge like Patrick? I do. It doesn't show up on yourself for some reason, but I do have one when other people like observe my table. And a four bet to 1.5 million. I think this is pretty likely to be full of crap, actually. Uh, I think a lot of stuff wants to shove, so I'm actually going to peel here, getting a really good price because they're going to have bluffs, and when they have bluffs, we're going to play okay post flop. I do expect, like, you know, queens and jacks and tens and stuff to just shove, you know? So when they four bet like this, I don't think they're four betting ace king off on the bubble, right? Like, it's pretty much only aces and kings and bluffs. King nine four. We're not folding at this point with the, the pair of kings. For what it's worth, if they check raise, we call. We're concerned about a check raise, but we've got enough money in now to where we'd have to call, I think. 
but I think their four bet, like just most of the time their value range shoves. That's the problem with their four bet, I think. Right? Like only the very best value hands wanna wanna four bet not all in, so. And we take it down. Let's go. We're over 20 million, chat. 21 million, baby. The lead extends. Let's go. Okay. Posture check. Sit up, chat. We're in the city, dude. And two off the money. And we're going on a five-minute break. Hello, chat. We're back in action. Thanks for being here. Two off the money of this 530. 11 people make the money. We're down to 13. The min cash will be about $600 plus our bounties, which is, as of right now is $1,063 in bounties. So really, really good result. We are chip leading this flight and the tournament in general. We have the biggest stack uh, if we take the stack through today, too. So in a great position. Let's see if we can finish it out. And uh, maybe get another bounty, get some more chips. Let's see. We we're going to fold the queen five. Yo, grill on Twitch. Doing it, though. We're all doing it. Let's go. King Jack uh, and Ace King. I think we want the Ace King to stay in the tournament so both bounties stay. It'll mean Kareen is quite short with the bounty of 250 as opposed to this 125 bounty. So 1.8 million, 1.5 million. That's good for us. We want this bubble to continue as long as possible. I don't think Jack-8 is worth opening, though. A little bit too wide. Shoving a call. And now we want Kareen to win and Silva to get knocked down to a very short stack with a $300 bounty. Let's see what happens here. We want the 10s to win, chat. We want the 10s to win. I'm sorry, Silva. We do. There it is. Kareen wins. Okay. The bounties stay. And now a $312 bounty with 800K. Not a lot of chips, right? At 120. This is too wide of an open in theory, but I think with bounties is totally reasonable on the bubble here. Holds around to Yakov, who calls. Uh, big C bet here. Take it down. Twenty-one milli. Oh, tens. This is actually a value hand. Like we're gonna three bet bluff a ton, but now we get to three bet for value, and expect Kareem to just shove it over the top because they think we're full of crap. You know, like this is a great spot. So we're gonna three bet call Kareem. But I don't think we want to shove. I think we want to go like this because we would three bet bluff like this too, right? Do it, Kareen. Do it. Have the courage, Kareen. We're so full of crap. No! Kareen, please, Kareen. You're killing me, man. All right. Another pair. It's good. We just shove, especially with this bounty in play. Yakov opens the button. We just rip. But they fold. We're all in. Silva, call, deuces, okay, onwards. Silva folds to Kareen, who calls, queen, six, five, Two diamonds. I'm gonna bet. Our range is kind of weak here, but I feel like 10-8 is not a bad hand to bet. Quick call, 10 of the turn, check, check. Let's go. Nice to win that pot. 22 million, three-handed pot on the other table between Frank, Gunther, Nino Ullman, and Pads. 
King nine takes one down. Another pair. Just shove here with the stacks behind. Oh, there it is. There it is. Next. Shove again. It's a good hand to shove again. When called, we have decent equity. We do get called by Justin. It's ace 10. 40%. It's not bad. 40% is not bad. We need a jack or a nine. Oh, let's go. The 40% comes in. 125 bounty. Let's go. Let's go, chat. Really doing it. All right. That takes us up to 1187 or something. Eleven eighty-eight. Think raise. I know we've been shoving some, but we're gonna have some hands that that don't shove that raise fold. And we have the nuts. Alberto, do it, Alberto. For a three twelve bounty and to get through to day two in the money. Let's go, dude. That's an insane stack, man. Chat. We have $1,500 in bounties. Chat. We have $1,500 in bounties. We have $25 million in the next day of the tournament, dude. We have $25 million. We have the lead by 10 million chips. Or 10x starting stack. That's insane, bro. I don't know what to tell you, man. That is insane. It just is. It's just... That's just crazy. It is. I don't know what... I don't know what happened today or how we've done this, but we've done it, dude. Great spot. Dimitar, Anton, a couple gangsters. Uh, I've played with this player before, I think, as well. Vincent Yushin Huang. Let's give him the senior tag. Why not? Philip Hoffbauer. Not sure. Byron Kaverman. Great player. Gabriel Rodriguez. Not sure. All right. So in terms of knockouts and stuff, we got Anton Wig on a 375 knockout on two starting stags. Uh, Byron Kaverman, Kaverman on... 281 bounty on four starting stacks. Uh, let's go 800k up top. Day two of the 5300s. I will update the title so that it looks more excited. I thought that people would be more excited about a $15,000 cashed, but probably right. Well, the 9-8. King Jack suited here. We have aces in the 530. Anton Wig is all in. 375 bounty in play. We've got the absolute best hand in poker. I run so hot against Anton Wig. Honestly, I kind of owe him one here. I really don't want to lose, but I kind of have to feel fair about it if I do lose because I just suck out on Anton Wig at every stage. Uh, we are equal. Anton, we are now equal, okay? Please confirm to me in some way. Are we equal now? Uh, is there an equal... Thing. That did cost us a lot of money there, but uh, what are you going to do? I can't. There's no we're equal emoji. It's kind of a niche sentiment. <laughs> I do suck out on the man all the time. I'm going to fold 3-5. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send him a tweet. I'm going to send him a DM. If 
if I am able to. He doesn't follow me, but maybe we are even. There you go. Last 5200 flight might be longer. Shortest stack is 2.3 milli. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough, yeah. It says it starts in 17 minutes, but if not, they'll just be pushing it until we can get going. Kendo, converting the prime sub to a tier one. Kendo, thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Get some love in the chat for Kendo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dimitar goes for the open. Uh, Dimitar Bashov. Gonna fold. I think there's some arguments for playing the sand here. Uh, I'm just gonna pass on this one. Would you take 50k for all three of your stacks right now? Um... Like in actuality, no. Would would they be worth less than 50k in dollars? Probably. So yeah, I think you'd be making the right decision to cash out your three stacks for 50,000. But I'm a streamer, bro. So like I wouldn't do it because of the stream, right? But I think that would be a profitable exchange. Gabriel R goes for the raise, 5 4 suited, covering for a bounty. Three bets. We get a call, 664 in the flop with two spades. We bet small when it checks to us here. We beat a lot of hands that call our three bet, right? Like the ace X and the king X and all those broadways and stuff. We just out flopped them. So we are obviously bluffing pre-flop with a five high hand. Not a hand in a non-bounty with three bet here, by the way. <laughs> but we, we are three betting wider because it's a bounty. Um, but this is good. I mean, now we, like when they have queen jack suited, we're ahead. When they have king jack suited, we're ahead. King 10 suited. So. You know, when they have um, ace five suited, we're ahead. Like that sort of stuff. Back at a call, 10 of spades on the turn. I think we go check, check. Not a good turn. This is going to set up some difficult river spots for us, right? Uh, on a spade, we're clearly going to have to fold. It gets tough on like, you know, queen, right? Do we call the river better or not? <laughs> tough on a queen. I think just showdown. Probably still lose, but sometimes win. Okay. Moving on. Fold the four five off. Not enough space to add chip leading day two five thirty. I guess that would be no longer true. I'm in second place. But yeah, the title doesn't work. Uh, Thirteen minutes away now from starting up the next flight in the millions. Queen 10. Playable hands. Hey, Abacasa. Gifting this up to Logi's mom. Welcome to the team, Logi's mom. Courtesy of Abacasa. That's 48 gifted subs. Of at least 31 has been over the last couple days. Thanks so much, man. Really appreciate that. 
hearts in the chat, you guys. I think we're going to half C-bet, half check here. Mostly on the larger side. We're going to check this time against Andres Nemeth. Good player, right? Experienced player. Plays a lot of high-stakes stuff. Has been in this spot before. This is a better board for Andres Nemeth. We still do have a reasonably strong range here. Opening in the hijack. You know, like we've got some decent hands, but I don't think we always want to bet here. Same thing on the turn. I'm going to mix up whether we bet or check. We're going to check again. Fold River. One of those things where I'm going to go 50-50 on the C-bet on that board, I think. And the, the plan was the same on the turn. Oh my queens, dude. Come on now. Thank you, TJA. Byron Caverman, a guy that has played a lot of high rollers in the past. He's played some of the highest stakes events against great players, so uh, definitely a good player. I played deep with him in a PCA 10K one year. Um, of which I lost a couple pots, I think. But we've got a nice chip lead on him today, which is nice. Baron Vaughn, give this up to Nasty Nicholas. Welcome to the team, Nasty Nicholas, courtesy of Baron Vaughn. Abacasa, gift this up to Calcizio. Welcome to the team, Calcizio. Thank you very much, my friend. Abacasa, I appreciate that. What was that sound? Oh, it's the new song. Is that the weird? <laughs> it's a weird song. You know what? I'm just going to skip this one. That was weird. Hello, I'm new here. What's up, Arthur? What's up, man? Callie the Destroyer, welcome to the team. Thanks to Abacasa. That's 50 gifted subs, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. 5K starts in 10 minutes, we think. It's had to be pushed back a little bit because of... Um, there's one flight still going on, but it should start in 10 minutes, I think. Andres Nemeth, by the way, is actually leading the 5K. So they've got a big opportunity. Uh, raise 3-bet. We're going to fold the king 3 nine, seven. Raise from Andres Nemeth, call up from Philip H. We will squeeze here to 1.26. I think it's fine. One 1.2. With a good blocker with the ace, covering both opponents for a bounty, we're going to be able to squeeze here quite wide for value. I think our hand plays really poorly out of position, offsuit, post flop. So I don't think calling is an option. So for that reason, I like the sort of semi-bluff raise. Of course, we have equity sometimes when they call, and, and we can do well. But uh, yeah, I think it plays well as a squeeze. And a gem from Andres Nemeth, and we can't call. We fold. Appreciate you, dude. Um, yeah, we're still going to keep it 2.1. I was thinking about sizing up a little bit because quite deep now against a great poker player here. Um, but I think we'll just keep it on 252. The king-queen offsuit. Not a great hand. King-queen offsuit is definitely worth opening, but not one that does well against three bets. We don't have the ace blocker. We do get three bet from Dimitar, and we will fold. I look at James, poker looks easy, but when I play casually, it's totally different. Well, it's a lot of practice, you know? It's a lot of practice. Um, 
you know? So it's just a lot of time put in to, to learn these sort of skills. And poker skill is relative to, relative to like where you're measuring yourself, you know? So if you're a new player and you're measuring yourself against me, like, yeah, you're gonna feel like you're inadequate, but if you're a new player and you measure yourself against other new players, it's a lot easier to see beneficial things, right? So defend against Anton Wig in the 530 for 144. Check fold on the king 44. We can mess around with like backdoor spade hands, uh, like five six, six seven. Of course, diamond draws, backdoor ace high diamonds, backdoor even queen high diamonds and stuff. Queen eight is a uh, is too much here though. Yeah, if we have like queen ten with a queen of diamonds, yeah, we continue. We do something. Queen nine on the button. Raise from Philip. We're gonna fold. And fold the Jack Seven as well. Are the flakes next to the players based on nationality or where the player is based? From uh, Isaacson five five six. I think probably where their account is based, right? So if someone like Andres Nemeth is Hungarian or at least had an address at a bank account in Hungary to open an account. They could be like in Austria at the moment and still have a Hungarian flag. Um, but you, you do need to have, you need to have like documentation to essentially support your, your, where you're playing from. But it's not like picking up your IP address and then publishing like where the person is currently sitting on the couch, you know? So uh, Queen Jack's gonna be a fold here. Um, would you three bet ace 10 suited there as well? I forget the ace 10 suited. I do forget it. Um, oh, in the small blinds. No, I would, I would probably peel there some, but I would three bet some too, Sigbjorn, but, um, I would call some too. I'd definitely be more likely to call ace 10 suited than, than ace 10 offsuit for sure. Uh, tens, beautiful. Love this hand. Gabriel R goes for the raise to 252. First impression is to just call here in that we really don't mind keeping other bounty stacks involved in this pot. It gets a little bit awkward if we three bet and they four bet and then we play this massive pot where we call the four bet and we have to make tough reads on the flop and turn. Uh, I think calling with the tens is pretty standard here. Although in theory, you could, you could definitely three bet some tens here as well. The stack depth. Anyways, jack a5, rainbow. Usually it's going to go check, check, small bet here. What is that in your avatar? It's a piece of art named Pablo uh, that I own that we bought on the stream after a big score. So the idea with the avatar is whenever we get a new art score, we update the image to the new piece of art we've bought to correlate with you know the big result, basically. Uh, we're going to bet a quarter here on jack a5. Andres calls. Against Andres Nemeth, this hand plays pretty straightforward, I think. If Gabriel is involved in the spot as well, things get quite complicated. You're going to fold. Turn is the four. Better card for Andres Nemeth than us. I would expect to see a decent amount of leads here, but they check. We check as well. Uh, again, good card for them. Like, we don't we don't have straights here. They can have straights. 
Uh, we don't make any two pairs on that card. They can make two pairs. Like, it's just a check. Um, Jack on the river. And let's see what the sizing is, right? I would not be surprised to see a block bet sizing of like 400k here from an 8. Um, I think it's really tough with an overbet. They, they go for 354. I don't think I can raise. Like, I do think it's an 8, but my read isn't strong enough. So I think it's just a clear call. It is an 8. Take it down. Like, if you're super gangster and you're super confident that like, oh, that's an 8. Um, you could You could put in a raise, but... I don't have that much confidence, especially against like a great, great player here. They just be straightforward. Standard is call, just call and move it on. Mostly bad here, small, same thing. This time we don't really have a great hand, but the strategy for now is the same. Nice. Up in the 14, 15, 16 million range, like we're gonna be battling for sure. The Hungarian player is one of the best in the country for sure, man. Plays all of the high stakes tournaments online and as well. Anton Wig opens. Jack three, um, I think, is a fold. Definitely a fold. Laid back GD. Drop the two month reset. Welcome back to the team. Laid back GD. Thanks for the support. Hearts up and chat, you guys, for the reset. Thank you, thank you. And all the players have fed in. It is 5.2 million in the prize pool chat of millions online. First place is $859,000. Second place is $591,000. Third place is $406,000. The min cash is $10,600. It's a little smaller than I would have thought. $10,600 is the min cash. But hey, that's all right. We're on the board. 10.6K. And let's keep going. Nines against Ace King. Anton Wig doing it. Byron Caverman is out. <coughs> Anton on 7.3. We've got a very dope hand with the Ace King. Um, I think I'm going to pure three bet here against Andres Nemeth. Philip H goes for the three bet. Ace King offsuit, I think, this is a clear four bet. Uh,. If we had some other strong hands, we could choose other things to do, but I think we don't really have much of a choice with this hand. So I think we want to wait a bit. We would love to give the impression of fold equity, like if they were to come over the top, but yeah, I think. 2.1 million is fine. Take it down. Swing and a miss. The Jack Six. Any thoughts about Fedor calling the Brazilian guys for collusion? Is party looking into how these people play? Also on your home court site from Britney Spurs. Um, so yeah, Fedor holds, basically posted a screenshot of a streamed final table where a player made a raise fold in a uh, a spot that looked uh, like not the right play for sure. So I think Fedor is reasonable in sort of bringing it up. I I don't feel, I'm not of the majority opinion that I feel like the sort of um, death by fire reaction is justifiable in that the hand itself is within a range of unlikely, but within a range of reasonable plays. You know, I think it's the incorrect play to raise full ace jack, but it's not far away from correct and it's too close to, you know, clearly indict someone. Not to mention, like, there's the opportunity for misclicks. There's the opportunity for things that, 
that are that just happen. So I think Fedor pointing out that this is something that deserves to be looked at, I think is a great thing and the right thing to do, right? I think Fedor even posting about it on social media, given depending on how he is to go about doing that, is a good thing. I think people's reaction of sort of burning them at the stake, unjustified, unreasonable. There needs to be more investigation done into more hands. So I think that uh, people drawing conclusions sort of rashly from one data point is, uh, well, it's just not really a form of justice that I like to deploy. I feel like there needs to be a little bit more certainty, even if it's like 70-30 that it was a spot where someone was cheating. The 30% is enough to justify, uh, you know, getting more information instead of immediately burning someone at the stake. And in regards to like what Party Poker does for game integrity, I met with the game integrity team about two years ago, learned a lot about what they do, what they're doing to ensure that the, the site is safe and fair. In regards to are they adjusting based on the tweet yesterday? I don't know. I haven't talked to them, but uh, I trust them to be on top of, uh, of game security and game integrity. It's an important thing, so. That's that, man. Open the jacks. Fill up. How about fill up? We gamble. All of it. Let's go. Come on, fill up. Get a call. King 9 4 in the flop, two clubs. We bet. We just very often bet here, uh, raising an early position. Get a call on the big blind. Yes, it sucks when Philip has King 5 suited, right, chat? That sucks. We're betting into a better hand. But you got to think, Philip calling in the big blind has literally every suited hand here, right? Like has a very wide range of hands. So against all those hands, we're value betting jacks. Value betting against a nine, value betting against a four, value betting against the flush draws, against the ace highs. Yes, we're betting into a hand that's slightly better a few times, but not that often in the grand scheme of things. So we bet, we take it, it's good to go, moving on. Race from Anton Wig, Dimitar, been pretty chilling so far. Calls behind. Andres Nemeth squeezes. We fold. Day two starting in 16 minutes now. Sorry to keep you guys waiting. I obviously didn't know it was going to be pushed back this long. But uh, yeah, 16 minutes. All the flights are in there. Um, 859,000 for the win. Let's go. 156 players left. Who's the artist of the painting? If you can share. Uh, Victor Tichenko. Let me, Victor Tichenko. Let's see if I can get the uh, link for you. Queen 10 suited is great. Flash and pan. Good luck today, Jamie. Big day. It is indeed, my friend. Thank you so much. The three month resub. Welcome back to the team. Hearts on chat. Patrick Lauber goes for the open to 321. We three bets. Queen 10 suited. To 1.2. Biggest cash is 105K. It was in. April or May or June. At some point this year. And Jack A5, one heart. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting here. I don't want to bet because they may just fast play some better draws, which I hate, right? We've got backdoor flush draw. We've got a gut shot. We've got an overcard. So I think I want to start with a check. It also seems to me our hand isn't strong enough to where we really want to check raise here. Although there is some arguments for it. Uh, it goes check, check. Seven hearts in the turn. I think we check and don't fold. It really sucks if they shove, but I think we check and don't fold. And if it goes check, check, then we bet the river, probably. In that, what sort of hands? Check, 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 and then bluff river. Uh, it'd need to be like, I don't know, ace five suited, uh, king, king nine suited, but, but a lot of these just bet, you know? We see about a 1.5 million. Hmm. Against this bet, I kind of want to check raise here. Especially when it check checks flop and they go two thirds. Yeah, I'm going to go for it. Uh, good luck. Come on, let's go! Oh my goodness, chat. 
We had outs, but we didn't want to see the set. I'll tell you that. 31 million, we're back in the lead, baby. And how much is that, uh, that bounty right there? Uh, that was a $609 bounty. Huge nine of hearts coming through, man. Huge nine of hearts. Andres Nemeth calling. Calling with the sixes. Let's go, dude. Back in the lead, chat. Nine five deuce. Fine flop. Andres Nemeth is going to be a beast here. That's the thing. We don't three bet pre. I'm expecting aggression from this player. He's a good player. He's capable of knowing that like our flatting range is really capped in this spot, although that's a good card for a flatting range. That's got to scare him a little bit. But if like turn is a deuce or something, like I'm just expecting bombs away, barrel, barrel, barrel. Uh, and now I think I'm going to fold. That's a good card for our range. We don't improve, right? It's not like a seven or an eight where you pick up a gutter or something like that. Um, the fact that he barrels on the 10, I think it's fine. Get out of the way. What is worrisome is that they play as a big team. I, I hear what you're saying, dude. I don't think it's it's a new thing to have people play in stables to where they are rooting for each other's success and stuff like that. I get it. Uh, so I, I think that it's reasonable for people to enter financial agreements to where they have incentive in each other doing well. It's similar to like swapping action or buying or selling action from people that are in the same tournaments, right? Uh, it, it slightly changes incentives. I think in a perfect world in poker, there would be some sort of disclosure in terms of all of your sort of financial incentives in that, let's say you swapped with someone on a final table and you both have 10% of each other. It would change things slightly from a mathematical pers perspective, but I think ethically, obviously it changes nothing, right? Like ethically, you have responsibility to operate as if you don't have that financial incentive. Um, so yeah, it's it's tough, it's gray. I think that you can't burn someone at the stake because of one hand that is that seems damning, but it's close enough to where it could just be an error. You know, they could just be wrong about the way they think about poker. It also could just be a misclick. Like there needs to be more than one hand data point to burn someone at the stake and the reputation. It's not enough. It's just not enough, right? Um, but I think it deserves to be looking into and respect for bringing it forward so that it can be looked into. People's reactions are too extreme, too quick. Like, it's just not a reasonable way of of going through the world, in, in my view, to just immediately burn people like that without the necessary data, like or or information. It's too quick. If our if our the rest of the world operated that way, uh, it would be a really unjust and unfair world. In that outliers happen, you know, like twenty percent occasion things happen. And if the guy one in 10 just like has a knowledge gap to where he thinks he can raise fold too much, you think because of the risk premium you need, it is a call like based on pretty much any metric you run it, it's a call, but it's the line and or within one hand of the line. And so I don't think that you can, you can make that judgment call within one hand of the line. Is it rare to make a living playing online poker? I mean, yeah, depending on how you define rare, but like, I think there's thousands of people do, that do it in the world, but uh, there's you know millions of people that play the game, so it's quite difficult to do. But there is a large economy of people that profit from the game. But it's hard. It's not. It's not an easy thing where it's just like you can rock up to the game and uh, and you can just win because you're awesome. Like that's not how it works, you know. And I I think like you said, there's a, there's a lot of people that are profitable, but they do it as sort of a as a secondary income source, you know, it's a serious hobby and or it's like they used to play for a living and now they they play some big events because they're really great at poker, but they also have a job doing other things like there's all sorts of niches within poker in terms of what it means to people. Philip goes for the squeeze. Raise call squeeze. Philip's got the bounty in play. Ace king against king queen. Main event is starting up in five minutes and five seconds. What I'm going to do is going to take a like a half break here, chat. That the tournament's going break in a second. Uh, so I'm going to take like a two minute break, and then uh, we're going to be back early because we're going to get our table draw. Okay. So you're watching Poker Simples on Twitch. Ten back in three minutes. minutes. At the end, shoves we call. Uh, I think I'm going to four bet fold to an all in. 
from Igor, which would be like 150 blinds. But I think this is going to have a reasonable amount of uh, squeeze bluffs against these two good players. Ace-King offsuit, I really don't like calling this out of position. We could just fold, but I think a four-bet fold works. This is in the 530. So I'm going to make it like 3.3 .3 million here or so because we're quite deep against this opponent. If they come all over the top all in, like I'm going to fold, it has way too much aces and kings. But I think this is a reasonable play here with ace-king offsuit. And I don't think we want to make it like 2.4 million because we're just still so deep out of position. They can call almost everything. Like they can do really well with any pair, etc. cetera. So uh, we get a call from Dimitar. I think mostly check on this board. Like when we have aces, we want to check. Uh, we don't have any nines in our range. They probably shouldn't either. But I think we just check. Hope Dimitar has like kings, right? Aces is possible for them. Same hand is possible for them. Uh, it goes check, check. We will bet the turn. I think we probably go small bet, small bet here. The thing that's really sick is if we get raised. But if we get raised on the turn, I really have no idea what it is. I think we check to induce here. We're never getting called by kings, so we just always check here. It is really sick if they shove all in because I'm, like, again, it's raise, call, squeeze, four bet, cold call. I'm, I'm trying to find a hand that they can have that we beat here, realistically. Uh, but it goes check, check, we probably, like I, like I guess we beat kings, I guess, right? Queens? Cool, okay, 38 million. The ranges are so defined there. It's not a thing where it's just like, oh, you know, like you don't value about wide enough. It's like, dude, raise, call, squeeze, four bet, cold call. Ranges are tight, you know? Maybe not in like a fishy game, but they're tight here. Fold the 8-deuce in the 5k. Still card dead. We're going to 3-bet queens against that same Dimitar. We're on 37 million, though. Continuing to chip up. Anton's all in. This is the dream. We don't fold. Good luck. Oh, we got a flip against Anton. We're even now, Anton. So I do feel like this is mine. Come on, let's go. Let's go, chat. Another 515 bounty. Some more chips, dude. Are we bounty kings, dude? Nah, someone someone has, there's one person with a bigger bounty, the chip leader. But we have 3,062 in bounties. Wow. Meanwhile, in the 5K, we're going to fold. That's a wow. I don't know what else to say, dude. That's just a wow. Raise the threes. Here it is, in the 5K chat. Cross your fingers around the world. We're all in with 10 blinds. Here's the start to the comeback. Here's the start to the chip up, to the climb to victory. The climb to $859,000. This is hand number one, getting us moving in the right direction with the Ace King. Against Vincent B. Against Dmitry Urasov. This is not ideal that there's two all-ins here, but it's okay. You better fold. I don't know what you have, Andrew, but you, you do <laughs> fold it, please. Oh no, ace, two outs, two outs. Uh, there's no pain here. There's no pain in suffering. $10,652, very nice. Uh, what am I supposed to do? I have ace king. I'm all in, I lose. I can live with that. GG chat, we're not gonna win the 5K. Um, we're not gonna win the 850,000. We are not the millions champions today. We do, however, have a pretty exciting tournament nonetheless. I think it's still quite awesome, quite fun, quite interesting. 
We are second of 105 with 3,062 in bounties. Oh! And we're in second place on 43 million chips, basically tied for the lead here. Average stack is 10 million, so we have 4x average stack with 105 left, right? So when the field is down to 25, when the field is down to 26, the average stack is going to be our stack, 44 million. Or it'll, it'll, yeah, it'll be 44 million. So this is an average stack with three tables left. We're in a great, great spot to hopefully do th something special here. And of course, all the bounties along the way. So let's keep it up. Stay focused. Fold the king deuce. I really wish I could have won that millions online for you, but obviously there's absolutely, like, there's no thought process needed in regards to how we played today. We had auto folds and then a shove, and that was it. And that was it. You know, like, there's nothing, nothing to think about there. So I can live with that. I'll sleep well tonight. And uh, it is an art score as well. Confirms. It is an art score, so we will be buying a piece of art uh, for sure for that. I think probably just one piece of art between the two, unless this is like a really special one, you know? I think just one piece of art for the two scores combined. People saying, dude, what? In that in that four bet pot chat, their range is like Jax plus and Ace King only, I think. I don't think they have a hand that isn't Jax Queens, Kings, Aces, or Ace King. So when when you think about Ace King, it is only getting one street of value from Kings and Queens and Jax, right? Uh with Ace King it chops, so there's no benefit of um of continuing. Ooh, this needs to be a, a muck about here. Ace King, you're chopping with. You don't get any value. Aces, you lose your whole stack. Uh, kings and Queens and Jacks, you're only getting one street of value. So it's a clear check on the flop, right? You're only getting one street of value. It's a different thing if it's a raise call, squeeze call, right? But it's raise call, squeeze, four bet, cold call from the original Razor. It's different. You've, you've got to understand the preflop ranges to play that hand well. Uh, check raise, get a call from Luciano. We uh, probably want to bet here some, but let's roll the frequency counter we will bluff and we need to go big here we need to go quite big we need to give ourselves a river shove if we want to so we're gonna go five million the thing about the sizing as well is they're not going to give us credit for pure hearts here definitely not ace high hearts so um it's interesting to see what they decipher from that and a five on the end. Do we go for it or not? Probably not, man. It's risking a lot. Obviously this bounty is nice, but we do have the capability of having a lot of bluffs. It's risking a lot. I think we check. Moving on. Got to stay a little patient there on the turn. That's a big lost pot, but I think the overbet on the turn is okay.
two of 101, 70K up top. 530 KO. Change the title. Two of 101. All right, let's go. Yeah, GG guys. What can you do? The Kings was probably thinking about can I fold, but no, they can't. They can't fold Kings. Like they can definitely fold Jacks. I think Queens is the one where you want to tank in that spot in the big blind, but I think you call Queens as well. I think you fold Jacks for sure in the big blind and then call Queens plus and uh and it's probably just Queens Plus. Like, you full, probably full Ace King in that spot where it goes shove, shove, shove. I think it's Queens Plus. I don't think you can fold Kings, though. I think Kings are too good. Likelihood of, of, of Ace Kings and Ace Queens and stuff is too high. Jack Eights. Igor Prokop goes for the raise. We're going to fold. Our hand's not so good. Don't have any really short bounties. I mean, Philip H is the best bounty spot. On the table on uh, 24 blinds, right? Yep. Seven eight is a bold in the cutoff. Uh, do we want to do this? Not really right now. There's a 320 closer and stuff going on on the side, but it, dude, this 530 is too intense, right? There's 98 left. There's 98 left. First place is 70,000. We have such a great stack. There's huge bounties in play. We are second place in bounties in the tournament. And then I think we just want to focus in here. Well, the 7-8, but still really deep, right? We are very deep stacked right now. So we've got a lot of time to maneuver and play. Yeah, this is like live cash game stack, basically. It's it's a really deep stack. So, yeah. Queens would call a small bet on the river. I don't think they would, J-Reb. Uh, I would definitely bet significantly against that. Even if we bet 20%, you've got to think about what our cold four betting range is. Our cold four bidding range almost always as a bluff contains an ace. Almost always. Uh, raise, call, squeeze, cold four bet, call. We bet on the flop. Uh, I mean, you uh, you got to hope we have king, queen suited that is going to block bluff the river. It's just not going to happen, dude. These guys are too good. It's not going to happen. Dimitar Bashov. Takes it down. 16 million. Definitely some big stacks on our table, right? Like there's there's 95 left, right? 
And for context, 20th place has 17 million. So we've got one, two, three people on our table in the top 20. Kind of unlucky. And then this player is just outside, so and they're probably 25th. So we probably have four out of eight at our table or in the top 25. A lot of chips at play, but also dangerous for for these 20 million stacks and then for us on 36 million as well. Zach, 2886, what's up, Zach? Good to see you in the house, man. Thanks for the 76 month resub on the streak. Hey, chat. Hey, Jamie. Good luck, everyone on the street today. Thanks, man. How are you? Are you uh, are you playing poker, Zach? What's going on in life? Where are you working? What's happening? Thanks for the 76 month resub, man. Welcome back. Just wait for the blinds to go up. Pick some monster hands. You're at the final table. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have a pretty good chance of making the final table here. Like I said, uh, our stack will be average when there's 30 left in the tournament. So it's a pretty good position as of right now. But we're also trying to win the tournament. You know, we don't want to sneak our way into the final table, which would be 3,700 cashed, get no more bounties, cash for 6K. Uh, you know, right now we've we've already got... 3,700 cashed here. Uh, we want to put ourselves in a, in a position to win the 70K for the win, right? So we're in a great spot. It's awesome. We're going to keep fighting. But we still definitely try and accumulate and pick up chips and get knockouts and all of that. You know, it's the balance between the two. But my mindset isn't on survival here. My mindset is on uh, let's win. We got to win all the chips, you know? No, Chuck Killa, we can't do that, dude. No, 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 no. People can just multi-twitch. You know, they can they can watch a couple streams. We can't be sweating other people. But yeah, you can you can open up both if you like. You think I'm taking with two kings was him trying to see if there's aces? Nah, we got like a five minute delay. Can't even get close there. I don't think he would uh, wait, try and wait to see. He was probably thinking like, man, can I fold this? What are the chances of aces? But Tank for a pay jump? Ah, oh, true, 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 true. Was there a pay jump there? Possible. Possible as well. Flopper 2626, that would be a good strategy in a small stakes tournament, but it, we're playing a really high stakes tournament. All of these opponents are really capable of reading ranges. They're going to know if I bet one third on flop and one third on river that their opportunity of winning with queen, queens is effectively zero. They're just not going to call. So it, it, our opponents are too good because they're too capable of seeing what our hand range is on the river. They're not going to pay it off. There's, it's a lose-lose for us, right? It's a lose-lose. I think uh, our best chance of getting paid is to check and allow them to potentially bluff with some hands and uh, get them to hopefully bluff with the queens, right? Maybe they decide to bluff queens, try and bluff kings, thinking that we wouldn't play ace-king that passively, etc. I just don't, I really don't think it's going to win any money. I would bet, uh, I don't know, 10% of my bankroll that it's not going to win any money betting queens on the river uh, or betting ace-king into queens on the river. That's what I bet. Three five is Garbo. It's a bad hand, not worth playing. Even if these shorter stacks with bounties play, we're out. Dimitar goes for the three bet. That's exactly Pison WTF. Yeah, man. I mean, it'd be nice to win, but it doesn't even sting to be honest. It's just like it's it's just a mathematical certainty that that's gonna happen sometimes and. There, you know, I don't take it personally whatsoever, and it just happens a lot, you know. Thank you, 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, we're just going to win this 530. We're going to get the thing done here today. We're in third place in the tournament right now with uh, 93 left. Good amount of money already cashed as well. It's exciting. Jack four is bad, dude. It's a bad hand. As Luciano now moves into second place in the tournament, we're third. It'll update in a second, yeah. So second and third. Again, kind of an unlucky table placement for us in that we don't get to play table captain with a bunch of short stacks and get bounties. Like, it's a kind of deep table. Fold the jack four. Thank you, Poker Sharks. Thanks. Do you already have your eyes on a particular piece of art? It depends how big we win. There's a really nice piece, but they start at like 5K. So I'd need to like win this tournament to buy it. If it's not that, then I haven't looked at anything. I think I'm not going to buy anything by Victor unless I see something so amazing. But I have so many pieces by him that I think... Uh, I don't think I should. I think I should branch out a little bit and that it's been a long time since I've bought a piece from, uh, not from Victor or Sarah. It's been a long time, like about a year, almost like 10 months. So I'll probably do some browsing, you know, for the 6-4. Philip raises. The 109, by the way, we're still, you know, we're on 6 million. We're just kind of waiting for our spots. Don't have anything happening there. 271 left. Just sending out a tweet to update the Twitter sphere. Cool. Cool. Fold the six deuce. Suit in. Uh, I was surprised to see you commented on Paige Sanders' latest video. I was even more surprised when I saw your name in the special thanks. His videos are criminally underwatched. The amount of research and effort put into them. How did you know him? B-Ben, what's up, bro? They are, aren't they? Uh, yeah, you guys, there's a YouTuber named Paige. What's his last name? Uh, just search Paige Mont Montreal on YouTube and you'll find his videos. Uh, he makes really, really great stuff. King 10 is on the edge. No small blind here. I'm going to give it an open. Uh, so I was watching some of his videos about Montreal stuff, and then I just reached out to him, basically, B-Ben, and said, hey, I like your videos. Like, let's, uh, I'd like to meet you. We go for a bet here against Philip. 
This is a really good flop for Philip. That said, we raise under the gun. So we have all of the overpairs. Philip doesn't, right? Philip doesn't have aces or kings or queens or jacks very often. Like occasionally he'll slow play, but most of the time we'll see three bets. So this is a spot where we have a stronger range in general, although we don't hit the board that often, right? Uh, Philip calls. We got a five in the turn. Check, check. It's sad, but like we mostly want to check, check over overpair stuff as well. We have no credibility. We check. Damn. Um, so yeah, I reached out and was like, hey, I'd like to meet you. Like, do you want to go to walk or something? So we went on a walk. We shot some B-roll, hung out. We've hung out a few times now, actually. He came over to my place a month and a half ago. So yeah, it's just I saw his videos. I reached out and said, hey, what's up? Let's hang out. And that was it, just because I like the stuff he made. Ace check at the big line here. We're going to call against Luciano. Ace, nine, seven, two diamonds. I think we want to mostly just check all here. Our hand's not good enough to check raise, especially at the stack dev, but we are very strong relative to a bunch of the hands we typically have in this spot. So let's get a nice blank turn. Beautiful. That's the dream. And and the plan is as of now is just like check call, check call, check call probably. We have a pretty decent bluff catcher. We don't block diamonds. We do block a couple straight draws, but we're also really high up in our range. Uh, relative to what you'd think we have. At least on the turn we are. On the river, we have a bluff catcher, but I think it's fine. Cool. It's not a bad card for a range, but again, I mean, same sort of logic applies as on the turn. Uh, and they shut down Luciano on the river, so we pick it up. 37 million. Uh, King deuce with diamonds. Reasonable. Surprised to not see a bluff on the river, actually, with that hand, but I guess with the diamonds... Figures there's better combinations. Gonna flat here. Want to keep this uh, player in the pot with the bounty. Don't really want to play 150 blinds deep out of position with ace-king offsuit. I think it's gonna set up poorly in a lot of spots. So we just call. And king-jack three. I think we do check raise here. Um, we probably check a decent amount of turns, but if you plan to check raise, goes check, check. Some small and some big bets here. Probably gonna bet small and then go for some sort of ripper bet frequently, uh, but we take it down. Uh, Zach, yep, I'm working building on the down payment for a house while working nine to five. Dabbling on off days, trying to use poker and the stock market to build my own down payment as well. Life's had its down for sure, but I had to keep grateful for what I have and not worry about the future. Yeah, man. It's been a tough time for the world over the last several years, almost universally. I mean, individuals have flourished, but collectively it's been not the happiest of times, dude. So I think if you can keep your head up uh, during times like these, um, likely happier days are to follow, I think. All the best, man. Thanks for being here. Rodrigo, we're all in with the king queen. Good luck in the one on nine. I've noticed that with survival, you end up with the ch uh, with all the chips. Building stacks seems an illusion. Only when you like flop boats or flushes or turn them, you never have value hand in the game, or your opponent has six high. I think that's a little bit too broad of a generalization, but sometimes it may work out like that. Yeah, but awesome. I know we don't have we don't have the room view anymore, but I think it's a worthwhile trade off, you know. Let's go to the A State suit in the one and nine. Do you ever resell art as an investment? I don't. What is funny? So I read a book on this uh, about the art re like art market, and. The sad truth about the art market is unless you're buying like brand name artists, and what I mean is like uh, Jackson Pollock and um, you know, like the, the big names that sell at Christie's uh, and have agents that rep them, like those are the pieces of art that gain value. And usually it gains value at a slightly slower rate than 
real estate or, or stock market, but like over a 30 year time horizon, it might gain like 5% per year. But like, if you're talking the mid tier art market, it's not a particularly good investment vehicle. Uh, they need to have a really established brand and name and be connected to the right people for it to be like a, a feasible thing to buy and sell uh, conventional art from like mid-sized creators. And of course you could find the diamond in the rough that becomes the really famous artist, but it's really difficult to do. Uh, is my takeaway from this book from Don Thompson, which is like the, I forget what it's called, the $10 million shark or something, right? Damien Hurst made the piece with the shark in silicone and it sold for 10 million or something. Um, it might've been a hundred million, I forget. It's irrelevant, isn't it? So yeah, I don't, I don't really buy physical art for the resale value, although I do like the stuff I buy and I think Victor is criminally underrated. Like his stuff is just amazing. Uh, so maybe it'll be worth a ton one day, but I just buy it because I like it actually, man. It's not, it's not in this investment or to like diversify outside of other investment vehicles. It's just because I enjoy having art stuff around me, honestly. It just makes me happy, man. It, it prompts me to think about things uh, it inspires me. It's just a nice thing to have in my life every day. That's it. That's why. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't plan to sell any of it, but I am thinking about making a Twitter account where I list up everything I own at the price I would sell it for just in case someone crazy wants to buy it. Right. You know, like, uh, like Inga here, one of the first pieces we bought, I think Inga was $300 from Victor. Now it would be like 1200 because his stuff is appreciated in value, right? But like I'd probably list Inga for like, I don't know, 15K. And like if someone said, hey, I want Inga for 15,000, I'd be like, okay, you've got her. Enjoy, right? Like that works in NFTs in the digital world and that it's so easy to just list uh, and it's so liquid, like it's so easy. In physical art, it's not, right? Like you, your first impression is not to relist something you immediately bought as like, okay, I would get rid of it for this. Like, that's not a natural thing. But I thought about, hey, maybe I should, why not? Ace-8 is a good squeeze hand here. It's got the blocker. So we'll make it two million. Philip is tired of our shit for sure, but I still think it's worth it to squeeze with this particular hand. Nice. Pretty wide peel, but I like it with the bounty. What six cash game do you think you could beat? It depends on where. If you're talking online, I really don't know. Like, I'm, I'm just not sure. Uh, I would have to relearn some ranges that I'm used to anti ranges with short stacks. So, I don't know. I feel like I could probably just beat 100 out of the, out of the bag and then could do some minimal work and be 200 is my guess. And then a lot of work to beat anything over top of that. But I don't know. And then I could play in some live cash games or in some private games. And I could, it, like, stakes are relative. What is the skill level of online cash games right now? It's, I don't play them really. So it's tough to say. I'm mostly just focused on tournaments. It's tough, dude. I don't know. Like, I'm not a, I don't know, man. That, that question is just really a lose lose for me in that. <laughs> I'm either greatly overestimating my ability or greatly underestimating the skill set of the, the player pool or vice versa. And whenever it's wrong, it's wrong. So it's just a, it's not a very fun thing. I'm just gonna fold in the turn here. Ace King. Uh, peel. No, three bet. Why I don't want to peel, there's a specific reason why. When it goes raise, call, squeeze, jam, right? Luciano can squeeze super wide. If Philip has like jacks here and they jam and I jam ace king and I get it all in for 140 big blinds against Luciano, 
and they just have like queens, it's a disaster, right? It's a huge disaster. So I'd rather just go for the three bet with Zen. Obviously we're excited, but I don't think it's the spot to slow play with that hand because of the super train wreck cooler that can arise. Like if we three bet and we get a four bet, we just call and play post flop and we avoid getting in 140 blinds deep. It goes raise call, squeeze, jam, re-jam, call. Uh, we cry all day, you know? That's what's at stake. King, queen here, jam. But listener, we're in a good spot, man. Three of 72. Three of 72 right now. 170K up top. Good spot. Aces, jacks here. Aces do it. Dimitar is out. Philip H. Printing on 16 milli. No longer on a short stack that we can mess with. Has plenty of chips now. Yeah. 10,862. I think was the pure min cash. Pretty sure. Forty million, dude. This is nice. This is a nice chip up from twenty five to start, right? Average stack right now is sixteen million. So when there's thirty five left, the average stack will be thirty two million. For context, so we don't really have a good final table stack yet, but we have a very reasonable uh, final three table stack, you know, basically. Where's Pablo? Pablo is the bottom of my stairs, but Pablo is also my avatar, so we get to see him all the time. What's up, Adamar? Thanks, man. Cheers. Five thirty plays to the win today, actually. It will play to a winner. Yep. Do you own any NFT NFTs? I don't right now, but I really like the space. I really enjoy sweating it, in uh, being interested in it. Like, uh, I have an NFT project that has been in the works for the last six or seven months that will be coming out in, in 2022. You guys will hear about it uh, pretty soon, but it's not like, not me as an artist or anything like that. It's, uh, it's like a... Uh, it's a bigger project than that, basically. But so I, I really like NFTs. I'm into it. I just haven't pulled the trigger on investing in any of them. I think you have to stay like pretty knowledgeable about what's going on. Um, I don't have any money to buy. I don't have enough money to buy the blue chip NFT stuff like the Board Eight Yacht Yacht Club or the Punks or any of the really big names, Fidenzas or Art Blocks or whatever, right? Like I don't have the cash for that or I don't find it a reasonable investment from an investment perspective. And from an art perspective, I just haven't found the stuff that I really like in NFTs. A lot of it is collectible and or access to a club kind of stuff. Um, so artistically, it's not really stimulating to me, but I'm, I will buy some NFTs for sure. I like it, love the space, think it's super dope. And I think the future is bright, man. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how it all develops. But I don't own any at the moment. I'm not super hyped on, like, a lot of the club avatar, like, 10,000-piece, 5,000-piece sort of group things. Just because, I don't know, I feel like I've got my own group here on Twitch and, and like, our community here in, in poker. And uh, if anything, I feel, like, overstretched. 
already with that, you know? Like, I don't know how much I can really contribute to another community, but I don't know, man. It'd be different. If I was really wealthy, I would probably look at having a board ape, ape yacht club, look at having a crypto punk, but I'm not. So here we are. Fold the three six. To be developed, I think. To be continued, right? I remember Inga getting mixed impressions from the chat, to say the least. Uh, by Goatee. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think so. Are, is that Victor, by the way? I don't know if it is. The initials are the same. It could be. Victor, the, the artist. Doubtful, but possible. The... <laughs> What I just love about Inga, and she's kind of far away, so you can't really see her here, but like when you look close up at Inga, there's so much depth within her face. It's the only art that I buy that is portrait stuff. It's the only one. Everything else is sort of abstract idea-based stuff, but Victor's is mostly subjects. But there's just... Uh, the story within them is incredible. Like, I don't understand how he's able to elicit uh, just such a, a depth of uh, character from a still image. Uh, I find it really, really dope. I love it. How could it be 170K up top? Uh, that one is not supposed to be there. I promise you it was not supposed to be i wasn't trying to scam it's 70 camp top i'm so sorry i think it's when i had 101 left it got snuck into the the 70 sorry i really i mean i feel bad because it looks like i'm just blatantly clickbaiting and i honestly didn't mean to do that i mean i believe in the clickbait i believe in like making your stuff look as appealing as possible but it has to be true right you can represent yourself in the most exciting possible way but it can't just be a blatant lie and that's just a lie it's 70k or so about a6 uh dat butt dough drop of the sub with the prime get some love in the chat for dat butt dough thank you very much my friend i appreciate you hearts out welcome welcome Open A6 would have been pretty interesting against a small blind shove there, but we don't see it. King 8 5 on the flop. I think it's about half half here between bet and check. Uh, we're going to bet this time. And not super small. We're quite deep here, so I don't think we want to go for like these one third bet sizings. I bet if we ran this, and this is not a spot where we have a ton of practice as tournament players. But like 100 blinds deep, I'm assuming it's mostly bigger bet here, actually. It's not often going to be a bet size that small, but we bet and take it, and that's fine. Philip H. goes for the raise. Um, peel. Peel. This is danger. This is danger. Okay. Fold to the big blind. Deuce 4 4 on the flop. Get about 600,000 here, but one quarter. The king deuce. If you could own one NFT, uh, what would it be? I'd own a Beeple, I think. In that I think Beeple is one of the few artists in my, from my point of view that is kind of doing like the Banksy thing uh, in NFTs, you know? So I don't feel as if like, I, I like people's work. I don't find it to be like really pushing broadly art to a place that has never been before. Like it, it operates in 
this like internet culture thing, you know? So if you insert a Beeple's work onto a canvas into an art history uh, like book, I don't think it would necessarily be like, this is the next stage of art, right? It's not pushing that forward, but he's kind of the one that's doing art in NFTs closest to the, the conventional art history movement kind of thing. So I think Beeple's work is uh, pretty good, you know, pretty dang good. It's way too expensive in that I can't own it. And like, again, I'm not really interested in investing in art as an investment because I think other investments outpace it generally, unless you really are into the meta game of NFTs, in which case, great. But I'm not, I don't have the time. But yeah, I think he's probably the most important artist in NFTs. That's the end of the sentence. It's probably a Beeple. Um, but then I think a, a CryptoPunk would, is probably a good investment as well, probably. I think it'd be a good, a profitable investment. Like it could be a homepage of the internet thing, you know, where you you pay 10,000 for a pixel. Like it could be one of those things that just uh, falters progressively forever, but likely it won't. Likely it'll be an important collection of, of art. It's kind of like identity art, right? I guess in the same way that there's identity politics, it's kind of identity art. It's not about the subject of the art, it's not about the quality or the interest of the art, it's about what the art makes you as a human. Like that's kind of the, the shift, the effect on the beholder. Not visually, but as a human. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? We're deep in the 530. Four of 68 chat. First place is 70K. Big dreams. Um, let's check out this pot that I fold against Ola Shemian. It's pretty interesting. Back in five minutes. King seven Big moments, man. 800 cashed, 3,000 in bounties. First place is going to be about 70K. Loving it. Having a good time. Thank you so much, man. GG on your runs today. Assume it didn't, well, you didn't, didn't secure the dream, but you know, uh, gave it an honest effort. Fair enough. Onwards. Onwards, my friend. Eight seven to the big blind, two and a half blind raise from Luciano. I think our hand is still too good to fold here, being connected. But for the two and a half X, I'd fold like eight six, for example. I'd fold it's the edge, two thirds bet. We fold, moving on. We're in an okay spot. I'm feeling good about where we're at in this tournament. I feel good about our game in general, actually. And in the 109, we are chilling on 7 million. We really haven't made much progress in that one. Queen nines a fold. <laughs> this hand, I know, dude. I just had to play it because it's so controversial, you know? We just had to play it, dude.
East nine. Worth opening here. Really sucks that we have one of the huge stacks on our left. Igor goes for the raise. I fold. We do want that 531 bounty. We want it. Oh! Wish we would have found the three bet here, man. Luciano calls Igor jams for 66 blinds. Wow. A lot of it's a lot of chips in the middle. Ace nine against Kings. We want Kings to hold so that the bounty stays, right? That's what we want. They do. There wasn't an overlay in the main event. No. It got five point three million. <laughs> Hit the guarantee, my friend. Will they call him much King X preview, though? I think so, Joe. I think at least some, you know, like not pure. Any of those combos, not pure, but I think we'll have some King Queen and King Jack, King 10, King 9 suited. I think. Tough hand, though. Definitely a tough hand. The more words it takes to explain something, the more likely it is to be wrong. Um, I don't think so, man, to be honest. In that sometimes things that are quite nuanced take a lot of words to be correct about. But I will say that uh, it's not easy to understand things that take a lot of learn words to explain, you know? It's not enjoyable or comfortable. But... Uh, there's some things in poker where there's just a lot to think about and consider. There's a lot of different factors. So I disagree with that. Uh, I've been following you for a while. How do you deal, deal with being absolutely beat after a year of real fish, i.e. ace-ace raising before the flop? Three deuce off, I raise, 80 goes all in and wins. Uh, from Gil Martin. Uh, I have just have realistic expectations from poker in that... People are going to do bad things and win pots against me, and that's going to happen every single day. And it's not unexpected, and it's not even unfair, honestly. It's supposed to happen a certain percentage of the time. So when it happens, it's not surprising to me. I don't feel hard done by. It's just one of those unlikely outcomes that I'm going to see hundreds of times a day. Uh, that is part of poker. So I think shifting the perspective from when I do good things, I win, to when I do good things, I tilt the odds in my favor. That's what you do, right? You take the coin and you weight it from 50% or 49% or 48% with rake, and you weight it to 53 or 54 or 55%, right? And that's what you're doing by being a good player. You're not guaranteeing a victory. You're not guaranteeing that when you get it in that you're going to win the hand at showdown. You're giving yourself better odds. That's what you get. That's, that's the result from good play in poker. You get better odds. Congratulations. Doesn't mean you win. You've, you've received more of your slice of the pie in the long run. Ten nine is not enough here. Did you do anything with? 65 left in the tournament. Probably a fold versus two 70 year olds at your local casino, but hard to fold versus two crushers. The thing that's so, again, from my perspective, I hate to be such a contrarian to all of you guys' opinions, but uh, from my perspective, the reason why we can fold there is because their preflop range is so defined. If you're playing against two 70-year-olds at the casino, they can definitely have an ace, right? They could definitely just have, like, an ace that they didn't really want to bet because they were kind of afraid, and then, then they've got it on the river, you know? Yeah, ah, whatever. Whatever, man. It's fine.
do seven of hearts, we will fold. Three fives can be pulled as well. I miss you doubling your 20 million stack you had. 25 million. I haven't done any doubling. Just been playing pots, man. That's all. I haven't done like a full double up or anything like that. Just been slowly picking up chips. Yo, Beardo, Os, glad to see you break your losing streak of the spins. Keep the great content. You'll have a 100K plaque in no time. Let's go. Yeah, man, I got to get some more spins episodes going for sure, and I will do soon. It's a tough start to the spins, but, uh, you know, got it moving in the right direction anyways. We will raise king queen out of the gun. The call from Philip H, Ace Queen Deuce. Even with our King Queen here, I think we want to bet 100% of our range. Uh, it's just a board that is so much better for us than Philip, who has every suited hand and a bunch of stuff like that. We shove with the fours and the one and nine, get called in the small blind and big blind. Somehow, we have the best pair right now. It's not going to hold, though, unfortunately. Um, Ace King wins. That is it for us. We cash for 259 in the 109. So a solid little return, but that tournament is over. And now the 530 main bay. What it's all about. Five is sixty-two. Do you think flipping art is a potential income for you? I don't think my conventional art I'd be able to flip. Well, I mean maybe a little bit, but it wouldn't like no. No. I think you can in NFTs. I don't think you really can in conventional art unless you're working with like really big artists like Damien Hurst and Jackson Pollock and uh, Andy Warhol and Banksy and like big uh, modern slash contemporary artists. I think you can probably do some some flipping for small profits, but any any artists where their pieces are selling for less than 5000 a pop, I don't think it's realistic to... Uh, to be flipping a profit in conventional art. You need to be at least at that threshold to where there's a secondary market for of demand for the work. And NFTs, like I think you can in NFTs and in the digital space for sure, but it's all about understanding the culture and the narrative. And uh, it's just like, I'm a poker player, you know, and streamer, so I've got a lot to do. I've got my own NFT project, which takes some time. I've got a fiance. I've got a couple hobbies that I keep up on for mental health. Like, I've got too much to do to fit it in, you know? 3-6 is dog, but you know it's not dog, man? That bounty. So we're just going to raise bluff. We print it. And fold on 42 million. 
Chip Leader has 58. Luciano is in fourth on 47. 14th place for context has 24 million. There is 60 people left, which means there's going to be a lot of... Yeah, 41st place has 12 million for context, but it's we're actually not that uh, shallow. There's still quite a lot of play here, I think. If you win this, I'll eat chicken and rice with butter until 2022. Bro, that's already what I'm on, man. That's what I'm going to be having for dinner tonight. Um, thanks for your perspective. It's a really good way to look at that. The difference is I play mainly live this year. It's the first year on the internet. I find ranges are crazy pre-flop. Yeah, so it's really different. The first thing you got to know about playing internet versus live. Let's say you're playing two tables. You're getting 65 hands a table. Uh, you're getting 130, per, 30, 130 hands per hour. You're getting five times as many hands as you are live per hour. You're going to see five times as many bad beats. So usually what stands out is the negative outliers. That's what's going to stand out in your head, right? And you're going to have five times as many of those outliers as you do live in the same period of time. So it's going to feel like something's broken and off, but it's just your perception because you're getting so much more exposure to poker, playing online poker, than when you're playing live and it's really slow, right? And your bad beats are spaced out by like three hours. It doesn't work like that on online. You're getting a lot of hands, so you're going to see a lot of adversity relative to, to live. The odd Swede, I guess Sweden isn't updated the client. I'm not sure about that. Uh, I didn't hear about that. Biggest score online is 108K, I think. She watched Cordy B uh, for spins, Jamie. She's great. Yeah, we're teammates. Both party poker team online. So I've definitely seen decent amount of her stream, although I haven't really hunkered down and like strategy watched uh, in a while, so. The rule of less words to explain equals better comes from experience practicing law where it almost always holds true. Not always, but it's a fairly good rule. I understand that, like the elevator pitch, like if you can't simply explain a rule in business, then it's not simple enough, etc. But in poker, the problem is sometimes six or seven variables are going to factor into why a decision is is correct or not correct. So it's it, you're, you're unable to simplify the amount of variables that are important in the calculation. So... In a poker hand, if it's a really obvious thing like aces and someone three bets and you go all in, it's very easy to explain what to do with aces. But when you have a hand like ace-jack offsuit, you're going to be factoring in their stack depth and your stack depth uh, and the stack depth of the other opponents and how that relates to your open uh, and how much money is in the pot and the difference in EV between our options of like, do we want a three bet? Do we want a four bet less than all in? Do we want a jam? Do we want a fold? Right? I, like, so... All of those considerations need to factor in when it's a close spot, which is why it can't be simpler because it's just like um, you don't have to think of a lot of a lot of those things if it's a very clear cut case. But if it's not, you need to go to the nitty gritty details, which is why it's not a good way to operate in poker. Like, oh, just keep it simple. It's like, yeah, great. I mean, the easy hands are going to be really easy, easy. And that's really nice for a beginner. It's really nice for like an intermediate. But. At the high stakes, I don't think that's uh, the way that people operate. I mean, they may explain that they operate that way, but in reality, they're just really good at uh, at balancing and weighing all these all these variables in a way that isn't biased, to where they're they're making well reasoned decisions. I think, if I'm honest, Wadey K dropping 100 bits. Thanks, thank you, Wadey K. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. Eight nine suited. I think I raise here. How about no Luciano? Come on. Uh, rip. Uh, definitely too big of a three bit to call here and our hand is not that good anyways. It's okay. It's not terrible. Uh, 
I think raise call here. Our hand's quite good. We've been messing around with Philip quite a bit, so I think our hand is strong enough to where we can raise and call a, a limp jam if it comes in. Mostly being small pairs, a couple broadways, uh, probably a few bluffs, although I, people don't often limp jam pure bluffs, but... Get a limp call, king, king, 10 on the flop. Um, we bet, very likely we have the best hand. Of course, my braid and probably a lot of your guys' brains goes to like, okay, it's not interesting on the flop, we probably have the best hand, but what happens like when we get to the river or when we face a check raise here and they're saying they have a king, you know, how do we go about approaching that situation? So I think bet on the flop is good and then probably check, check and call river, right? Like, I think that's probably the default here. Uh, we could get, three streets out of very niche hands here, likely, but most of the time we're not going to, and I think it'll be more profitable to check and do some bluffs, see a really good river. Um, the backdoor flush draw missed, all the straight draws missed, we don't block queen jack uh, or queen nine suited or jack nine suited, uh, so a fine thing. And Philip checks on the river. Uh, we have a pretty big problem here, I think, actually, because we have more value to get from our ace-10 against the range. The problem is with betting that we open them up to being able to check-raise us with the king here. Uh, in which case, I, I'm going to have a really hard time bet-folding this river based on how hard we've capped our range. But I think there's more value to get from another 10. So I don't want to bet folds. I want to get a hero call, so I think I'm going to shove. Because if I think the likelihood we get called by a 10 is going to be approximately the same shoving because we look full of crap as it is going to be betting like two thirds. And I really hate betting less than all in because they can just check jam knowing we're capped at a good frequency and kind of own us. We're all in here. Uh, for 20 blinds, effective with the bounty. Uh, let's run it. And we're only risking 30 here. Nice, let's go. <clears throat> you ever gonna bring back the poker vlogs? I really enjoyed those. Maybe one day, not at the moment, for sure, but um, it's always possible. The goat has been sent in from Nicolo. Well, thank you, Nicolo. Um, let's send Nicolo the rose. Would you like to own a Bob Ross if it was in your price range? Um, I like Bob Ross. Not really. It's not really my kind of art, but I like Bob Ross because he is just a nice person. He's a nice guy that made the world a better place. It's not really the kind of stuff I'm into, but I just like his personality. So, I mean, I guess it's a talking piece, but it's not really the kind of art I usually go for. But nothing but love for the guy. Uh, Philip opens, bold. Bold. Thanks, Saldino. Thanks, man. It's a shame we have a big sack on our table. Yeah, Luciano makes things a little tough. Uh, when Jamie writes big as it says 107k second place wasn't in third place 74k we got moved up to second place because someone got disqualified for, for cheating so we got second for 107 Dan we really wish I could play real money poker stars in California well we're playing on party poker my friends so if you ever get party poker in California hop on there dude this is uh, this is party poker but um, yeah you can't play on party poker in California anyways Raise up Queen Jack. Daniel has a lot of chips, 34 million. I wasn't actually watching what happened there. 
Tens against kings. Wow. Daniel, really doing it. 58 left. We're in fourth. Igor Prokop, by the way, is a senior. Take it down. Take it down. Let's go. 45.7 million. We're cruising, dude. Honestly, this is going smooth. Violin has been sent. Nicolo, listen. Chill out, Nicolo. Why are you sending me the, uh, the violin, Nicolo? Run it, Nicolo. 7-5 deuce. Pretty reasonable board here. I still think we mostly want to bet, though. They just call preflop, so they don't have pairs in their range. Right? They just reshove all their pairs. They can have 7-6, they can have 7-8, right? They can have these hands that are pretty reasonable, but they don't have 8s through aces. Occasionally, you should slow play, like, the big pairs, but people generally don't, right? Not very often, so. Big range advantage, although they're going to hit the board more than we are. Long tank of the shove. Like I said, I think there's going to be a little bit too much 7x, 5x type stuff here. Getting somewhat of a price, but I don't think it's worth it. We do beat 8-6. We beat 6-4. We beat 4-3 suited, which also may play like this too, but I don't think we can call off there. Nicolo is sending the... Uh, the um the violin let's let's send send the theft the theft is in Hello, Jamie, you rule. Thank you. Sold Zerg GTO. Sold Zerg Toe. I'll wait for you in the 530. All right, man. We're going to win this thing, dude. We're going to print it. Let's go. Raise three bet from Igor. Three of 57. Got to update the title, man. Getting down to it, man. 57 left. This is real. Got to stay patient. Steven Simpson goes for the raise. Nicolo calls. I think call streets. Noxious, what's up, man? Cheers, dude. Uh, thanks for stopping in every once in a while, man. Appreciate it. Good to see you as well, Noxious. Patience, man. What do we have, 100 blinds now? Still 108. Still 108. Chip Leader has 64 million. Mark Lange. We're on 44. Hi from France. Uh, bonsoir. Bienvenue.
for the Jack Six. Hey, Poker Stables, do you like hot food? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think I like it better than than uh, cold food, if I'm honest with you. Nicolo's all in. Queens against Ace-10. Igor Prokop is behind. Needs an ace. Looks like Nicolo's going to double up here, unless it's an ace on the river, which it's not. Nicolo's got the chips. Igor with his 835 bounty is more gettable now, though. On 13 million. 33 blinds. Gettable. Look at these two huge stacks on my left, dude. Both 33 million. They are sixth and seventh in the tournament. Fifth, sixth, seventh. I always wonder if people can hack and see cards. No, dude, no, no, no. No one can hack and see cards, man. Uh, examples of like ways that people could break terms of service is they could be on, playing on an account that isn't theirs. They could be playing in a place that isn't allowed to play, right? They could be like using a VPN and playing in a country where you're not allowed to play. They could be using some sort of like uh, training software that they're not allowed to use while they play. Like that's the sort of stuff. It's not like someone, no one can hack the software and see the hands that people have. It's not that kind of thing uh, that would lead to people being disqualified. It's not a thing. If that was the thing, none of us would play this game, right? Like no one would be playing $500 tournaments if, if it was possible for people to do that. It's not the case. It's um, other things that break the terms of service. Open the twos, get a call from Luciano. I think we want to bet here. I think if we check back, we're going to lose this spot. Ah, but bro, this does hit them a little bit in the small one. Uh, I'm going to go for a 1.6 milli bet here. And I give up. I lose the pot. A lot of hands we can bluff with here. Like we have a we have a range that has some ace highs, that has some king highs, that has some jack x, that has some diamonds. Like has all sorts of stuff that can bluff. Uh, it's just gonna be a give up. That's the nuts for Luciano. We move on. Marcel Kessler, moving in on our right, is currently second place in the tournament. 55 left. I still feel like our table is pretty deep, but here we are. Guess everyone got moved up a spot. They did. Yep, everyone did. Five of 55, 950 in the prize pool, 3,062 in bounties. Let's call it 4,000 with more that is gettable. Ten, no good. This does end today. Yeah, we'll play down to a winner tonight. We will play down to a winner tonight, my friend. Nicolo limps. Action on Igor. On 14 million to start the hand. Definitely the most interesting bounty right now, I'd say. This 835 on uh, 27 blinds, right? Uh, Bernardo as well, sitting 12 blinds deep with a 343 bounty, but a couple we're keeping our eye on. This whole section of the table is quite fun. This whole section is not.
I think you mean spicy food, not hot, cold. Uh, spicy food. Uh, not particularly, dude. Open up the sevens. Now, it gets pretty awkward here. It's a few of these players. If it's a call, it's not very awkward. Action on Marcel. Streets, 10 5 6. Uh, we bet here about half the time in this spot. I don't think sevens is a hand that we want to include in that frequency. Think we want to check. In that our hand kind of wants to keep the pot small here, but we do have a lot of good things that can develop, right? We have second pair, which might be the best hand. Uh, we have three to a straight as well, which is pretty nice. We see a beautiful turn, perfect turn, right? Like not an over card. Not likely to complete too many two pairs, except for Marcel, a few, but not many. So after it goes check, 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 I think we have a small bet here on the turn. And like, yeah, we're charging ourselves against eights and nines, which Nicolo can have. Although some percentage of the time, they're just going to shove that pre and or three betted pre. I still think there's value to be had. Action back on Marcel. Would not be surprised to see continue here. Our bet is small. Marcel often has a one pair hand uh, in this spot. Uh, I think I call here. First impression. I don't think they're that likely to have 3-4 uh, maybe suited. And yeah, they can have some two pairs, but then also our hand range looks really weak here. So I call and continue to the river. Good river. Makes it less likely that they have those two pairs we were just talking about, right? We counter hit five deuce, but they wouldn't play five deuce that way anyways. Nice. Let's go, dude. Let's go. 51 million chat. Let's go. Are we chip leaders? We're second. We're second. Uh, it's pretty interesting decision from Marcel, from my point of view, with that hand, because I think their hand probably on the turn plays better as a call. At least that would have been the way I played it, my first perception. Like, as a raise... They're kind of turning fours into a bluff in that they're trying to get us to fold this. An a6 suited, an a5 suited, and things like that. Bernardo is all in. I think we are calling here. Closing the action with a 343 bounty. They have 11 blinds. I think we have a call. But if Marcel calls, then we're out of the way. Okay. Okay. Looks like the bounty is gone unless it's a four or a six, which it's not. How's the weather in Montreal? It's cold today, man. It's minus 10, I think, at the moment. Yeah, it's minus 10 right now. But fine, it hasn't been too bad. Average stack is 21 million with 53 left. So when there's 26 left, the average stack will be 42 million. And when there's 13 left, the average stack will be 84 million. So I would guess the average stack of the final table will be, what, 110 million or so? Something like that. Full queen four. Thank you, 3BetD. Thanks, Finn. What do you find the biggest difference between higher, lower buy-in tournaments? I think at the small stakes, uh, people are a lot more passive. So they play, um, often play more hands and they play them really weakly to where it's quite easy to win the pot and it's really apparent what sort of hands they have post-flop. 
Um, but then sometimes people are just nits to where they, they don't play more hands, they play less hands, they play them quite weakly. And then at the high stakes, people are really well sort of balanced and protected. Protected, You know, it's difficult to get an in to attack opponents because they have good hands and bad hands in spots where you can't just go out of control, you know? Uh, you need to sort of show moderation. Um, you know, you just don't know. Like on the turn, you know, you call on the flop with a second pair, right? And then on the turn, they keep betting. At the high stakes, you don't, you can't just auto fold. They can still be bluffing you. In small stakes, you can just auto fold. You just know, like, they've got it, right? You just don't hear a call there. So that sort of stuff, I'd say. Would you call in every hand until you either lose or get to 75 million chips in the 30K? If not, what would it cost you? Just a random, dumb, hypothetical question. If I had to go all in until I got to 70K or bust, uh, I don't know how much that would be in money, like how much it would cost me in equity. The thing is, the equity of our stack right now is probably like nine or 10,000, and we've cashed for 4,000. So, so there's like a 6K difference there, right? It probably cost me like $4,500 to do that ish. Montreal represents, indeed. the 9-3. You just look so capped, I guess. That's why he's done it. Yeah. Well, I am capped. I mean, I still do check some big hands there uh, in that three-way pot, but like definitely my range weights towards weak with relatively few of those big hands. Um, it looks like, chat, we're going to be playing a tournament uh, that I wasn't planning on playing, but it definitely looks like it's going to overlay. $2,100 second chance turbo, 200K guaranteed. It's 200K guaranteed. It's only collected 108K with 32 minutes left. So I think the likelihood of some overlay in this tournament is high. And like, yeah, it's going to be a tough tournament, but with the high likelihood of overlay, I think we should play it. So uh, let's get it, man. I mean, I guess we'll do it on table three. Raise and a call. I think call is my first impression, right? Like I wouldn't mind getting it in against this opponent, although it wouldn't be my first choice, but I really don't want to squeeze and go post flop against Marcel being this deep. So I think we just call, we go to a flop of 10, 9, 6, which is a bit of an awkward flop for us, right? In that we are out of position here, but we have a gut shot 
and third pair in a three-way pot. It's just an uncomfortable situation to be in. <laughs> you know, this is a, a bit weird. Jack of the turn, I think makes it easier, right? If it comes eight, there's a four-liner to a straight. And uh, there's another overcard that could cost us. So I think it's fine to just uh, check. All right, we do have a straight, which is good. I think we, uh, I think we block bet here, right? One and a half million. If we get raised, they're almost certain to have a queen. But I think block betting is probably going to be the way out of this most profitably. Let's go. Let's go, chat. 54 million. Getting a little value bet in there against probably two pair or something. Ace nine. Ace nine finding the hero, but we get it done. Let's go, man. All right. Uh, King five. Juice bounty, bro. Juice bounty. Our hand sucks, though. Hand sucks. I'm gonna fold. Cool. We like this hand. We raise. It's pretty awkward actually against uh, all these reshove stacks, right? 15, 27, and 20 blinds. I think we definitely fold to these two. Uh, against the 15 blind stack, it would be uh, not very fun. Spot likely a fold. I think we're pretty deep in the tournament here to where that 460 bounty isn't worth enough to get it in fairly far behind. But and here it is. Here is the the aforementioned spot. Um. Yeah, like four bounties, nine starting stacks. Uh, I think it's fold. This is sick that we're they we're even in this tournament, but it's just the bankroll could afford it, especially when there's big overlay. It's just a good shot, even though it's not a huge field like five million guarantee. It's just a it's gonna good value tournament. I'm definitely good enough to make money in this tournament with this much overlay. You know, that's the thing. So as long as the bankroll can stand the variance, it's a fire. All right, here it is. Raise, jam, call. We want Igor to win, Nicolo to get second, so the bounty stay. That's what we want. If we're honest, chat, if we're honest with them, that's what we want here. Well, three, four, six is jacks. Jacks win, and then sixes, then three, four. That's exactly what we got. Perfect. All the bounties stay. Wow. Okay. 
Okay. Fifty two milli in the big blind. Uh bro, this sucks, man. I don't think we can call here. Six starting stack, four bounties. <sighs> yeah, I don't think we can call. Uh it's just not there's not enough incentive. And is a little bit too bad. We definitely call wider, but not that wide. Doesn't even know what turn he paid 2k to buy into. I thought it was just a turbo. It's a turbo knockout though, because the knockout isn't in the name, right? Just says second chance turbo, but then, yeah. All right, five minute break. I'm going to grab a drink. You're watching Poker Simples on Twitch. Hello, chat. We're back in action on three tables. The five 30 millions were four of 43. Hey, Savage coming in. It's your boy, Alch. What's up, Alch? Hello, good sir. I'm waving to you from my window. What's up, man? <laughs> Uh, thanks for the 49 month reset, Alch. Appreciate you, dude. Welcome back to the team. Hearts out and chat, you guys, for Alch. Alch, you staying, you staying healthy, bro? You got COVID or no? Well, the Queen 7. I walked by your place last night in the freezing cold, dude. I'm walking late at night, so there's no one outside. Uh, thanks, man, for the 49 months. Are there parts of Canada where people speak faster, like New York City and USA? The clip is you speed talking. It's on one and a half X. Yeah, there's, you know, there's variation in language in Canada for sure. I don't know where it would be. I mean, probably. Uh, mm, I don't know. I was going to say in Quebec, actually. But French probably just sounds faster because I don't understand it compared to English. It's probably the same speed. But I bet there's a correlation to like big cities speak faster than small towns probably right i would think marcel opens luciano is going to three bit to 4.2 million But I still think it's going to overlay 20K or something, you know? Marcel limps. We're going to raise. Now, Marcel's been playing quite a few hands. We're going to raise it up. And against Marcel, against preflop aggression, I really don't see ourselves getting away from this hand. Mm. I think check is better, actually. In this instance, specifically. Small bet we call. Beautiful. We have to hope for no two pair. If they go for a really big bet, we'll just call, right? They bet six million, we call. Uh, if they check, we just bet. Let's go. Big pot coming our way. That takes us to 54 million. Puts us kind of tied for third. 
Tied for third, 38 left. Great stack, man. Where's the prediction? At the top of the chat. Top of the chat box is where you can see the prediction if you're on desktop. I don't know on mobile. How it works. Yo, what up? Get at me, bro. We cashed the 5k for a min cash. Lost an all-in with ace-king to kings to tens to something else. I forget. Uh, we lost a four-way all-in. We shoved under the gun for 10 blinds. Got called three ways. We lost. Uh, but in this 530, we're now four of 38. First place should be about 70,000. We cashed the 109 for 260. And now we've registered a 2100 and a 320 knockout turbo on the side. Our spawner. I mean, hedge your bets. I get it. I get it, man. Hedge your bets. I understand. 5-3 is going to be a folds. Fold 10-6 as well. Pretty good forward for Luciano. I'm mostly going to bet here, but I will check this time with this hand. You just got to do the exclamation mark. It's pretty, pretty good ATX chaser, just like this. Checks around, do we want to bet the turn? Uh, what bluffs do we have here? We have some. Luciano can have some queens, but I don't mind going for a little stab in this spot. And it works. Just like that, it works. Was around to Nicolo. It's a little bit closer now with our King Jack suited. Our hands better and they're shorter. Last time they reshoved, they had 18 blinds. Now they have 15. Uh, E6 deuce. Pretty good board for our range. Uh, Nicolo probably has a few aces that call preflop, like junky aces that just call here. So that's a thing, but. Uh, we'll bet and take it just shy of 60 million. Really happy with this spot, man. It's going well. Luciano down to 30 million with a 1400 bounty. Oh, we got kings. Okay. All right, dude. Marcel, get involved. Get involved, Marcel. Oh, I love it. 4.4 uh, 4 million? 4.4. 4. Oh, come on, Marcel. Don't fold like that, Marcel, please. I got kings, man. <sighs> Dude. Raise. As we combine to the final four tables here, chat. The final four tables. Patrick H. And uh, this Russian name I don't know how to say. Moving in. Five, six, nine, all clubs. We go for a small bet here. 1.2 million is good. <laughs> we 
We bet again around half pot on a monochrome board like this. This represents a big bet. Uh, I think there's value to be had with our queen. Bad river. Let's go! Oh, we beat the 6-8 with the 8 of clubs. We lose on the river a lot, but we get it done. 69 million. Down to 30 in the tournament. Average stack right now is 37 million. So average stack at 15 left should be like, what, uh, 74 million? I do have a Discord channel, yeah, I do. Uh, there's a link below the stream to Discord, but yeah, I got one. Well, 10-6 is pretty bad, pretty bad hand. And we're down to 29, just like that. Eduardo's got 70 million. Chip stacks are starting to shape up. Look at that bounty too, man. Eduardo's earned 4,700 in bounties. Whoosh, heesh. It's a chunk. Gek Scoutinho. Cheers, man. Glad I get the big screen uh, treatment. Thank you. <laughs> Four eights a fool. Kind of sucks. It's a fold here with the jack eights. The hand is just not good enough. And Yen Strazasar is going to three bets and get one done there. Was your holiday, Jay? I haven't taken one actually. I'm here solo at the moment in Montreal, and so I haven't had any festive uh, experiences thus far this Christmas, but. I'm just going to postpone my Christmas a little bit till later on in the year. We're just going to call from AN in the big line. King Jack 7. Mm. I'm tr I was trying to decide if I should have any big bigger bets here. If I did, this seems like a really good candidate. Uh, I just go for the small bets. Hit check raise to 4.8, okay. Uh, I think the plan is to call. We're not shallow enough to where I want to fast play my hand. We're gonna run into too many better hands by doing that. So I think we just call, allow them to continue with some bluffs and or we can continue this hand. Jack on the turn is actually a pretty good card. I don't think they're gonna check raise a, a naked Jack, right? Uh, I think it'd have to be a two pair. And so what this Jack does, it makes it less likely that they had Jack seven or King Jack, right? Which is a good thing. Uh, so it's a little bit more likely our, our king is winning. They bet 9 million, and this is a sizing that doesn't make any sense. Uh, I think if they have improved to a full house, they're not going to bet this big. I really don't think they have a full house. Uh, I think I need to go all in here. I think their most likely hand is a heart draw. Uh, super hard to bet the size and have a full house. You're just going to want to bet like 5 million, 6 million with this much money back. We're all in. Unlucky. Aces make some sense, right? It's like a hand that's kind of afraid and vulnerable. Uh, if flat's pre, fair enough. I think our thinking is correct, though. Like, it's unfortunate when they flat pre here. But this sizing on the turn, I mean, to be fair, we're not always folding when they don't bet the sizing, right? Like, if they bet 5 million, we're not folding the turn. But it's like a dead giveaway of, like, this is not... A full house. This is not, if it's a full house, it's sevens full, but it's it's not king's full, it's not king jack, it's not jack seven. It just never can be at the sizing. It it just won't. So aces make sense, sevens some weird ways make sense, but like we feel so good on this turn. 
so likely to be a hard draw. And we see the a hand that makes some sense, the slow play aces that are not a full house but are kind of vulnerable and want to pass play. It's bad news, but I don't think there's any way from our perspective out of that hand given what we knew. I think it's a, a very reasonable read and we just we just lose the pot. So anyways, 42 million, tough pot. We're gonna be middle of the pack now, 14 to 29, but we can survive, we can continue. The 2100, we're gonna fold the ace twos. 2K is a one day tournament and the 530 is a one day tournament, both finished today. We'll fold. Andy is Yoda. Thanks, man. I'm going to try. I'm going to try and win them both. Nines against Ace King. Luciano continues to print full time. Oh, wait. Daniel actually covered. Ah. 18 million. Luciano raises. I'm not going to flat here. You could flat here, but Daniel has not been super aggressive. We have aces on both tables. Uh, Daniel hasn't been super aggressive, so I think we don't want to rely on a slow play here. I think we just want a three-bit pure with the aces to like just a tick over six million here. Just a tick over eight million here. Eight point four seems good to me. Uh, we got some time in the time bank here. Unfortunately, no action. Just take it out. Both fold, 46 million, okay. And fold the jack six. Both tournaments will end today, yep. Fold the king deuce. When's B car coming back? I think uh, mid to late January, I think, yep. Okay, take one down with the king five as we get a walk. Pretty rare, I'd say. We have sub-20 blinds with a bounty. King nine is not the one. Oh my goodness, Eduardo has 113 million. What just happened? King Jack Luciano against Eduardo's flush. Oh my goodness, dude. Eduardo is a chip leader in the tournaments. Luciano's out. We're down to 27. That was crazy, dude. Average stack, 42 million. We're just above average. Uh, next page up at 23. Wow. 8.4, why so much? Uh, out of position against Ray's Nicole. That's why. So your three bet in position would be two and a half to three blinds. You're in position out of position would be three and a half to four blinds. Uh, every caller you add a blind. That's why. Never change chat. <laughs> never, never change. We have we have Twitch chat masterclass happening at the moment. It's uh, glorious. <laughs> Mm, 
not worth it here with the Jack A. Big chip leader behind. Covers us, can three bet us pretty aggressively. Uh, we can't raise call the small blind. I think we just fold, fold the eight seven as well. Twenty-two million here. Daniel on sixteen million. Definitely on notice for this bounty, right? Eleven t or eleven sixty bounty on sixteen blinds. Yen on ninety. We are middle of the pack now. We are just we're right at average, uh, but I guess there's probably a lot of short stacks, right? Twenty-first has twenty million, so there's six people at twenty blinds or under. Yeah, six people at twenty blinds or under. Not super short. I mean, there's still definitely some play. Induce three sucks. And we're still at starting stack in the 2K as well. 23 left, 14 pay. So we're, you know, we're nine off the money, but we, <laughs> we have starting stack. We're not, it's not like we're in the bubble. It's a small field. We need to do some work to get there. Daniel Plum's all in. Here we go. Pocket threes. Uh, we have 43 blinds here, though, so it's not a spot where we're going to be all in pre-flop, but we're definitely excited to play, and wow. <clears throat> so 25 left. Let me open the other uh, four tables. Virtually all the big stacks are our table. <laughs> uh, second and third are on our table. Hey, Great Bluff is still in here. Let's go, Great Bluff. Good luck. One of the tables has like almost all the short stacks. It's got our city on 127K or 127 million. And then everyone else is short. Oh man, how nice. How nice for our city. Great Bluff is still in, though. Good stuff. Good luck, Great Bluff. I hope you get second. Raise from Greg King, three bet from Kelvin Kerber on this table. Got a pot going on as we're one away from the final three tables. So we can sweat most of the big pots now. Still in the tournament. Igor wins one on our table. Next hand. Jadom in the building. What's up, Jadom?
Jack seven, it's not a great ha <clears throat> hand, but we do get a raise from Igor from late position. Yen calls. Uh, I'm happy to fold now in the multi-way pot. I was going to call heads up, but I think it's a fold now. Igor wins, 8 million. Moving on, 10 9. We've got an all in on this table, blind. So, should be some action here. Alexander's all in. Probably going to get us down to 24. He folds, and we're going on a five-minute break after this hand, actually. Raise three bet. Let's see who wins this one. 734 bounty in play. Yen takes it down on our table. Are we down to 24? Let's find out before we take a quick five minutes. bit of 8.8. It's a big bet. 8.8 .8 into 11 millions. Big bet. Alex says basically putting it on the line here. Our city's all in. Wow. Side pot. Oh, two pair on the river. There it is. Yeah. Alexander's out. Our Cindy's get 145 million chip leader. And we're going to be down to the final three tables. Uh, Poker Chip was on Twitch. Back at five. 320 knockout. Me. Welcome back to the stream. Down to the final 24. Let's go. Uh, Queen nine is a. Ugh. like an open but it's we want to open a little bit tighter because we're covered for bounties right so there's a little bit less incentive to open weaker hands we fold if we play a little bit tighter being covered for bounties uh and queen nine is one of those hands that could be cut right we'd open queen eight offsuit normally as well we could consider but i was going to open yen takes the option from us eduardo three bets he's all in daniel s friend of the stream against mark lange Mark Lange takes it. Daniel is out of the tournaments. GG, Daniel. GG, man. And I think we should combine tables soon. I don't know if it's going to be us or someone else. I'm not sure. And wow. Four bet call, right? Raise three bet, four bet call. Is that what happens? I think so. Queen, five, four. This has chip lead potential, this pot. You know? Uh, aces against queens, queens against aces, aces against kings, ace king of hearts against something, you know? Chip lead potential here, 71 million in the middle. What's the folder trees I saw there? No, those are poker trees, man. Those are poker trees. All right, we are down to the final three tables now. Uh, Mark Lange moves into our table. And I think that's it. Yan is now on 151. 
definitely not a great table for us. Like we would have loved to go to this table where we cover almost everyone on the table, except for our Cine, we would cover everyone else. So this table is the dream. Our table sucks. This table is better. We do have the worst table in the tournament for sure. We're 11 to 23, but it feels like we're a short stack, right? Like if it feels like we're short, we're not. We're in the middle of the pack. Uh, so unlucky, but hey, we just stay patient. There's nothing we can do about that. King jacking and ace three. We're down to 22 left now. We do have, uh, what, 1794 plus 3,000 in bounties. Let's go. Seven ten, not worth it. Average stack is fifty one million. We are unbelievably in tenth place. Although it looks like we're in last based on what we see here at the table, we are in tenth place. There is a lot of short stacks in the field right now, a lot. But we're in the mix, dude. We could win this tournament, and it's a chunk of change up top. We are, we are, we've put ourselves in a position where we can have a really huge score here, right? Seventy k. And it could all fizzle, and we could cash for 5k, and it would be kind of sad. What? Yeah, yeah, just just less than 5k. But we've put ourselves with a decent shot here against some great players. So let's see how we get on. Raise three bet on this table. Arsini calls, 356 against Vlad, friend of the stream. Get it, Vlad. On our table, we have a bet raise. Flop bet on Jack-5 deuce, check raise from Yen. Beautiful hand here, King Jack suited. Um, just trying to think through all my options against Yen here. I think we could do a lot of things, right? I think we could shove profitably. We could call profitably. We could three bet call, although I don't like that one so much. So the option is, do we want to shove or call? Um, and I don't know actually which I prefer. I'll probably just default to a call here. We are in position with a hand that plays really well post-flop. Can flop the nuts with a redraw. I mean, we've got a lot of good things. <laughs> got a, a lot of good things here. 8, 9, 10. I think I'm going to check back, actually. I'm going to be pretty deceptive against Yen, who is playing pretty aggressively. You do check back flushes with some frequency, and I'm going to do it here because I think we're likely to induce some bluffs from Yen, who will probably incorrectly attribute us not being able to have a flush here. Uh, bet of 2.3 million, I think at, at this point, once we've played the hand the, this way, we're forced to just call here, do any raising we do later on in the hand. Rivers of five of hearts, it's just a call of a big bet. Against a small bet, probably just calls well with the, with the, the board paired, but they check and we do have a value bet here. And you gotta think from Yan's perspective, like we check back on the flop, we don't have that many aces pre. This has got to look a little suspicious to them. I'm hoping I can get a hero call for here from something. Queen of hearts for sure. I sure hope calls. Uh, but even like a small heart or a 10. 10's kind of unlikely, it's possible.
They're thinking. Let's go. Uh, we got the hero call chat. 54 million. Uh, it wasn't a hero call. Seven hearts. It's got a call here. It has to. It's got a call here. Uh, but we get the pot, which is nice. King three, we raise. Take it down. And we're moving in the right direction again, chat. Somehow we've lost a spot, or I thought we did, as we've chipped up so much. But no, we're back in seventh place now of 22 remaining. It looks like we're in a bad spot, but really, almost <laughs> one, two, three, four of the six bigger stacks are on our table. So it's just a tough table. There's really good stacks on other tables with bounties available everywhere. I mean, look at this table, man. This table, like, it looks great, but we are where we are. Maybe we'll rebalance. You never know. Until then, we just keep trying to chip up. We died in the 2100, man. Yep. So we played two 1Ks and a 2100 today. We busted all three of those. And we played a 320. We busted that. Cash a 5K for 10K. Uh, and then this 530 we've cashed for... 5k as of right now it's been okay we put ourselves like i said you know how this ends up if we can get one or two hands to grow away it could be a huge huge score it could be our second biggest score ever if a couple hands go the other way we're out and what could have been you know it's what it comes down to Here's an all-in on the other table. Ace-King against Ace-8. That's a flush. Steven Simpson in the 515 bounty is gone. Pavel up to 37 million. And a big uh, side bounty as well. Raise call squeeze to 9.6 million. From Eduardo on the flop. Yen calls. I mean, this, this could be the pot of the tournament right here, right? There's already 30 million in the middle. I mean, let's see what's going on. Pop reminds me of busting the 5k last year. Yeah, 20th place, man, right? Bet of 15 million here from Eduardo. 45 million in the middle, a half pot bet, which it's like pretty big. Given the stage of the tournament here and that there's ICM starting to take effect or more heavily take effect, like it puts significant pressure on. 15 million bet. You can usually get a bluff done for cheaper than that. Um, so, yeah. Anyways. Eduardo takes it. 84. We're still on 56 here. Yeah, it wasn't a wasn't a straight flush. It was just a, a flush, not the straight flush for Yen. Uh, I think we have an open here. It's a decent hand. We want to play relatively tight again because of the stack situations on our table. But I feel like we can open this hand. 
It is actually kind of, it's a bit of a frisky open, but it's fine. We win the pot, it's fine, we'll do so. Kevin against Greg King all in. Uh, Kelvin Kerber gets the double up, Greg King on 27 million, move on. In seventh place chat, there's a big jump. Sixth place has 59 million, we're tied for sixth. And then it goes up to 82, from 59 to 82. Then to 91, then to 115, 133, 134. So there's a bunch of us sort of bunched together between 60 million and, and 30 million is seven people. And then it really jumps up quite a bit. We are the middle of the pack. Tourney ends today. We will have a winner today. Jack 10 3. Better 1.2. We call. Check, check. I'm not actually so worried about that queen. I don't think all queens want to check, want to bet on the flop. Like, these, at least for me, are going to be often hands that you want to check call with, with the overcard. Blind versus blind, range is super wide. Uh, check down with 10-7 is fine. We be fours. But I don't actually think that card hurts us as much as it may first appear with how, I mean, we're blind versus blind, you know? We both have so many possible hands, so. No, this won't be my biggest score. My biggest score is 108K. First place in this will be 70K, unless somehow I win all the bounties until the end of the tournament or something, but uh, no, I won't. Won't make the cut, unfortunately. The second biggest though, the bounties you can see here, uh, 3,062 in bounties, it's not on the uh, table. Although it should be, it should be here, right? Clearly, I think. Like it should be here instead of places paid, it should be bounties earned, because we. It, this doesn't matter anymore. That 172 were paid and we're six to 20, you know. So I'm I'm in favor of this changing depending on what time of the tournament it is, but that's okay. One day, Jackton suited Igor Prokop goes for the raise. Yan calls. Uh, first impression is a squeeze here. I like squeezing. I think we'll make this standard is about 12 million in position here. 11.9 perhaps, so let's do that. The only thing that's a little scary is if Colin comes over the top, we probably can't fold, but I still think it's a good spot to squeeze with our hand. Nice, let's go. Let's go, big squeeze, big win it, 70 million. We're back after our loss of the king queen to uh, aces. We're back to where we were. 3-7 in sixth place. And we add about a 10 million chip difference between us and, and fifth, or us and seventh. Greg is all in for so many chips here. Wow, 42 blind shove from Greg. That's a lot. Nice.
King Queen suited is nice. First impression is to four bet here. I think we pretty rarely want to call at this stage of the tournament and go post flop. I also think that it's hard to four bet enough in this spot. So I think I'm going to make it like 19-6 and then fold to a jam, you know? Like our intention is not to get it in pre. I just think this will have a lot of fold equity in that Mark Lange can three bet extremely wide uh, from my view. So like 18-9 perhaps. And we get a call. Uh, jack 5-6 on the flop. Mostly start with a check here. We do check a decent amount of over pairs in this spot as well. Looks quite strong when we do check. I would expect to check check a reasonable amount of the time. Uh, but if we face a bet, we've completely missed the flop here. And our four bet pre-flop hasn't worked. If it goes check check, it opens up the door for a potential bluff on the turn. But I do think we have some strong hands that check here as well. It's not just like, oh, we always give up. So they've got to be a bit wary of that. And like Mark, you know, if Mark decided to three bet like eights, nines, tens, like they don't want to bet here, you know. Uh, goes check, check. I do think we have a stab hand uh, in this spot. I think something like, it doesn't have to be too big to get it done, right? Like 14 million or so. We're not trying to get the ace of diamonds or the king of diamonds to fold or a pair to fold here, except for like maybe a small pair but they shouldn't have that many. We have 14 million. Uh, something we do have to be wary of is Mark can have some nut flushes in the range here. That's important to know. They can have like the ace king, ace queen of diamonds, ace 10 of diamonds, ace nine of diamonds or whatever the non pair was and check back flop. So they do have flushes in the range. We've got to know that. Um, but thankfully, just take it down and let's go, chat. Big, important pot, 90 million. Goes around to Igor. Yo, thank you, Real Jones. A lot of brother mans in the chat. Thank you, brother mans. Appreciate that. Uh, Igor calls in the big blind here, I think. Yeah, because this was a rebalance. 3 4 6. Uh, so it's a, it's a bet in normal circumstances. We do check a little bit more and do some more delayed C betting. I'm going to go for a check this time. Turns the 10 of spades, snap bet, no thought, snap. But I think it's a clear call with ace 10. We just want a no spade river here. Quite a difficult spot for us. We don't have very many fives in our range at all. They definitely bluff some fives. They also bluff some spades. Oh, the dream. Let's go! Let's go, chat! Holy smokes, I was expecting the bluff. I mean, come on. I'm expecting the bluff. 101 million! Let's go, baby. Fourth place. Oh, I'm expecting the bluff there, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Oh, sheesh. Some tough pots, man. Really tough pot. I mean, the four bet, intense. And that pot, intense as well. I, guess the, I mean, it wasn't a huge pot. It wasn't make or break, but it's just... Stakes are high, man. Playing for 70K.
Diego against David in the pot on the other table. 18 left, almost the final two tables. Thanks, Bobby Winger. Thanks, bro. Yen takes down a pot there. Moving on. 142. No one suffered at this table either. Fold ing the jack. Seven. the juice three, which is a sucky end. It's just not very good. Mark against Igor. <laughs> I see you guys getting nervous out there. There's, there's a lot of speculation in the chat, and listen, I'm just gonna let it be. I appreciate all of you being here. Uh. It's the nature of the beast, I guess. Queen seven suited, pretty reasonable hint. We're gonna raise it up. And a decent spot in that now we don't have that same payout pressure that we used to have, uh, right? We're, we're tied with Mark on chip stack. Colin is on a relative short stack and Eduardo we have covered slightly. So our table is still super deep in relation to the other tables, but we don't have to feel the same payout pressure of like, ah, uh, they can just three bet us and own us, you know? Mark calls in the small blinds. Don't think we can do anything about that. Final 18 chat, four of 18. Boom, the back raise. Wow, this is a chip lead pot for 168 million. Mark Lange gets it done. Eduardo is out. G, G, bruh. Wow. Incredible scenes. Mark is our chip leader on 189 million. And once again, our table sucks, bro. First place, third place. Uh, fifth place, and there's 17 left. Three tables. It's not ideal. But 
it'll combine soon, right? We get down to 16, and then it'll be the final two tables. That is a huge, huge pot. Thank you, Calixo. Thanks, man. So what art are we getting? It depends on how big the score is, man. If we win for 70K, we might get a pretty sick piece. We might. King nines a fold. Mark with 200 million here. I mean, this is just licensed to print with uh, 20, with 17 left, sorry. Just licensed to print. Great Bluff. Come on, Great Bluff. Win it, Great Bluff. Win this pot. 1,085 bounty on her head. Come on, a six. Hold. Six. Six. Oh, there it is. The fiery six on the river. Great Bluff gets it done. Nice hand, Great Bluff. Five K for start. It did. We lost. GG. GG. He's deuce. He's deuce. We lost. Oh. Aces chat. Aces. The best hand in poker chat. Igor, go for the shove here. Igor, find the shove. Uh, pretty big, right? There is definitely a punishment for playing out of position uh, this deep. So I think we want to go a full 4x over this open, and we'll make it 14.4 million. Sounds good to me, right? This time's four. A little bit less, but close enough. Pretty low on time here. So Mark could theoretically have ace four suited in the range of which there's, what, two combos? No, one combo. So really hard for Mark to have a four. The thing I was thinking about there, but I was kind of out of time, is do I want to start by checking my aces in that the hand we really want to get some value from here uh, is going to be ace highs, which we block, right? So if we check, we allow their king queens and king jacks and king tens and queen jacks and stuff like that, all those suited hands to bluff. And since we have aces, we block the ace highs that are going to check back that we don't really want to check back. So I was thinking about that, but I was almost out of time and I wasn't sure. So I just went for the default standard C bet. But that's something worth thinking about, I think, in that spot, you know? And I'm not sure if I should go for a check call with my aces or just bet like I did, but. Uh... Nonetheless. Take it down with the jack four. Good stuff. G7 is trashed here. It's bad. So we're going to fold. Still on 17. There's a three-way pot going on here in on this table. Great Bluffs table. A couple friends of the stream in our city. Who was the chief leader once upon a time? Dresher 214. Drop the 21 free sub, gets a lot of the chat. Thanks for pressure. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Yan wins a pot against Mark. 
we fold 5, 4. Look at that bounty too, man. 5,000. That's that's nine thousand seven hundred fifty dollars earned in bounties. That's so sick. You've already earned ten k in bounties. Isn't that nasty, dude? That's so that's so much. Already earned ten k in bounties. Wow. I wish we were so lucky. We've earned three k. Definitely not the biggest bounty in this tournament. Great bluff going for a bet on the river. Here is the pot on this table, 127 million. Yeah. Uh, Seckle Beckle dropping 12 months, the one year. One year perfect time to win this thing. Let's go. Let's go, my friend. Thank you so much for the one year resub. Welcome back to the team. Hearts out in chat. Hearts out. Our bounty is 3,062. 3,062, poop 34. Arsini takes one down there, unfortunately for us. King four, not it. Still one away from combining tables, and our table is the worst table. 17 million, 15 million, 24 million, 17 million, 5 million, uh, 15 million. You know, tons of short stacks. We don't have any chance to get those bounties. 8 7 is going to uh, double up. I mean, yeah, our table just sucks in relation to the other tables, but. I'm not sure my heart can take much more. Hang in there, great bluff, please. Please. Great end. Ace 10 suited. Against Igor, if we see a min race here, I think I will jam. Uh, against Yen, we just call in position. Igor folds. Okay. So I think we play in position against Yen. We don't really want to pump this up pre flop, except against a limp, we do. Uh, I mean, we're not going to be getting this in pre-flop against a limp. So they can limp raise to like 14,000 or something. We can call play in position with the nut ace. Fine, right? Uh, but against a limp, we're happy to play a limp call paw here, right? So everything is okay. Shaping up fine. There's the limp raise. It's pretty big here. 18 and a half million. Uh, that's a lot. My first impression is... Yikes, actually. I mean, I was thinking it'd be more like 15 million. This is pretty big. I think coming over the top and bluffing with our hand is not really a great option here. I think we call play in position with 37 million in the middle and we'll have like 90 million back. So we can definitely play from there. I think this is the right approach. Uh, I think folding is a mistake. Wow. Oh, wow. I mean, it's a great flop. You know where it's really nasty chat is when they have like jacks, right? Or when they have kings or something. This is where it's like, can we fold our hand? But let's just make a flush instead. They bet, I think we call. We're not protecting for much. We call. This is the question of the turn. Do we bet if they check to us? Or do we check back and take the river? Probably check back. But if they bet, of course we don't fold. We're at 22 million. Call again. Don't know what to do. I think I have to call. Don't think I could fold. It's only 60 million to win 160. We're getting a great price. I don't think we can fold. I'm really sad. I think we have to call though. Come on, let's go! Let's go, chat! 225, baby! Come on! Oh, it just can be, guys. 
girls, people. It can just be kings and we can be out there. We can it, this can be such a different story, but it's not that story. It's our story chat. Come on, man, let's go. Oh, whew. sheesh. Miscellaneous with the 52 months. Thank you so much, man. Holy smokes. That's a lot. I'm all in. Against Colin. Oh, knees weak. Palms are sweaty. All right, man. That's a lot of chips, dude. Holy smokes. That was intense. That was intense. Our city knocks someone out, so we're down to 16 now. I like our table now, though, right? With three stacks we really cover. So I don't really want other big stacks to come in, but uh, full to us, we're going to raise up 7-9 in the button. Take it down. Oh, that was such a sick pot, dude. It can just be kings, chat. Like, we can be out of the tournament. That's why it's such a sick spot, but I think we have to call. Like, we under -rep our hand a lot. They've got to think as well, like, hey, JB doesn't always get to the river like this with overpairs. Like, he puts in aggression at other periods as well. So they've got to discount my overpairs. Uh, they're thinking I have a decent amount of diamond draws that get to the river, and yet I have a diamond draw and top top, though, is the thing, and top top. And there's a huge gulf opening up between the chip stacks right now. Uh, check back here. I think this is a really good flop for the small blind. It's going to have a lot of, a lot of this uh, boards. We have a gutter. But I think check back is good, especially with how I think Mark's going to perceive our range being wide here, which it is wide, right? So decent amount of checks. Come on. Oh, great bluff. GG, great bluff. GG. Get some hearts in the chat, you guys, for Great Bluff, who is out of the tournament. Could look at bluffing the river, but... Okay, we actually have a pretty decent... There's a huge gap, right? So we're first, 245, second, 230, 170 is third, 140 is fourth, and then 77 is fifth. So it's like... And ninth place has 30 million. So it's really top-heavy right now. I think I give up here. I'm not going to bluff. All right. Come on, dude. Let's go. Holy poggers. Yeah, bro. Holy poggers, indeed. Get a call on the big blind from Yen. 10-5 uh, deuce on the flop. Checks to us, we bet. Uh, super small. You know, like 2 million. 2 million. And 2,500 bounty. 20 start stacks, but... 20, 20 bounties, though. Huh. Uh, I don't think bet call is the right answer here. I think we had to bet fold. That's a lot of money, obviously. But the chips are important as well. This 20 million is important. Can't just give away 20 million for 2,500 when first is 70K. So I think it's a bet fold. Oh, the thing is we have an over card here. So I feel like we need about 6% less equity than normal to call off. I don't know if I was going to bet call there. I actually don't know. He's got 10-10, unlikely, I know. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go, chat. Listen, chat. All of you, every hand we play, say fold, okay? 
you're going to be right one of these times. One of these times you're going to be right. But just stop calling for colds, dude. TW Rex 7 dropping the sub. Get some love in the chat for TW Rex 7 Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Just listen. If you keep saying fold every hand and then the 10th time it's a fold and I bust the tournament, fine. But you don't get to act self-righteous. Okay, that's, that's the distinction. Fine if you want to call it. But don't act like Nostradamus when you hit it on, on the 10 of 10, okay? <laughs> I have to say, chat, collectively today, you guys have been wrong three times in a row, collectively. The average choice in the chat has been wrong, 3x. I have to be honest. I need you to know it. <laughs> so we're down to 15, 22, 25 cashed in the tournament. First place should be about 70,000. You can see the payouts in the bottom left-hand corner, but... Uh, it is a knockout. So you multiply first by about double. Let's go. Oh, yeah, we are first uh, of 15. Seven deuce is going to be a fold. It sucks. It really sucks. I mean, these bounties are amazing. There's a huge bounty, but I don't think... Yeah, it's not worth it for this 437. It is six blinds, dude. Oh, dude. Six blinds. For $437. It's seven deuce. We could get some action from the shorter stacks. I mean, the thing is, if Yen goes all in and now all of a sudden there's two bounties worth 3,000 here for seven blinds, but we'll fold now. Final two tables. Eight, nine against threes. Threes. We have a really good table lineup here in that the other two big stacks are on the other table. So it's a great spot for us as of now. But these are great players as well. It's not, it's not a pushover. Like, we could bust before the final table. It's not a sure thing. But we've got a good start anyways. So let's start well. We raise. On the other table, Arsini versus Felipe Salgado. But for now, raise, call from Mark and Vlad, friend of the stream in the big blind. Arsini takes it. We're down to 14. Don't move me, dude. Do not move me. That would be such a bad beat if we got moved to the big stack table. Uh, queen 10, 9, 2 diamonds. Pretty good board for Mark again. I do think that they're going to have some of the suited aces, but they're going to have a lot of two pairs, some straights, and uh, a lot of strong hands, essentially. Lead for 4 million. I mean, we're getting 4.5 to 1 with a gut shot, but without the diamonds, I mean, I almost just want to fold. I don't think I can fold getting 4.5 to 1 in position. In that if we call here, often they're going to check the turn. We're going to get two cards. Uh, I think we call, but just because of the price, right? Four and a half to one. I, I think it's their board, but we hit it. It's the dream. Mark can have ace-king, so I don't think we have the nuts here. We have a straight. It's very like the best hand. It's an exciting card. But if I'm Mark and I have ace-king, I'm going to be calling in a small blind as well. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the same thing. So, but a 5.8 million. Call. Uh, this kind of sucks. I think we call River. If they bet like 35 million, I might fold. In that, I think a diamonds is very reasonable. Um, but we call 10 million without thinking. We chop it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool. We have the third best hand in poker. 
and we have a five blind stack, an eight blind stack, an eight blind stack, a 20 blind stack, and a 13 blind stack, all with huge bounties. Is this what dreams are made of, dude? I think so. They shove, we call, and hope to induce an action from anyone, you know? Like, Mark could just wake up with tens and then shove over our call, and all of a sudden we're massive chip leader. Um, okay, so they, they raised just less than all in. We're going to three bet this to like, you know, 13 million or whatever. But still hoping to induce action from someone behind. Actually, don't mind acting fairly quickly here in that we kind of want to look weakish. So it's going to be a $900 bounty in play with the queens. Our city on the other table has 350 million. Holy smokes, this, the chips are all at the top right now. Our city on 350, us on 240, then Mark on 170. Then a 120, and then it goes down to four, 55 million after that. Wow. All the chips are concentrated at the top right now. All right, folds around to Milan. 13 left. When's the next pay jump? At 11. All right. Alex says, let's run it, bro. For 900 bucks. Matty Ice, thanks for the raid, dude. My chat spoiled me on your bust out. I'm really sorry to hear it. Hopefully we can debrief tonight with a bit of Valorant. Um, thanks for the raid. Welcome everyone tuning in. We are 2 of 13 right now in this 530 millions. It's about 70 k for the moment. Big moments. Let's get it. Matty Ice! Drop the 84 month resub. That's seven years in the house. He's my brother. He's my actual brother. Same mother. Alex Sage on the tank. Just trying to hit the, the page jump here. Uh, which I get. I mean, it's two off the pay jump, actually, so I don't get it. I don't know why you're waiting. You can wait to see my hand, but you're not going to fold for $6 million getting this price. Like, if, if they have one ace, you can't fold, you know? That's the thing. And it's a five-minute delay, so they can't get through it. All right. Queens against King7. Hold it, dude. For the 890. Hold it. Fine turn with the heart. Let's go! Let's go, chat. Come on! Another 900 coming our way. We are down to 12 remaining in the tournaments in second place. All the chips are at the top right now. It's really crazy. We raise. The only person that's, this is quite tough against is Vlad. I think against any of these three stacks, it's a easy, very easy PogChamp call. We have... 4,000 in bounties, 2,200 cash, about 6,200. Mark calls. It does get tough now against Mark's call in that when they have like aces and they're slow playing, we can get wrecked here. But I think maybe not against Vlad, but against these two, if they squeeze, I think re-squeeze is the answer with ace-jack. It's quite a strong hand. Yo, that bread, though. Thanks for the bits, yo. What's the record viewers on your stream? I think about 14,000. We have three, two streams this, this year. Uh, of over 10,000 viewers. 
I was really hoping I'd get a third today in the 5K billions, but maybe if we win this, we've got a chance. It's not a high chance. 70,000 for the win. I don't know if we can get the 10K viewer mark, but it'd just be nice to have a trifecta of three streams over 10,000 viewers organic, you know, like no front page, no promotion, just straight up, you know, that'd be pretty hype. Uh, we have an all in on the other table, King 10 against King 8. Players, I guess, wanting to hit the, the pay jumps here. Going on five minute break after this hand, we are down to 11. This is a big bounty, right? 2,500 cash. It's a big, big bounty. A long tank and a call. King Queen 5, two spades. Pretty good flop, actually. We don't hit it directly, but like we are happy here. <laughs> and we get a stop and go for a 12.3. I think definitely a call. Getting two to one with the gut shot of the nuts. We could be ahead of Mark here. We've got the back to flush draw. Like everything good. We call. And if Mark raises, we hope it's not huge, right? If it's huge raise, it puts us in a really bad spot. Uh, but against a small raise, fine, you know. And four of hearts on the turn. I think we check. We don't want Mark to bet, like, in the 30s. That's right on the edge, I think. Three to one. Uh, need 25% equity, a little bit less with the bounty. We have outs. We have some percentage chance that we have the best hand as well, though. I think I should call because of this bounty situation. They're going to bluff a little bit more. A slightly wider range. Our ace isn't out sometimes. I think we call Goodwill River. King Jack wins. Uh, tough one there. We lose quite a lot of chips. We're still in a good spot, though, on 200 million. We are now in third in the tournaments, and we are down to 10 players on the pure bubble. That 2,500 bounty goes to Mark. Mark has now earned 12,000 in bounties in the tournament. I wish I was so fortunate. We've got a 4K earned in bounties, uh, but we are in third place. Let's just do a little pause on this. Uh, I'm going to pull over the lobby for you all. So here's the situation, right? We've got Arsini. We're on a five-minute break, so we can just talk about it. Arsini on 376 million is our chip leader. And then we have Mark on our table on 234, right? And then us on 205, right here. And then there's a huge gap. Fourth place has half as much as us. So it's a big, like very concentrated at the top, right? Very, very concentrated at the top. Here's fourth place, Diogo. And then a big gap. Fifth place has half of fourth. So really, everyone is tied up here at the top. 55, 43, 39, 33, 22, and then 15. So really weird sort of chip stack distributions right now. Uh, it's going to be kind of a weird final table, I think. And the reason being that usually when you get into these final table spots, you really want to be risk averse, right? When you're a middling stack, you want to um, sort of avoid risk, make your way up the, the pay scale, increase your ladders, uh, make more money, and do that sort of uh, progressively throughout the tournaments. Now, in a bounty, that effect is less, right? And that winning the tournament is huge. You know, it's a very top-heavy tournament. So there's less of that laddering effect, less of that can we make it the next jump. But there's still some. There's definitely still... Um, still some pressure. It's just a little bit less pressure. But then also the chip stack situation is bizarre because, for example, seventh place, we have five times more chips than seventh place. So if we bust now before seventh, when we have such a huge chip advantage on them, well, that's a, you know, a problem, you'd think, right? Like that, it's going to cost us. So it's going to be a really interesting play down to the finish, I think. I'm looking forward to it. We're on the final table bubble here. See how it goes, man. It's going to be exciting. Thank you, everyone, so much for being here in the house. What's up? How's it going? Shout out to you all. Uh, appreciate it, man.
Yeah, it is an art score. We cash the main event. It'll just be one piece of art for the two. Uh, so we'll buy a piece of art. I don't know what it's going to be yet. We'll see. Did Matt last? He did, unfortunately. He hosted me, so I think he's out of the tournament. For 18300 GG, Matt. GG, man. VH Tack Hen. It's too bad there. I mean, it's... I was thinking on the river, uh, how insane are we, right? Like if we get a bet from Mark on the river, we have the ace of spades. If we get a bet, do we check raise all in? That's the question. But uh, Mark takes it down, we lose Yen, Strazasar. We did most of the work on that bounty, but I'm, I'm happy with our 205 million. Let's just keep chipping up here. Uh, keep climbing. And in general, dude, things are good. December has been great for poker. Um, you can check out my game on Party Poker. And it really helps you to sort of get a sense for how you're doing and some of the things you might be doing well or not well. So if I look at my December... Right, so this is my December, played 9,000 hands. If I go to my win rate, which is the most important one here, almost 10 blinds per 100, which it's not a huge sample or anything, but 10 blinds per 100 is a really good win rate, really, really good. And I've played pretty high stakes this month. I've played the 5K twice, played a lot of 1Ks and 2Ks and 500s. and So it's been good, man. It's been good. I'm happy. Let's go. Thank you for the good luck, KC Mello. Thanks, man. 25 seconds left. Till we play it all. Play to a victory, maybe. We might go all the way. We might not. I'm not sure. But we are on the final table bubble. It'll be nice when we combine tables. It'll probably be hand for hand for now. Mark does have a lead on us. Call in the shortest act of the tournament on a 531 bounty here. So that is uh, interesting to see how it plays out. I think the other table's better for our city, right? But our table's not bad either. We've got a good spot. Should bluff river with a shack? Yeah. Well, I was thinking about the check raise, but... Uh, you know. We didn't get the opportunity to check raise on the river, but I was thinking, mm, do you want to check raise here? Do you want to represent the flush that played super passively? Like, maybe... Folds around in the small blind, or the button, excuse me. There's no small blind. Milan Sasik on 11 blinds. We're really hoping for a walk because we can't call a jam. Uh, we don't get it. Moving on. Deuce three suited sucks, so I'll fold. Let Colin decide what to do here. Redgate Gaming, drop the one-year resub. Yo, Redgate, thank you so much. Welcome to the team. Get some love in the chat for the one-year resub, everyone. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. We have a 4-8 offsuit. Not it. Second place in the tournaments in the big blinds. They're going to play a lot of pots against us. In position, we can't do much with this 4-8. Uh, other table, we have an all-in from Victor G. Victor Gomez de Castro against Diogo Vega. Twitch is flooded with teenagers. It's really not, actually. My average age of viewer is about 30. It's mostly... Uh, Mostly a mid twenties to uh, like early forties demo, uh, and Twitch in general actually doesn't have uh, as many teenagers as you'd think. But like a lot of people between the ages of like twenty and twenty six, a ton.
Title should be one of 15, but I guess it's three of 10. Three of 10 in the millions. I'll try and uh, update it. There we go. Can you confirm we've earned 3,700? No, we've earned 3,953 in bounties. 3,953. Vlad wins a pot there. We're moving on in our hand-for-hand -hand battle. Friend of the stream, Vlad from Argentina. Uh, I think raise here. Basically, we have the button, right? Like Colin has six blinds. And if they go all in, great. And if they don't go all in, great. It's fine. So I think we get to open the 7-9 here. These hands do go down in value a little bit the deeper we get in the tournament. <coughs> but here we are. Uh, ace check five, two diamonds. Do you do a decent amount of checking against the, the small blind, but I'm mostly going to bet this one. We're not going to bet this time, though. I was just going to do a randomization of not pure betting in this spot. We, we roll the check. Ten on the turn. Another good card for the range. I do think the range is wider than, than normal because of the chip situation, but... This is just a good board for them, and we fold. We are a final table bubble, yep. Open sixes, call a jam here and here. It's uh, not a great hand when we get down to ICM, but it's a weird ICM spot where it's not... I mean, with the bounties and stuff that are on short stacks, we're not really there yet to where we're feeling a lot of payout pressure with 100 blinds against Mark, you know? Mark calls. Hmm. I think I get a check call here. Uh, trying to induce some bluffs from Mark with the top set. Obviously, we had three streets of value. Uh, it is difficult to play this hand on some turns of rivers when the run out is club club or you know creates four liners to a straight. We don't really want to bust in tenth. So I think playing deceptively is the right answer to start, right? Uh, check call, jack in the turn. Likelihood of jacks very low. Likelihood of three five almost zero. Give it one percent. A jack on the river. I think we block bet and induce a raise hopefully hopefully induce a raise here but hopefully some hero calls as well and we do get a pot there with a full house king four okay cool 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 uh we play that another way we bet flop they call we bet turn they are indifferent uh, we bet flop and then we check turn and they go check check and then we bet river and they call or we check river and they check like I don't see a way we can get more money from that hand specifically uh, we really love the crazy setup like cooler as well for five blinds here and a 531 bounty I think the bounty makes it worth it here uh, with jack deuce even though I expect them to have quite a good hand if I knew they had ace jack I'd fold for what it's worth but uh I think, oh, chop, chop, chop. No, I think it's worth it to call there. 211, we're tied with Mark. Tied for second. Yeah, we will have a winner today. We'll play down to a winner. We will play down to a winner. Just turned 21 six days ago. Happy birthday, Seabass. Happy birthday, man. Ace eight beats Vlad's ace 10. Colin doubles up. Vlad on the short stack now. Let's go up to 1.25, 1.5. Reduce is trashed here, so we fold. 
Connor Hodgson dropping the eight months. Jamie, hope you're well. So glad I got back in the routine of watching again. Join the deep run and playing great. Keep it up with the win and most importantly, have fun. Thanks, man. I'm definitely having fun for sure. Uh, I definitely have a decent chance of winning this tournament. And let's make it happen. Let's make it happen, man. Colin Limps, Mark Shoves. Teens on League of Legends and Valorant and COD. I think teens are on Fortnite. They're on Minecraft. They're on Roblox. They're on just chatting. Uh, some Valorant, sure. They're on Halo. They're on COD. Yeah. I mean, they're not. They're not here. And definitely, like, just look to the new AAA release video games because that's those are marketed at teens, usually, right? Uh, Four seven suited, I think, is old. Of course, there's like a few people that are 18, 19, 20 here, but I would say it's a pretty small percentage. Raised to five million, three bit all in from Vlad. That juicy bounty, bro. That juicy bounty. You know what I want to do is re. I want to bank this recording in case anything crashes. Just because it's been such a great tournament. Like, if you guys didn't see day one in this tournament either, like, I really did crazy stuff. Like, this has been one of the best tournaments I've ever played in my life, I think, honestly. If I think back to the last 11 years of playing, I made some pretty insane plays in this tournament. King nine against fives. Fives are ahead. We want fives to win, I think, the bounty to stay in the tournament. Uh, I don't think we want the ladder. I think we want to just keep... Keep the bounties in the tournament so we can get them ourselves. Although Jack Four is not going to make the cut. Milan Sasek is the shortest stack in the tournament, but gets a walk. No problem. So we're going to sweat the other table now. Nice. We got it banked, bro. We got we got the recording banked in case of a, a blue screen or something like that. Nice. All right. Next hand. Final table of bubble. Queen Jack. Uh, Colin is... Pretty tight, but like can just shove eights. So I think call against Vlad's open. We reshove against Vlad's shove. We fold sadly against Milan shove. We fold against Mark's open. We call and see a flop. Really dry board. Mark opens. Three of ten, chat. Three of ten. For all the marbles. Uh, Arsini putting Diogo in the cage on the other table as well. Tough spot to be Diogo, dude. Because, I mean, you have like one third of the chips of Arsini. You're in fourth place in the tournament. You don't want to bust in 10th when you're in 4th place of the tournament. Arseni can just rel relentlessly through that here. Then 6 suited. Reasonable hand. A hand worth opening on the button. If Milan folds, but if Milan shoves, I think it's a folds. Not enough to hunt with the big stack behind us. So I think we just raise the button here. See that all in? 
takes it down. On the other table, I'm in Montreal, Bills Mafia. Yeah, Montreal at the moment. Welcome back, man. Welcome back, everyone in the stream that may have been gone a couple years. I know big runs like this always uh, give an opportunity for that. Happy to have all of you here, and thanks for tuning in. No good with the 5 8. Mark Rays, take it. Stuck forever in bronze in Valorant. I feel you, Alch. I feel you, man. Rage Jack 10, call a shot from Colin if it comes in. Uh, from Milan. Ugh. Uh, it's tough. Against Vlad, definitely folding. This bounty isn't nothing, but it's also not a big deal at the stage of the tournament as well. 70k for the win. So the chips are important. Uh, definitely fold now. Eagle Heart 76. Feel like an old timer at age 46. Uh, no big thing, man. A7. We call a shove from Milan if it falls to Milan, but Mark raises. Uh, I think this is going to be a fold, actually. I don't think there's a ton of upside here against Mark, but Milan goes all in. Next. Colin, pretty short here. Uh, eight six kind of sucks. We're not likely to get a good chance at this bounty either, so I think this will be a fold too. Someone else watching a badly dubbed movie gonna hit refresh. Is some some people out of sync. Yikes. Hopefully not a lot of people. Yo, thousand bits coming in from Matt Deli. What's up, Matt? Thank you so much for the thousand bits, dude. Bit Lord of the Month, Matt Deli. There it is on 1500. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. How many entrants? I don't know how many on day one, but 172 made it through to day two. Uh, and that was 15% of the field. So I guess 172. Uh, how do I get that? I have to get the ratio of. Uh, this is going to be a fold. I can find out. Uh, is it going to be divided 0 0.15, I guess? 172 divided by 0 0.15. 1,146. Oh, I could have done the prize pool as well, obviously. You idiot. Yeah, 1,146 entered this tournament. You can also go 568,500 divided by 500. 1,137. There you go. Prize pool would have worked, but I just did it the complicated way of 15% of the field gets through to the next stage, dividing fractions. Uh, next, next hand on 190. We've been a little bit card dead. We've had to do a little bit of folding the mark and stuff like that, but we're chilling. Folds Jack Tampa, calls all in Jack Deuce. Okay. This is poker. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> that is watching poker for the first time. Poker is not just about your hands. It'd be a pretty boring game because then it would just be rank the hands. It's also about uh, things like position at the table and that if there's only two people left, what a good hand is changes. If there's eight people left, a good hand has a higher threshold. Uh, there's also stack depth in that to win a pot, if you only have to risk a little bit of money, 
uh, it's a lot easier to be aggressive than if you have to risk a lot of money. So stack depth is important. So it's not just the hand, it's also position. It's stack depth, it's the previous history of the hand that determines how you play it. For example, I'm gonna call with ace-king suited here. I mean, this is one of the very extremely rare situations where I'm gonna be doing that because it doesn't make sense to play a massive pot where we're very clearly like in third, but tied for second essentially with Mark when there's so many short stacks. It's a huge risk to get it all in with ace-king against queens. It'd be terrible, right? So we're just going to play this quite passively. Um, they bet 6.4, a little bit awkward on the flop, but we continue with the backdoor flush draw with ace high. Uh, this is a good board for us. I actually lead on this turn. It's mostly a bluff. We are sometimes betting with the uh, with the best hand, for sure. You know, Like when they have ace queen, and they have ace jack, and ace 10, and ace four, and ace three, and used to be ace deuce, and all that stuff. We're, we're value betting against some of that stuff, but this is just a much better board for us than Mark. And should we bluff River? I think so. I think we should. Let's go for a 33 million. I like it. We are bluffing. We're obviously not value betting here. We're saying, hey, I have a straight, I have two pair, I have a set, I have a good hand, basically. Let's go. Bluff has worked. Bluff has worked. 215 million. That's good. We take second place back. We take the chip lead on this table back. Not quite enough to play the 6 8 here, though. Our city gets to shove through on the other table. All in from Milan. This could be final table time. If Mark takes out Milan. <coughs> but no. Milan takes it. All right. Moving on. We do have second place here. We do have the table chip lead. Colin throwing the pigeon at Mark. I get it. Little card dead here. That's okay. New BVIC, what's up? What's up? 36K plus bounties, which will add up the same, so 70K is pretty accurate. Yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be like at least 65K up to 80K, somewhere between 65 and 80, I think, depending on how well you do with bounties uh, at the sort of late stage of the tournament, somewhere in there. Limp. There's almost no limping at the stage of the tournament, actually. If I'm straight with you, bruh, there's very, very rare to want to limp in these spots. Mark bets five and a half against Vlad on three turn. Biggest score on Twitch, 108K, Troy. Mark takes it down on 220. Our chip lead on the table was short-lived, but we raise king to suited. We're basically tied. We're in position with a suited hand. If Colin plays, we don't care. It's only four blinds. Uh, so I think we get to play this one. Good call for Mark. Ace queen against ace shack. We are. That's a double up from the short stack. Uh, I think I'm going to fold here. I don't think the 1400 is worth it. I also feel like Vlad's got a pretty strong range here. General, ace nine. 
We do have a player at risk. We want the eights to win, I think. I think we want the bounties to stay in the tournaments and then take the table chip lead. And that's what happens. It's great. Good, good, good. We don't mind this situation. As much as it's fun to get to the final table, um, it's a good spot to put pressure on it. Do we want to put this much pressure on now? Probably not with 4-8. You haven't finished the spin and go ladder? We have made it to the top of the ladder before, but not since we've restarted the series. We haven't made it yet. Vlad's all in against Milan. I've got an all in on the other table. Diogo against David's. David's probably got the best hand here. Oh no, it's not an all in, it's a raise shove. Couple pots. Milan folds. Milan, might be time, chat, for 10 blinds with ace three. If we double them up, we're still in a great spot on 170 million. We're ahead of their range. I think this is a call if they jam. And we have what looks like an all-in on the other table as well. Nice bluff. Thanks, guys. Chat, you're 0 for 4 today. I just want you to remember that you have made four decisions in the chat where the majority has said to do the opposite of what I did, and you've been wrong all four times. I just really want you to drive that home in your brains, chat, and remember, because one of these times you're going to be right, and a play I make isn't going to work, and I just want you to know it doesn't count. It's your overall record, okay? Uh, we're going to 3-bet here. with ace-deuce, with a blocker, the four blind stack. They're probably gonna fold, but Mark's gonna open a pretty wide range with this stack, and when they fold, Mark is going to be left with a slightly weaker range than normal against a three bet. We've been playing pretty snug. We're the chip leader, they're in third place, or we're in second, they're in third. So I think it's a good spot to put in a, a three bet bluff. Get a call, we're actually slightly ahead of Queen Jack here. Probably not gonna win. Yes, we are probably gonna win. We win it, let's go! We get the bounty chat. We get the bounty chat. All right, what are we up to? 4,484 in bounties. Final table hype of the $530 millions online at Super PKO. Uh, what do you want to do? King nine suited. Where is our chip leader, Arsini? Here. First hand, we're gonna try snipe one through. We're gonna try and snipe one through here. We are two of nine at the final table. Everyone is guaranteed $3,737, plus whatever bounties we've earned, which for us is 4,500, basically. First place is 36,500 plus bounties, expected to be 70K or so. Milan is all in. Um, I think we have to call here. We're not quite getting two to one, but with the bounty added, it adds a really small amount to be fair here. Um, we could raise fold if there wasn't bounties in the spot, especially because of how tight this range is. I think I'm actually gonna fold here. In that Milan, by the way, uh, can fold pairs all the way up to probably nines here, I would think actually. I don't know if they know that. Uh, I think I'll get a fold. It's pretty sick. Wow! Wow, 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 wow! Sick. Uh, okay, let's go.
We're all we're folding to Milan. And for the king eight. So our city is in a great spot. They can put a ton of pressure on. There's a bunch of these stacks at, you know, sub 30 blinds. Our city folds, which means we're the captain now, right? It now means that we're the captain. We get to lay the smack down here on the rest of the table. David shoves. We will be playing the spot. We'll be playing the spot. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to play this from here against Mark specifically, right? Do we want to call full to a rejam from Mark? Wow, Vlad goes all in over the top. Uh, now I don't really know what to do. It's more like how do we do against Vlad's range? Less so about David and that this is a 60 million side pot plus these bounties. Uh, I think it becomes not worth it here in that if we lose... We're down to 140. Vlad will be on 150. And the bounties in play here are like 2,500 combined. Uh, I think I'm going to fold. We had a ace-queen spot earlier. Same, pretty same spot. Okay. Well, I'm sure glad David had tens. Looks like our friend of the stream, Vlad, is going to be quite short now. That's a big suck out. Nice hand, David. Vlad on 32. <laughs>
the six ten of diamonds. Thank you, Flip and Flops. Thanks, man. Man, this is going to be a good tournament to review, dude. This is just going to be really interesting, I think. I'm really happy with how I've played this tournament. Like, I'm pumped up on it. But I'm curious what uh, Ben has to say. The Raise Your, Raise Your Edge crew, Nico and Ben, I will definitely run this tournament by them and see what they think, man. Uh, both those guys have made a big contribution to me improving at poker. I fold. Painful. Uh, fold here as well. Not a happy one. Two of eight, chat. Marks all in. And takes it down, 187. Takes it down, 187. Moving on, 10-3 is trashed here. We pass. Thanks, Dark Link. Thanks, man. Folds around to Mark, who covers Milan. 14 blinds deep. Mark goes for the raise to 81 8.1, 81, 100,000, doesn't work. <laughs> Fold the jack three. Because it sucks. It's a pretty bad hand. Let Mark go for this one. Thanks, Vlad. Thanks, man. <laughs> Poker Dave, what's up, man? Oh, chat. It's good to see you all, though. Thank you so much for being here. If anyone's new to the channel, hit the follow button. I'll be streaming some more millions. There's a 2K... Six max tournament I'm going to be playing this week. $2,000 buy-in. So uh, that should be fun. And I'll be definitely playing some poker on Sunday as well. we got more poker coming up. So uh, feel free to hit the follow if you're new and, and welcome. We're raise king queen. Rolls around to Arsini in the big blind. Who calls? Jack 7-5 with two hearts. I think I'm going to check back with this hand. The turn. It's so nice. He checks to us, we bet nine million. Eight point seven five it is. Take it down. Take it down, chat. 227, good stuff. Hold the 
David is chipping up, yeah, on 102 million. The success story of the final table so far. We're kind of just treading water here. Um, but I think it's the right strategy. We just stay patient. Pale for first and second is the same because it's a knockout tournament. So when you get heads up, what you're actually playing for is the bounties you've already earned, but then also the bounty on your head. So what that means, how you do the math in that spot. Ace three against 10-6. Victor doubles Igor should be quite short, right? Pretty short? Yeah, I mean, has a blind left. I'm gonna try and get involved in this pot. See if Arseny lets me. Oh, they fold. Wow, let's go. Um, so let's say I'm heads up against Arseny, right? Let's say I have 2,500 and they have 6K. The amount we're actually playing for heads up is double this amount, so that'd be 12,000 and double this amount, which would be 5,000. So it'd be a 17,000 heads up match if I got heads up right now against Arsini. And it'll be more by the time we get heads up. So it ends up being that um, the difference between first and second is usually about double. It's usually about double. So, yeah. Uh, we're gonna bet here with the flush draw. Dude, it's so painful if we get jammed on here. It's so painful and probably a fold, but I think we should definitely bet with the flush draw. If we get jammed on, they're going to have King X. They're going to have the occasional Jack and better flush draws. Six or five or club. Let's go! Bounty coming our way, chat. 855, 835. 26 million chips. We're down to seven. That's 6,000 in the prize pool. That's 5,000 in bounties. Let's go. Nico and Ben here. I'll put a link in the chat, you guys, to raise your edge. Check them out. Great, great place to learn poker. Uh, if you want to improve your game, check them out, man. There's the master class right there. I got a discount for the master class and the bounty course as well. There you go. There's links below the stream to all this as well, but I just want to get it out there because I'm appreciative to those guys. 8 6 in the big blinds. We are going to call here. We don't do that much calling, but we have a big chip advantage on Milan Sasik. Life's a little awkward on this flop. It's great that we flop a six. Um, how much fold equity do we have check shoving? Some against like ace king, against ace queen, against ace ten suited. Some of these hands, for better or worse, are probably going to shove. At a 5.2 million. Um, I think I'm actually going to call here. It does turn our hand strength a little bit face up, but it makes it easy enough to play on turns. All right, the bet on the final table. Yes takes it down. Congrats. Everyone that bet on yes. Our city raises, we fold. One person wants to discuss the deal, by the way. Raise the queen seven on the button. Janid, I'm old as follow or someone beat me. Following since January 15th, 2015. It's pretty old. They'll have some, there'll be some people in the chat that can beat you, but that's pretty early, Janid. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. We're going to fold the queen seven to the jam. I should put out a tweet that we're on this final table, by the way. Let me, let me get it. One second.
cool nice uh, where did the image go there we go All right, boom, tweet is out, beautiful. Thanks for bearing with me, everyone. If you wanna engage on that one, that tweet to get the word out, it is on Twitter, at James Staples or at Poker Staples either. Super Straddle, drop it to 17 month three subs. Hey, good luck, take it down. I have a direct line to the Poker Gods. I'm happy to inform you, you will take it down. Oh, well, there's no concern, is there? I'm not sweating anymore, dude. We got this thing wrapped up. Thanks for the 17 month resub. Welcome back. Arsini, uh, putting Diogo once again in the cage. Once again. Put in the cage. Nothing you can do, Diogo. Arsini takes it. We continue our seven handed battle in second place. Let's go, Ryan Meese. What's up, bro? It is a good one. It's a good spot. It is a good spot, man. Mark goes for the raise and the cutoff. Tio goes all in. Diego takes it. Beautiful Jax. Uh, we would call gems from Diogo and Milan and Victor on this hand. It's definitely good enough. If we get three bet from Mark or a Cine, it's a call and go to a flop, right? Uh, if we get a squeeze from one of the short stacks here, we jam. If we get a squeeze from our Cine, we, uh, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. It's, it's, it's the scariest, most painful potential spot you can be put in it's i can't i can't even create a scarier spot than raise call squeeze i can't it's just so so sick it's the snappest fold with nines Oh my God, this is so gross, man. I It makes me like actually angry, man. That spot, it's just so, it's just, you, could, you can't design punishment more extreme than that. You just can't, you just can't do it. I don't know. Uh, I fold. <laughs> it's just, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, calling, I think, is not an, a good option. I think it's an all-in or fold uh, with the jacks there because Arsini is going to have a pretty wide bluffing range. Mark is also going to be able to flat some nuts there, though, too. We are in second place. Big chip lead on on, like, fourth place. We have triple fifth place. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That's definitely one I will be asking uh, Ben and Nico about because I think that's a really disgusting spot, if I'm honest. It'll be pretty controversial as well. I look forward to uh, a lot of quite angry people in the chat. Maybe that one might even make Twitter, to be honest. That's how sick that spot is. But... Anyways, onwards. Yeah, you can you can click your name and you can see how long you've been following. So I can't, I can't believe the jacks. I can't believe it. I just, I'm just not gonna think about it because it's just too painful.
<laughs> but the crazy thing is though, chat, <laughs> if I have ace five suited, I'm all in. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. Folding jack, shoving ace five suited. Promise. Uh, I'm also all in with queens, by the way. I'm obvious, like, it's so sick that it's definitely the line. I'm definitely folding tens. Jax is the line. I'm all in with ace five suited. I'm all in with ace four suited. I'm all in with ace king. I'm all in with ace queen suited. Huh. How gross. So gross, by the way. So gross. Raising a shove here from Victor G. We fold. Mark is now a very short. Uh, I didn't comment on that because I didn't actually see it. Arseni now has license to go ham. And... Uh, we're in a great spot, you know? Like, we're pretty likely to get second place here, at least. Likely. I mean, it's not for sure. You know, the, all these players have a decent stack. They could reach have a bunch, but we have triple second. Basically, almost, we have almost triple um, third place, right? And then the chip lead has almost triple second place, so big gaps here. We like being ahead of all these short stacks. We want them all to bust, get all the ladders, and then play heads up. At a four to one chip disadvantage, it's not a big difference between four to one or three to one chip disadvantage, you know? Just not a big deal. I can't believe I folded the jacks, dude. I can tell you for sure, this is the first year of any year that I would have ever folded jacks there. I I actually think I'm right, but I'm still actually so in pain from the, the decision. I wanna throw up. Uh, Victor G, I obviously think I'm right, I did it, right? Victor G doubles up, 160. All right, so we kind of have a we have another person around us again here. Can't flat, no, there's no flatting there. For the nine six. Wow, sick. Welcome everyone to the stream. Thanks for hanging in. Uh, I think there's a bunch of new people here. Um, welcome, man. We are two of seven on this final table. It's the Party Poker Millions online. First place is gonna be about 70,000 with bounties. Second place is gonna be you know, between 40 and 50, depending on how many bounties you get before then on down. As of right now, we've cashed for 6K plus 5K in bounties, a little bit more, 11,000 and a bit. And uh, we're in a pretty intense situation, right? We've got a big chip leader on 500 million. We've got us in second place on 200, then 160, and then a big drop to four sort of tied short stacks right now. So we're maneuvering through. We have 51 blinds. And he takes it next hand. A lot of money up for grabs here, dude. 
There's there's about fifty nine thousand difference between busting now and uh, in first. So we're on break, but I just don't want to take it. I mean, I uh, let's just tweet the spot because it's funny. Um, just so that people. I guess we'll just click last hand so it's easier to find. Take the old photo of this one. <laughs> oh, bro. All right, that's a good, funny tweet. That's really sick. Really, really sick, dude. All right, I don't know. What do you think, chat? The tweet, the tweet is out on that spot. Yo, what's up, hype coming in. Varen Bose, dropping the 31 month resub. Welcome back to the team. Hearts out in chat for Varen Bose. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you for the support of the channel. Um, man, I'm a little frazzled. That spot, I'm just frazzled. <laughs> just, uh, the Jags was, instead of buying art, we can start buying some NFTs. Bro, I like the NFT industry a lot. The, the problem is I, it's not a problem. It's a, good, it's a good thing. I have a house with a bunch of walls that have room for art and I like physical art as well. So there's extra utility in that I don't have too much physical art to fill a space where I live, you know? So I think I'm gonna go conventional art, but listen, I'm not against some NFTs. We will be buying some art chat. It is an art score for sure, so we're gonna find some art. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're gonna switch it into NFT buys, but you could. Yeah, for face, drop the 13 month reason, welcome back to the team, yeah, for face. Thanks, man. Yo, brother, hope you had a good holiday week. Good luck, good luck. Thanks, Word Word. Back at you, bro. I, th I hope it was awesome. I didn't really do anything. It doesn't feel like the holidays for me. Uh, my fiance is in the UK. And my family is on the other side of Canada, so it's just me. And, uh, yeah. Not familiar with turnouts, so is open shoving jack check an option? I don't think so, CG. We had 60 blinds to start, so I don't think it's the right decision. And I think most of the time, like... If we're in a heads-up pot, the jack-jack is pretty easy to play. It's just when it goes raise, call, squeeze that everything gets worst. It gets the worst there, so... I don't think there's a pre-flop shove there. I mean, there's no question, chat. Arseny is squeezing wide. Like, there's no doubt Arseny has a lot of bluffs in that spot, for sure. It's just, uh... They also have not bluffs, and it's a disaster. It is a disaster to bust when we're in a clear second place um, in seventh. It's really, really bad. Like, you need to have a big edge against their range. And against their calling range, we barely have an edge against their calling range. Like, we have a small edge. Of course, they're going to fold a lot to the jam, though. So we pick that up a lot. And, yeah. <laughs> Win this and I'll sub. There's a cash incentive. Boom. We got a bonus $5 on the line. Chat, you thought it was 70000 for the win? It's 70005 baby. Let's go. Let's go.
It's not a no-brainer, dude. Listen, that's a big brainer. If it's the right fold, it's a big brainer fold. It's not easy, it's not obvious, and it's not simple, it's painful. And it's close. We continue. It's the least no-brainer thing we've done today. If it's the right fold, we might have made a mistake. Beautiful, beautiful end. Victor opens, very few calls here. I think we three bet. Uh, we don't three bet call, but we three bet. Nice, take it down. Two hundred fifteen thousand, good stuff. We continue our city raises. We fold. Got the man beat. Been following since twenty fourteen. And actually, you followed me. I streamed a little on Bavada. Heads up, sitting goes way back before you blew up, and you came in the stream and talked for a bit and fall. Good luck today, and always, man. Hey, never negative ninety. Cheers, man. That's it. December fourth, twenty fourteen. Got a new record. There it is. We did have Killing Bird in the house, who is an eighty-four month sub, longest ever sub. So. But he is not here right now. And you do have a beat. Uh, welcome, my friend. Thanks for tuning in. Fold the King Nine. Ace is Ace King. Is Mark Lange at risk here? I kind of hope the bounty stays because that's a huge bounty, right? 6K, it's massive. Uh, and has two blinds. Not going to go for it here with Jack-6. David goes for the limp. Mark can still fold here with two blinds, right? Like, try and get the ladder, so I don't think it's worth it. David, well, our Sydney's going to lay the smack down here probably. What kind of art? Um, mostly art that people don't like. We got a little bit back there. Uh, some portrait stuff from this guy, Victor Tachenko. And then a lot of abstract stuff other than that. But uh, we'll take a look. We'll take a look after the stream. Maybe after the stream. We might do it tomorrow as well. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, we'll just see how we feel after this is all over. We've got a lot of battling to do, so we've got to stay in the zone here. Thank you, Quick Fingers. Very kind of you, man. Callum, 1622, drop in the three month resub. Guess 11 this after the man, Callum. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. Welcome back to the team. Thanks for using your Prime sub on me, man. I'm actually going to pause these alerts in case they come through in a really important hand. So the alerts will stack chat and I appreciate you, but we should keep it so that we see any hands that are going on in case it's a the game changing moment, you know, King five suited. We're going to raise here. Um, Mark can still fold, but I think it's worth raising this hand. It's not like seven, four offsuit, right? It's a reasonable hand suited King. I still expect Arsini to mess with us quite a bit, but that's okay sometimes, right? It's okay to get messed with a bit. Folds around. Get a call from Victor G to the flop of deuce, deuce, six. Small bet. Uh, we still have a pretty strong range here in general. So I think 
we are going to bet. Victor, yes, has middling pairs. Uh, yes, has some ace highs that are better than us here. Uh, I don't really know what their preflop strategy is going to be. I don't know if they're going to have like the seven eight suiteds, the eight nine suiteds. Uh, I don't. I. I don't know. It's a guess. Um, but I think at least worth one bet on the flop. Seven of clubs in the turn. I think checking now is the good plan. An ace on the river. Quick check. So we have things that we can choose from the bluff, but I think king five is probably one of the best ones, if we're honest. And I'm betting into a range that's going to have some aces, right? Like... They're going to have ace-jack sometimes, depending on what their preflop strategy is. They call flop, and they get to the river, and they make a pair of aces, planning to check call. But we need some bluffs. We have relatively few bluffs on, the, on this river. Uh, so we're going to go for it, and we take it down. Let's go. Pads says he wants to uh, four bet call. Wow, Pads want, Pads with the jacks wants to go seventy two million and then call the all in. What a gangster! <sighs> Definitely interested as to why, but not interested right now. Right now we focus. We got wasted in Killing Bridge stream last night. He's in recovery. Fair enough. <laughs> Just remember that Jamie isn't a huge high stakes reg. Excuse me, bro. What? Excuse me? Last I checked, I'm a huge high stakes reg, man. As in, I'm a reg, I'm playing high stakes, and perhaps slightly too big. <laughs> Listen, man. Don't be, don't be throwing shade out there on my final table, man. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude. Is this what rail heaven feels like, man? This is what it feels like to be Isildur 1, man. Tom Dwan. Milan's all in. Arsini reshoves. I expect Arsini to have the best hand here, right? Probably. Pretty likely. 437 bounties, not a lot. Whoa, what happened? Whoa, what? What? What's going on? Wow. Okay. I think what is happening, chat, is that Arsini either misclicked or likes this chip stack situation so much that they take a slightly losing gamble to then have this situation. The bounty's in play. I almost missed that, by the way. The fact that this bounty was in play. I almost missed it. That's why it was. That's why Arsini went all in over the top because of this. Uh, okay. <coughs> Fine. Uh, 6k is nice. We're suited here as well. Do we just call and like try and pop a flush draw or a flush or trips or something like that? I and mean, 6k is worth a lot. We have to call five blinds pre- I mean, I'm thinking I'm going to call here. 6K is a lot. Let's take it to the streets. And we fold. That's it. We're down to six. Lose a few chips there, but we're down to six. Mark is out. I totally missed that he was in that pot, by the way, which is what, obviously why 
the ace five is all in. That all makes sense. Uh, but I zoned out for a second. And that's a, a mistake too. Like you got to stay uh, focused on that. I must be getting tired. Pull the 10-3. Raising a three bet here. Pad sees, says fold seems good. So I don't know if he's trolling me on his raise to 72, 452, 333 call, or if he thinks that's the best play, but fold is also good. I don't know. I have no idea. Ace 4 suited is great. It was a good end. Three bet. And we fold. Wow. Here we go. Ace, king, kings. Our ace four was not going to work so well, was it, chat? Or was it? Kings take it down. Diogo is out of the tournament. 1250 bounty gone. David on 238. And now everything is completely different, right? We're down to five. 10,000 cash plus the 5K bounty or whatever, 15K. <laughs> but the stacks are completely different now. 440. 285, David in second. 183, 115, and 96. Let's get the get the goat out for David, man. And our Cine puts it in. Fold four six. Four K viewers of poker. What? What's up, Ryoto? Victor's all in against Arsini's open. Victor raises to 10 million. Bold, David putting in the three bet, Chat, what an intense stream, dude. What an intense stream. Oh, we're just in it here, man.
Milan raises against Victor. <coughs> All right. Okay. Jack six suited. Not quite worth it to open here on the button. David raises. We are in the middle of the pack. Three of five. But still a decent amount of play, I think, with uh, the stacks being deep enough. 20, 23, 34, 61, and 87. We've got some play here for sure. Six million. Victor going for the raise. Look at these two battling it out. I love it. I love the battle of these two, man. Their bounties are pretty small. No offense, gentlemen. Just being honest. Um. Seems close. Arsini goes for the raise. Yo, Megalon, what's up, yo? Delay is five minutes. Five minutes. I don't think people can get there with the um, with the time delay. King Jack. Uh, that's really quite a large raise. Um, I'm going to make an exploitative fold here, actually. This is not the right fold by the book. Um, you should three bet, I think, probably. I think the, the standard play is to three bet there to 42 million. I think for a few reasons, it's the right fold against David. One of which obviously being the stacks, but for other reasons as well. So I'm just going to fold and move on. Uh, too tight. Don't do that at home. Definitely like Chippy V early in the tournament. It's not even close. Like you most definitely, definitely call there early in the tournament. You don't three bet. You always call. Uh, we do very little calling in these spots. It's mostly three better folds. Um, and I don't think we want to three bet against David there. However, we would three bet some hands for sure. And they would almost always contain an ace in them. Thanks, Regan. Cheers, man. Check, check on the flop. He said diamonds on the turn. Interesting. Mm-hmm. 
going to open this, I think. Uh, we've been quite snug for quite a while, so I think we'll have a decent amount of credit built up. So we're going to give it kind of a wide open, but I think a fine open. Bet 10 million on Jack 5-4. We do have backdoor diamonds. We have backdoor straight draws as well, which is fine. Against a check raise, we're happy to fold, though. I don't think our hand is good enough to want to check back and play turns. I think we just bet. We take it, which is good. Becca's still a thing? Yep. Yeah, man. We are engaged. Uh, Rebecca's in the UK at the moment. Uh, her dad, unfortunately, passed away uh, about three weeks ago or so, sort of unexpectedly. So she's doing okay now, but she's with family and, and sort of dealing with uh, you know, everything that has to happen after after someone passes away, so. Fold the deuce five to Arsini. So, she's in good spirits and, and doing well, all things considering, but, um, but yeah, not here at the moment. Fold King Deuce. <laughs> Cheers, uh, Joe River Poker. Cheers, man. Six, nine of hearts. Reasonable, but I don't think the right open into the chip leader in a clear third place. So we just fold. <clears throat> hey, way to hide to care. Drop the uh, the gifted sub. Hoy Luce, welcome to the team. Courtesy of way too high to care. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Thanks for the gifted sub. And drop the resub for 17 months. Best of luck in the final table. Thank you. I just paused the alerts just in case. Megalon dropping the 56. I missed that as well. Let's go, my boy. Let's get together. Go eat something at a restaurant in Montreal. I'm down, dude. At some point, I'm 100% down. Appreciate the 56 months. Thank you, Megalon. open the king jack our city calls on the button king eight five on the flop we start with a check here with almost our whole range in this spot i don't think we have a check raise hand here uh but a check call for sure it gets tough uh, a little bit later in this hand there's nothing complicated about this yet you're in the turn, we check. And if it goes blank blank, I think it's just a call down against our city in that their range is quite wide. And a nine on the river. Small block. Uh, and against a raise, unknown. Six, seven in the range, sure. Nine, eight in the range, sure. King, nine in the range, sure. Uh, I'd be more likely to call on a jam than on a raise less than all in, I think. But we just take it down. Cool. Very nitty, not sure on the logic behind the fold. Yeah, I get it. Well, I did kind of explain that it's not the standard play. I can't really give you the logic and that I'm still on the hand. I'm still on this table, right? So uh, we're going to three bit this one, though.
Nice. Two twenty. Another close one, I think, brother. Okay, we can go emote only mode for a second, but it's okay, you guys. Let people argue. Uh, you know, a lot of people watching the stream are just, frankly, out of their depth, man. You know, like they just they don't really know how ICM works, and so they're gonna see a bunch of things that don't make any sense, and it might make them angry. But it's okay, man. I mean, it's just the average poker population hasn't figured out these spots. To be fair, there's. A time where I didn't have these spots figured out. We all learn at different paces. Just some people really need to vocalize that they're not happy about things. And well, that's all right. It's okay. It's not a big deal. We continue. In third. Check. Let's take a flop here. King, Jack, eight, rainbow. Folds. We three bet ace five here. We will have to call if Milan goes all in because it'd be for not very much. But I think it's worthwhile to do. With the ace blocker, take it down. Chipping up, chat. 230. 230. I know you guys like to panic, but relax, dude. Listen, we've lost very few chips this whole final table. Relax. Chill out, chat. We're okay. Mm, it's kind of close, but a fold. <clears throat> 3K, 6K, 22, 15, 41, 38, and 71 blinds. It's anyone's game. Anyone can win this tournament. It could be us. Uh, right now, we have 16,000 cashed. First place will be 70. It's a lot of money available still. 54000 still to play for. P 
King Jack against Queen Nine. King Jack takes down the small pot. Fold the jack six to Arsini's open. We stay patient. Yo, what's up, Hawkers? We're still at it, man. Five-handed for all the marbles, dude. Five-handed for everything on 215. Victor against Arsini. Victor's all in. We could get down to four, but no. Victor takes it down 200 million. Now three of us tied for second place here, basically. Milan, clear shortest stack, and Arsini does not have much of a chip lead. So really, it's a tie game here between everyone. Uh, definitely changes the strategy in this spot as well. You know, uh, That swing of chips right there does change things. But thank you all for being here, man. There's almost 5,000 of you here. Thanks so much for watching the show. If you're digging it, hit the follow button. Love to see you come back and hang out. And uh, I appreciate you all, man. Milan's all in. We folds. Am I the only one here using Windows 95? I don't know. Anyone else rocking Windows 95, dude? Anyone else chat? Ooh. Not the same jacks as earlier on the final table in that the payout pressure is less here. It's definitely a lot less pressure in this spot than it was the first time. Victor, three bets. Well, now what have you done to me, Victor? Uh, it might become a fold again with the jacks for the second time, just like this one. There's definitely less payout pressure, but the problem is, again, that it's a disaster to get it all in against ace-king and ace-queen, although ace-queen probably folds to a gem, and aces kings queens being tied. So I think it's a fold again, dude. It's... <laughs> it's another fun one. It's another tweet. It's another tweet, dude. <laughs> I'll send that, out, send that one out in a few minutes. Uh, pretty sick. Wow. Uh, we raised queen 10. Enough to raise here on the button for sure. Our city calls. King 7, 3 on the flop. Pretty dry. I think dry enough. We want to bet this hand. Not a great hand to check back because we're going to lose pot quite often. So I think we just bet 12 million. Hope we take it down, but against a check raise, just fold and move on. Nice. Take it down. All 
All right, nice. So let's uh, let's take this let's take this photo for the next suite. Oh, man. Man, I was so excited to play that Jack, that Jack Jack too, but then the race three bet just really puts us in the can, dude. Really does. Yo, Pie Face, what's up, man? How are you? Pie face poker, you guys, with one of the greatest runs of uh, 2021 Twitch poker, man. Good to see you in the house. Thanks for tuning in. We got a moment here, dude. About 70k for the win in this tournament, and we're down to five. Slowly maneuvering, pick our way through this final table. I think we're avoiding trouble fairly effectively. And uh, yeah, it's going well. We will three bet here. Against Arsini? And fold. <laughs> so you're the one who bought the record selling house at Westbound a few months ago, I see. Bro, I wish. Okay, dude. Enough. Enough. Enough with the jacks, okay? It's enough. We raise. Come on, Milan. Get in there. Ah, yeah. Ah, yeah, dude. Bold. All right, Terp Ferguson, yeah. Really depressive, uh, depressing painting for first place. We can get a pricey one, dude. <laughs> we could. We could get something nice. Don't spoil the stream. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. I did tweet that one out a little early. My bad. Same Jack Jack, but different. Yeah. Sick one. Sick one. Yeah, some people are saying go with this one. I do broad say and can't fold this one. Got to shove. There is less ICM pressure in that Jack Jack spot. It's not an easier fold, I don't think, but I could be wrong. Another sick one. At least we got one win with the Jacks, you know? It's nice to get our first win. Versus our city, we three bet jacks, yeah. We three bet call jacks against our city. In a heads up pot, five handed here, I think it's. Uh, there's not enough ICM pressure anymore to where we could uh, get away, I don't think. At least at these stacks, so.
You're good, but man, are you boring. Thanks, Benny. <laughs> Listen, dude, you gotta play Final Tables differently, okay? Come back some other time when I'm playing other stages of the tournament. It'll be more interesting, but we've gotta be really kind of cautious here and patient. It'll be different when we get heads up. Relax, unless you met my personality, in which case, well, I don't know, I'm kinda, kinda in the zone right now. Not really in entertainment mode, just in trying like win the tournament mode, you know? Open AC. Fold, not the right uh, hand to mess around with there. Fold seven six suited. All right, okay, okay, okay. A7. Mm, Milan opens though. Ah, I think a fold. Cheers, pie face, thanks man. I'm trying, I'm gonna try and take it home. But three bets, ace five, and ace eight off. I'm shaking my head. Yeah, that's that's I think what you guys are missing is that uh, there are some spots on these final tables where you in fact uh, would much rather have ace five off suit than you'd have king queen. And sometimes you would rather be dealt ace five than nines, which is counterintuitive, but uh, it makes sense if you get it. Makes sense if you get it. I'm not here to convince you, chat. It's just, you are, it is a little bit insufferable in the chat box right now, you know? There is a good 30 or 40 of you that are just full-time kind of trying to run your poker master class. And, I mean, I get that you don't think I'm playing well. You might be right. But maybe want to consider that I might have some info that you don't have in this situation. And if I don't, it's probably not the spot to run your poker masterclass at the moment. You know what I mean? Just consider it, chat. You can do what you want. There's no rules here other than be respectful to everyone else. That's it. But um, think it over, if you don't mind. Fold 9-7 on 150. You have to win this tourney with Jack-Jack as your whole cards. That's perfect, dude. That'll be a perfect setup, man. A perfect setup. Let's do it. Two fives a fold and blinds are up to thirty 
3.5 million and 7 million. So it puts us on 21 blinds. Uh, still actually a decent amount of 3-betting. Not as much jamming as you'd think. We mostly 3-bet still, but it does change the dynamic a little bit. And if the blinds go up one more time, then it becomes more of a jam. A6 wins against Jack-4. Okay. Replay how this hand played out. Let me check. Bet call. Huh. Interesting. Mars, if I'm Marcini, I'm betting this turn for sure. Interesting. Okay. Uh, raise from Milan, a shove from Victor. Takes it down. And folding 10-6. Fold 8-4 as well, unfortunately. I think our hand's too weak to raise here. Uh, we'll do some shoving, we'll do some raising, but I think 8-4 is outside of where we want to be, which is too bad. Raise King-9 on the button. It's kind of close here, but I think it's a fine open. We would fold a hand like Jack-10 offsuit here, but we're raising King-9. Nice, King-Jack-6 on the flop, really good flop. I think it is a bet call here if we get check raised. Uh, but let's start with a C bet at 14. Take it. Good flop. Makes it easy to play. $32 million in the middle. And the two biggest stacks going at it, which is what we like. We definitely want these two to go to war. Bit of $10 million. Cheers, F. Gimbra. Says thanks for streaming. Thanks, man. Cheers, Jay Brownie. Cheers, man. Big call on the turn, king of spades on the river, 53 million in the middle, but pretty small pots, man. Definitely pretty small pots between these two. <laughs> Sly cry. All right, and Victor and Arseni are now battling for chip lead potential here, man. Definitely a chip lead potential battle going on. And it can't be too like forthcoming about how I think people are playing, obviously, like they're probably watching the stream. So I can't really expand too much on that. Mm. It's 
It's one of the spots where do I make a psychology read? Like, do I try and win a leveling war? Or do I just stick to, like, general frequencies? I'll stick to general frequencies. Uh, David has had to fold quite a lot of pots in a row, right? So David is playing relatively tight from what I've seen. But then also, they're going to be annoyed by that at some point. Because human beings are annoyed by that at some point. Where they like open a little bit too wide at some point because they've they haven't played a hand in a long time, right? Um and so did I want to bet on that or not? It's basically the the question. We have three bet King Ten here against Victor, who can open a very wide range into these short stacks and will do so. Uh so I think we wanna have some three bet calls and some three bet folds. This is pretty wide, but I think it's okay, given our image and the hand. Nice. Take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it, 170. <laughs> Thank you, Aloha. Yeah, two big Jack Jack folds. Shove from Milan and a reshove of Ace Jack and fives. If they double up with the fives here, everyone's tied and it's sick. They do. All right, chat. What we have. A three-way tie, and then the chip leaders are basically tied. There's there's almost no difference between all five. Like, this is very interesting situation now, and in that everyone feels significant ICM pressure, right? No one is immune now from the ICM pressure. Everyone feels it. And so, in some ways, it lessens the pressure. Of course, we would have loved to bust in a ladder there, right? But it also lessens the pressure. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's still pressure, but there's pressure on other people too, right? So it makes it a little bit easier to maneuver. Let's see what happens, dude. Anyone's game. Anyone can win this tournament easily. Easily anyone can win this. One minute till break. Three bet. Nice, let's go. Let's go, big three bet pot. That puts us in third place. Little ninjas, little ninja moves, dude. We're floating without a good hand, by the way, for a while. We have not had a big hand yet <laughs> for a very long time, but we've been floating by getting some moves through here and there, you know? Milan min raises are Cine calls in the small blinds. And Victor G, shipcity.gov, takes it down 300 milli. Whoa, we're going on a five minute break, chat. Call it a two minute break. I need to grab some water because it's been three hours, okay? Let me grab a drink back in a few minutes. Eight seconds away. Thank you all so much for tuning in. What a blast. Thank you, Party Poker, for the Millions Online series. A little biased team online, you know? But I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> oh, guess what, chat? You're not going to like this. It's a fold. I know. Some of you hate it. It is a fold. Trust. It's a fold. Trust. This is a fold, chat. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. It, you're not going to like it, but it is. I'm telling you. It's not a happy fold. 
You, you don't enjoy it, but it is trust. Mm, nice hand. Mm. I think I'm all in here against uh, Victor. I don't think I want a three bet fold here. I think I just want to jam with his hand in. Ooh. We do want a blocker though. Mm. Okay, I'm going to go back to the three bet fold plan actually. My first plan was to jam, and we do jam some hands. We definitely jam like king queen suited, king jack suited. I'm thinking actually we probably want to three bet fold this one because of the blocker effects. First impression was to just shove though. Get a long thing, get a call. Ace jack 10 on the flop. Wow. Probably an overbet here. Mm. I'm not sure. First impression was just shove. And I was like, mm, we do want to leave them room to continue with an ace. They might fold an ace if we shove. We don't want that. We do really value protecting our hands because there's a lot of bad turns of rivers. Ace, king, queen are all pretty bad. We lose this pot. Unfortunately, we lose this pot, I think. That's really unlucky. It's possible we win. We just need them to have like ace five suited and then just check down and not bluff, which is definitely possible. Like if Victor has a seven suited that they didn't four bet pre-flop, even though they should have, uh, they could just go check, check, and then check, check river, and then uh, we win. But definitely pretty reasonable. We're up against some two pairs here when they call the three bet. Um, and we have the worst two pair. Pretty reasonable to have a queen in the range. You know, one pair and a queen on the flop totally makes sense. So I likely think we're losing here. We beat only bluffs, and the only bluffs they have would be... Uh, they have to turn like ace five, ace six that didn't four bet pre into a bluff. So it's a check fold, which is kind of why I should probably shove fl flop. Or my first thought was to shove flop because of that scenario. But uh, yeah, I fold. Very unfortunate hands. Just sucks. Uh, we're down to 100,000. This is a reshove with the nines. Good luck, us. Let's get the double up right back to 200K. Okay, take it. Still tied with these two, basically. Uh, raise these four. Water. Water. Uh, I think we bet here. Like, yeah, we have a pair. Yeah, we don't want to face check raises, but it's going to be really difficult to get to showdown here by not betting. If we go check, check, we're going to have a bet frequency on the turn of, like, all. Uh, and we kind of hate having to go to the river calling a turn bet, like capping a range super hard. So we just bet, and we win, which is great. Good. Back to 150. We have reclaimed third place. That jack-10 hand is so close, dude. I'm so close to jamming pre- so close to jamming flop for 2x pot as well, which is super like weird, obviously, but... And the turn is just the disaster. It's the worst. Bruh. Sucks. Um, maybe a small chance they have like king eight suited, but... I'm Nostradamus, ace from space. What's up, bro? Let's go a little ace ball in the river. Come on now. We have 5,000 people here. Ace-10, beautiful. Beautiful hand. Against one opponent, I think we reshove here. Uh, Milan Sasek goes for the mid-raise. I think it's a regem. Uh, it is unfortunate in that they're the tightest at this point at the final table, but Ace-10 is pretty good with the blocker. They have to call really tight, you know, so we're all in.
Come on, let's go. Let's go. Fold seven ten. Yo, Ellie Sriracha, what's up? Thank you for the let's go. We got a big moment here. There's a lot of change out there. 16,000 cash, but it's 70 for the win. We've got, what is that, 54,000 up for grabs between the five of us-ish? 54K? That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Uh, and I feel like I've gone through some adversity at this final table in that for a lot of this tournament, the cards have all gone our way. On the final table, they have not. It actually has been really difficult. So to be at this spot where we haven't had the goods most of the time, I'm quite happy with. If I'm straight with you, chat. A limp from David. David, I don't understand. I have no idea what this is. I don't think David should limp any hands here. I think it should always be a raise or a fold. So this is a new, this is a new thing we have seen from David. Uh, I'm making some assumptions about what I think this range is likely to be, but it's kind of anyone's guess, right? It's outside the game tree, so it depends. It depends who it is as to what the strategy is. And we see limp jam, and I'm pretty happy that I folded because I kind of thought that was going to happen. Uh, easy for me to say in hindsight and that I've now seen the decision as a fold, but um, yeah. Milan Sasek goes for the raise. We're going to fold. What a battle. What a five-handed battle. Really sick. Let's just get a hand here, man. That's great. If we could just pick up a hand, that would be perfect. Beautiful. We raise. It is pretty tough against a uh, a jam. It's pretty hard against an all in. Against a non all in, it's not very difficult what to do. Against an all in, it kind of sucks to call off and that we're flipping most of the time and sometimes behind. But thankfully, you just raise take it, which is good. Uh, we don't face the the disaster spot, which we've we've found a lot. Two guys want a deal. You should join in, Jamie. I got an edge, bro. I got an edge on this table. Don't at me. I got an edge here. I'll tell you that. And even if I didn't have an edge, my policy is to gamble. I'm a Twitch streamer, dude. I'm not going to opt out of the most exciting moments of poker to, uh, to fade a little equity chat. Yeah, it's a 54K little sweat we got going on here, but listen, man. There's 5,000 of you here right now. I'm going to put your priority over my own. We must gamble for the stream. Pull the 5-3. No, even, even if there wasn't a stream, I do think I've identified a few spots where uh, I can eke out an edge. But, of course, anything could happen. Like, we could just bust next hand super easily. Uh, it could just happen. It doesn't guarantee anything, but I'm, I'm prepared to take the risk.
Uh, I don't even know what the next pay jump is, actually. It is a 5K pay jump. 10 to 15 to 24 to 36 to 36 plus bounties. Victor G, that's 40. On the four diamonds, pretty interesting sizing here, right? You would not expect to see like a 60% sizing here very often. Our city calls. Our spawner, thanks, man. I'm free. Pie face, welcome back, bro. Welcome back, man. I missed you. You know, the goods, we pulled a Jack Jack pre like five times. Okay, twice. Listen, twice. We did have the goods twice. But I think they were the bads, if I'm honest. Uh, does Victor G have it here, chat? Oh, nope. Maybe Victor G has the Ace of Diamonds and Arsini has the Seven Eight of Diamonds. Why don't we do that? Why don't we make it that? Bro, this is great that there's carnage though, right? We're, we're basically tied again for second place after this pot. If Victor loses, I mean, if Victor calls and wins, then then uh, we have a pretty short stack with a 9K bounty available, so. What a hand, dude. What is the tank? Like, I don't even know what it could be really. Oh my goodness. Arsini bluffed. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's a data, man. That is a data straight. All right. So we have a big chip leader and three of us tied here, basically. We're up to 15,000. That's so sick. Victor wanted to fold the Ace of Diamonds. That's so sick. Milan's all in. So Victor's loving life. Has a 5k bounty. The biggest bounty in the tournament is definitely gone. And now all of a sudden, we're kind of tied for second place, right? Really wild that happened. We're tied for second. Uh, the next pay jump is a 10k pay jump. Or 9k. And then the following pay jump is 10k. And then the heads up will be... You know, if, if we got heads up with Victor right now, it would be... 10,000, it'd be a 15,000 heads up match. So it'd be 50, uh, 36, it'd be 51K, I think, actually. It would be pretty small, I guess, because that big bounty just left. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of the bounties and Victor just captured a lot. So it wouldn't end up being a huge, it'd be like 36, 46. It'd be like 52 or 53K. Eh, that's okay. Uh, nine eight. We get a limp from David. It's, it's maybe a raise there, but and it's going to be a raise here to twenty million. Nice. Like I said, chat got an edge, bro. Got an edge. I know what I'm. I know what I'm doing here, chat. I know what's going on. <laughs> Hold. 
Fold the fours. Fold them, fold them, fold them, fold them. <coughs> yeah, it's not going to be 70K anymore, though, unfortunately. I mean, still, it's going to be a lot of money, you know? Still be over 50K for sure, but. Uh, fold these four to the jam here. Not enough of an edge, although Chippy V, I do think we barely win there, but it doesn't make any sense in second place. Victor gets to go crazy, dude. Gets to you go crazy here. Whoo, sheesh. We got kings. Here's the raise call. Here's the raise call, chat. The second best hand in poker. Victor shoves so many hands here. Okay, no hearts, dude. Don't give me this pain. I can't take the smoke, dude. I can't. I can't take it. Come on, let's go. Oh, we had to sweat it, dude. We did. We're on 300k. Our chance of winning this tournament greatly just increased. We actually raised this one as well. The sick thing is like Victor still gets to go ham on us here, bro. But we do raise nines. I think it's good enough. Uh, and we get a fold, David. Okay, take it on. Whoo! Let's go. Let's go, dude. We can win this thing, man. We can. I couldn't take the heart on the river, man. I was really going to be quite sad. Raise. Didn't matter. Just making trips. Oh, bro. Bro. I wanted to raise immediately, but then my time timing was not good to where the longer I wait and I raise there, the more it looks full of crap, the more they're just going to reach of. Uh, ooh. He wasn't a slow roll. He was thinking about folding. He was thinking about folding the ace of flush, the ace high flush chat. He was just say, like, he was thinking there's no bluffs here. And there really isn't. I would never have a bluff there ever. I would never, ever, ever have a bluff there. He was thinking, can I fold the ace high flush? Because I think my opponent has a straight flush. It's a valid thought. Like, I never would have given credit for a bluff there. It's so sick. Really, honestly, so sick. It wasn't a slow roll. It was definitely not a slow roll. I mean, I think they have to call, but like, imagine if they fold, dude. That's the sickest attempt at a bluff I've ever seen, respect. With the, the straight flush blocker, dude, yeah. I mean, it's pretty insane. I mean, they're out. I don't know if it's good. Like, you're giving a lot of credit to your opponents being able to fold stuff but pretty sick david like you might rather have the queen of hearts because queen of hearts than the straight flush blocker but all right i think we want king seven to win here uh i think we want to get the ladder it's okay if they don't though it's not a big deal we're still in second place but Hold the victor. Fold again the victor with the queen 10. It's a little sadder with queen 10. It's fine.
Milan shoves a lot here. Okay. Ace nine King Deuce to get three handed. Ooh, gotta fade the clubs. Gotta fade the clubs and the king of the deuce. No. Another double up for the short stack. It's a different tournament once again. Was not our preference there, right? Um, Victor has double us, but now we're a lot closer to these short stacks. So the payout pressure is still high. It, the payout pressure is as high as it was, like slightly, slightly less, because we should get second slightly less based on these stacks. Um, but it's still painful, you know? We definitely want the ladder there. We want the ladder. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Jacks are going to be in the middle here unless we get multi-action, dude. Unless we get a 3-bet, 4-bet. We're in there. I was expecting to Victor to 3-bet there, actually, but... David. Check. Hmm. Good turn. Quick bet. I'm going to call. It would not surprise me if David has an ace or a king here. I still think we have a hand that's good enough to call in this spot, though. On the turn. The longer David thinks, the more I like my situation. Let's go. Come on! Oh, man. The timing game, dude. The timing game. It's like I'm back in the Lethbridge card room, dude. Whew. I know the timing game. David's all in. Ace nine against queen eight. Spades or six will do it. Eight will also get it done. Oh, ace on the river, 200K, bro. Bro, we want the ladders there, dude. What is up? <clears throat> what is up, man? I mean, we need all the chips, chat, but it would be really nice to get an extra 10K right now and then the chips, you know what I mean? Thank you all for hanging out, dude. What a stream, man. 5,000 people here in the house. If you're new, hit the follow button. What's up? My name's Jamie. I'm a party poker pro. I am streaming millions online this month, uh, doing everything I can to win some big tournaments, and this would be the first big tournament of the month. Victor. Victor. Uh. Money for first place, I thought it was going to be about 70k. It's going to be less because the biggest bounty just left. Ace, queen, ace, deuce. Is this for the ladder? To get three-handed. No king. Or three-handed, Chad. GG to Milan Sasek. Uh, played pretty well, I think. And fairly tight, but like didn't give anything away at all. We are three-handed here. 24,000 plus the 6k bounty. The 5k bounty. We'll call it it's 29k. I wanted to go 30, but we can't. 29k. Uh, next pay jump is up to 36k, so a nice 12k jump, and then you play heads up for the bounties. So I think it'll be 52,000 or so for the win, a little bit more, 53k, something like that. But unfortunately, there was a 9k bounty here that got knocked out by Victor, so a lot of the bounties have exited the tournament now. Arseny had 17,000 in bounties earned, and then Mark, who went out in 7th, had 12,000 in bounties, so... The two biggest bounties in the tournament are already out, which is why we have a smaller first place. Reshove. Do it, Victor. 
Do it. Heads up. Hey, Shaq, hold for the heads up match. For the heads up match, Shaq. Oh, no, Jack. Let's go. We're heads up, baby. Come on. GG to Davids. GG to Davids. Uh, good match. Good game. Victor, send him the goats. And send him the uh, good luck. And we fold the 9 3. Uh, Victor's a good player, chat. Victor's a good player. There's no question. Limp, we... Oof. Raise, I think, man. It's so uncomfortable to play sevens out of position this deep, you know? It really is, but I think we raise. All right. I mean, three to one chip, chip disadvantage. A little bit more than three to one. Uh, I feel good. I feel like we're going to win. Let's win. So the heads-up match, we have 36,000 plus our 5K locked up, so 41K. It's my second biggest score ever, officially. Lock it up. Uh, but what we're going to play for heads-up here, we will call this King 5, is this bounty. So call it 6,000 plus our bounty. Call it 2,500. It's a little bit more. So it's going to be 12,000 plus uh, 5,500 for 17,500 heads-up match. So we have 4,100 locked up. It will be, uh, what, 51, 58,500 for the win if we win this match. And we're going to because we're going to raise this flop with King 5. Definitely deserves some protection here. Uh, ready to gamble with his hand, by the way, when we flop top pair, second nut kicker. Um, it is possible for Victor to have over pairs and stuff, but we're heads up here, 25 blinds deep. Like, top pair king kicker is quite a good hand. Holy smokes! Trips is a great hand. Oh, let's go, uh, Victor. Just have aces, bro, if I'm honest with you. No, actually, queens, because I don't want to sweat the straight. So queens would be ideal. Queens. Queens don't fold. Queens don't fold, chat. Don't be a four on the river. I would really struggle with that. I would, if I'm honest. It would hurt me deeply. Don't be a four. Okay. Good, 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 good. 350. Two to one chip disadvantage, chat. And that we call. Annoying in the turn. Uh, King of the River, do we turn it into a bluff? I say yes. We've got a reasonable amount of stuff that wants to bet on the river here. Uh, so I'm going to go for a bet of 30k. Try and get them to fold better ace highs, get them to fold a deuce, maybe fold an eight. Like, maybe a nine. Probably not, but, like, you don't know. I don't know what Victor's strategy is here. So we're going to go for the bluff, take it down. We're 35 blinds deep. I'm going to go to raising now. Fun flop. Uh, bet. Nice. Overbet works on the turn, chat. 400K, let's go. Less than a two to one chip lead. Good flop, gut shot, throw the check. And it's not good enough to uh, check call here in the turn, I'm gonna bet. Like, it's a bad gut shot, uh, so I'm just gonna go for a little bluff here. Sometimes it works. 
Uh, most of the time, not. Nine on the river, we don't have fold equity here. They're going to call with whatever they call turn with, except for the few like draws they have that can't, like Jack-10 maybe or something. But I don't think it's a good spot to bluff here on this river. We block a bunch of draws as well. Let's go, chat. Let's go. Heads up. Heads up for the title. The Millions Online Event 7 Super 500 PKO Champion. Okay. 7 3 is trash. Really bad. I should take a little longer on the check there, though, for what it's worth. I telegraphed my hand strength a bit there. Bit of a mistake. Mostly call here. At 14 million, we call on the flop. Let's see a turn. Turn's pretty bad for our hands. It's reasonable for their hand as well. I think when we think about a lot of the, the kings that Victor's going to have, they're going to bet quite a lot of them on the flop, I'd say. River is the dream. Uh, we want to bet... And I think I'm going to go for just a bigger bet. I don't think I want a block bet with our trip twos here. I think this can represent some bluffs, uh, which is kind of what I'm hoping for here. I also think the likelihood of a raise against a block bet is pretty small. So we go for the bigger bet. We take it down. We continue. Uh, fold. Nice end. Ten four four. We don't hit the flop. Uh, our hand's not a disaster. We can call like a min bet here. We continue with a lot of stuff, but and I don't think we have a great candidate to bluff. If we think about it, what are we trying to fold out? We're, well, ace high is not folding the turn. We're trying to fold like king nine, king jack, and it's probably not even folding, right? So and we can't value bet king eight. So it's just one of those hands that hopefully we show down and we beat. A hand that decided not to bluff this time. Um, and that's exactly what happened there. So didn't need to bluff in heads up. Again, the ranges are very wide here, right? Uh, we both have any two hands. King eight against nine five. There you go. Raise, ace 10. Beautiful. I don't think we want to four bet get this in, but we do definitely want to play it post flop against the three bet. Queen eight deuce. Uh, I think a mix here between bet and check. We are going to check this time. That's a great turn, man. Uh, we'll bet turn. 32k, I think it's fine. Take it. Yeah, so this bounty amount that you see, as you can see when you mouse over it, there's 6,000 that you can win immediately when you knock someone out, but there's also 6,000 sitting on their head, right? So there's both, but there's no one for the bounty to go to, so you win double this amount and double this amount, plus what you've already earned, plus the prize pool. So we've earned ourselves 41,000 right now, uh, plus double this, plus double this. That's what the win is. And if we bust, then we win 41,000. Open, get a call, king nine nine on the flop. Uh, I think really likely to value bet here. Actually, I'm going to min bet on the paired board, which we bet small pretty much always there on the paired board. And we get check raised. We peel. We don't love this, but we're getting four to one with ace high. It was a value bet on the flop. It's a call. Ace on the turn is once again the dream. I think Victor check raises a king quite frequently. They can have a nine as well, but uh, what a great turn. Check, check of the turn. We're only getting uh, one street of value with Ace Deuce for sure. If we get any value, I think it's a check check. Honestly, I don't even think I can get value here on the river in that our hand looks like Ace High so clearly. I don't think a king's going to call. It's a check check, I think. Fives. 
Makes sense. I, it makes sense. I don't think it's calling river, but yeah, it makes sense. Limp, we raise. They call. Start with the check here on 7-6 deuce. We do have all these overpairs. I think we have a hand that doesn't mind checking, though. There's a chance I should just be betting this flop, like, ham, but probably deep enough where it's not the right call. Checking the turn. Life is getting a little bit difficult for us. This is not a good card for a range again. All of our overpairs over are discounted because we checked flop, and so things are going to get tough. I think I'm just going to check fold here on the turn. You say deuce, min bet again. We've been min betting a lot on these dry boards. Uh, I think we'll just go for it again with our second pair. Not the best in the world. I think check, check, and then decide on the river. River's very good. Go for the raise over the block. Uh, with two pair. And we might raise into a better hand. Like, they have a few better hands in the range, two pairs and jack-10 and stuff, but they also have worse hands. And we look definitely full of crap here. We've shown aggression at every single turn in this match so far. So we'll raise and we'll take it. The raises are on from Victor. Nice flop. Mostly check call on this flop. You could check, check raise at some frequency, but I think... Uh, Call is going to be fine here. So let's do that. Dude, how many two pairs are we going to turn? Wow. I think I'm going to check raise the turn here. We're very deep. I want the opportunity to get all the money in on the river. I want the opportunity to get all the money now from like a one pair queen that's better than me, from an aces, from a king. Uh, so I'm going to raise. I think one tick too big there, if I'm honest. Went a little bit big, which was a little bit smaller. <laughs> Probably didn't make a difference, but we now have the lead, chat. We now have the lead. Let's go. <laughs> the fight is on, bro. The fight is on. Let's send it to him. That's a tight fold, but I can't really uh, call with the emoji throw. I don't think. I could, but it's an edge spot anyways. I think we want to size up a little bit from Min on this board. Pretty dry, but it's not dry, dry. Uh, you know, and honestly... We should have considered a bigger bet sizing here because it's not so bad, but we'll fold to the check raise. The second best hand in poker chat. No action. We are definitely running hot in this heads up. I mean, for as many, as cold as we ran for the whole final table, dude, this heads up, hot, big hands, lots of them. 10-6 deuce, uh, bet. We're value betting here as well. We can call check raises. We have backdoor flush draws. Uh, we have ace high, which is very likely the best hand right now. We're likely. I wouldn't say very likely. It's likely the best hand. Uh, so we can call and continue against this check raise. Getting a great price, four to one. Eight on the turn. This is not 
bad for their check raising range. We do have a gut shot that we picked up in the turn. We have ace high, which is good at showdown sometimes here. But the problem is that the range that they're representing and that they think that we think they're representing has improved here. They bet small enough where we're getting four to one in the turn. It's, it's an easy enough call. Uh, we definitely have the right price here. We call, we need 20% equity on the river or a little bit more, like 22%. Sometimes we get there. Sometimes we're good against bluffs. Like it's call again. Seven. Wow. Now I think a good card. Sometimes we're going to lose a chunk of money to an ace 10 or something like that. But I think it's a good card. Is there value to be had here on the ace river? Probably not, right? We think about their check raising range. If we value bet river, we're trying to get called by jack 10, queen 10, king 10. Uh, nah, but bro, there is though. There is value to be had here. In that I think those 10s are going to call down. I do. And we open ourselves up to the check raise, which is painful, but I don't think those 10s are going to check raise. Um... Three four three five four five. Ah, bro, the thin value bit gets checks raised, and uh, we've now got a disaster. Let's think it through. On the flop, they check raise on the ten six deuce. They have ten six suited. They have ten deuce suited. They have six deuce suited. Those hands aren't raising here. They check raise flop. They sometimes three bet ace ten. By the way, they have a nine seven straight. They have ace-10, but they probably don't have 10-6, 10 deuce, 6 deuce, because they're not going to check raise river. I think I've just talked myself into a call, chat, for the tournament. Come on! Oh, dude. It's, yeah, we, with the blocker, we call, dude. We call. Oh, my goodness, man. Stay in the zone. It's not over. <laughs> yes! Let's go! Let's go! Oh my goodness, bro. What just happened? What just happened, dude? Did you guys watch that, man? Holy crap! Holy smokes, dude. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. That was so sick. We won it, man. Holy smokes. Dude. <laughs> dude. Dude. Yes. Yes, chat. Oh, I'm so happy with how I played that match, too. With the, the whole tournament, man. The whole tournament. Dude, I'm so hyped up. I really am, chat. I don't know what to say. I'm just so excited. I hope that's okay, man. I'm just so excited, dude. Let's go! Yes, man! <laughs>